everyone is having a good morning welcome on in finally got everything set up <laughs> it shouldn't have been so long since it was exactly the same stuff i did yesterday but there we are it'd be like that sometimes grab it good morning welcome on in milk and free welcome on in for hi and cthulhu welcome on in and clues welcome in and cthulhu welcome on in and get on the youtube i hope you're all doing well let me just switch my stuff around quickly here hello welcome on in i hope everyone is doing well <coughs> i immediately need to cough ah oh dear i hope everyone's had a good day so far i know it's pretty early in the day over here at least but i hope everyone's having a good day we're gonna be listening to by the way today i'm gonna make a, a point of this we're listening to the honkai star rail ost because people are sleeping on the honkai star rail ost and it is so long because they have like a whole new ost for every single area and there's like 60 songs in area it's so good and so we're going to be listening to that today, so get ready for that. It might get my whole stream copyrighted, but if it does, that's fine. This was an extra stream anyway. <laughs> so that, that's the plan today. We're going to listen to Honkai Star Rail, and we're going to make little tiny dinosaurs. And I'm very excited about it. If you need me to turn the music up at any point, just let me know and I'll do it. I'll do it in a heartbeat. I'm just, I, I've been talking about the Honkai Star Rail OST for a while because it's genuinely so good. Like... I play the game a lot, so I don't want to diss it too much, but I, it's a simple game and it's, you know, it's obviously made for mobile and stuff like that, but the music's so good. <laughs> you can have, yeah, but have a little bit more of this. It's way too hype for me at this stage in the morning. <laughs> you can have, have, have a little bit of this. Like, you hear this? Why are you playing a game with this? It's so good. <laughs> Why are they all so good? They have like full songs in it and everything. I don't understand. Anyway, today, Today, we're gonna to be doing little dinosaurs again. We're gonna be going back to doing more little dinosaurs. I haven't done anything since yesterday because uh, my shoulder started hurting at the end of stream yesterday. I've been really, really good and I've just been resting it since it was probably too loud, isn't it? Sorry. I get excited, I get excited. Yeah, no, um, I've just been resting it since yesterday so I haven't, there's nothing to catch up on when it comes to crafting and stuff like that. I haven't done it, oh my God, I'm sorry. Whoa. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. How about a bit lower? Oh dear. But yes, so that's what we're going to be doing today. That's what we're going to be doing today. More dinosaurs. Uh, if my shoulder starts hurting, I'll, I'll take a break. Tomorrow we're playing games. Oh, actually, I can tell you what we're playing tomorrow now because I've got it. I've got it all set up now. Tomorrow we're going to be playing Slay the Princess. There we go. <coughs> Let it load it for me. Slay the Princess. <coughs> I keep calling it Kill the Princess. It's not Kill the Princess. It's Slay the Princess. Uh, I know a few of you already probably know what that game is uh, because we've actually talked about it here before. But, I, and I also know a bit about what this game is. I'm not going in blind, I'll be honest. I, I do know a little bit about it, but I've never played the, it's weird though, because I have played it, but I think I've played, I must have played like a demo or something, or maybe like a, a pre-release, because when the, I, okay. When people started talking about Slay the Princess a few months ago, I didn't realize that there was a whole nother game because I remember something else. Anyway, um, <laughs> maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe, maybe it's all in my head, but um, I thought that the game had come out before uh, in a smaller version, and this is like a much, much more expanded version of that, I think. Oh, dear. oh so fun, good. thank you so much for the like. Good morning, I hope you're doing well. But yes, no, uh, I think I think it's like a bigger version. So I do kind of know what Slay the Princess is. Uh, we're not playing it today, we're playing it tomorrow. Uh, I do kind of know what it is, so it, it's like a not super it, it's more like an eldritch horror kind of game rather than a rather than like a scary jump scare game but it has like a hundred endings <laughs> from from what i from what i've had the new one it's got a heck and lot of endings so i guess the plan tomorrow is going to be not necessarily just to play through the game once it might be to play through the game multiple times and try and get a few different endings and try to go a few different paths and stuff like that um and we might i, I probably will play the game myself the first time and then after I've done a full playthrough, at that point we'll have like back seating open. What we could even do is because it, it, you know, you make a lot of choices. We could even have like little really, really quick polls and then we could have chat make a lot of the choices for one round. But yeah, no, the first round I think I'll probably do, and we'll go over this again tomorrow. The first round we'll probably do with just me, like going through the game for the first time. And then after that, open it up to back seating, what you want to see, stuff like that. So I think I think that's going to be the vibe because I doubt we'll play it just once tomorrow. Oh dear. Good morning, Jelly. I'm doing fine. Just low on spoons. No, no, that's completely fine. I get you. Plus it's the middle of the week. I think what is it that people call Wednesday hump day because like trying to get through to the rest of it. I'll be honest, I'm a little, I'm not tired, but I've been doing, how to put it? Um, I've been doing a lot of emailing. <laughs> <laughs> which 
it's, it's not stress, it's not like awful emailing or anything like that, it's just a lot to keep on top of and it's like, you know, standard stuff that people have to do, like, you know, the ho like at the moment in the UK a lot of people are registering to vote and all that kind of stuff and then it's also, you know, stuff for wedding and it's, it's just like payments here and do this here. Yesterday was an emailing day and so after stream I rested my arm from sewing and I just emailed a lot of people and I need to email a few of them back and I think that's weighing on me a little bit of like, I gotta keep going. <laughs> It's not done yet. I have to chase some people up. Yeah, chasing people up. That's what I've been doing. I've been chasing people, which is tiring. Vile, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Good morning. Good morning. How goes it? I hope you're doing good. And so good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. We're going to be doing more dinosaurs. Actually, I should probably pull it to this camera just so you can see what we were doing. There we go. If you if you missed yesterday's stream, here's what we're doing. Uh, we're doing teeny tiny little dinosaurs. See, so we've been working on the middle one. I had to stop yesterday because my shoulder started hurting. If it starts hurting again today, we'll take another break. But for now, it's pretty good. They're very cute. They're small and I love them. They're little, little fluffy guys. And they match the background colors. So I'm having a good good time. Hell yeah. And anime, thank you for the luck. I appreciate it. It was very heckin' kind of you. Have a lovely luck. Uh, I'm doing adjustments to my 3D model because uh, of course I can. Yeah, why not? Also, thank you for the hydrate. I'll take a very small sip because it's quite hot right now. Oh, it's a little, a little warm, a little, little toasty warm. <laughs> oh dear, no, that sounds nice though, doing hacking adjustments to a foodie model, lovely. Was there anything else I was doing last night specifically? Um, it was mainly, I, I had Honkai Star Rail on for like four hours or so to heat up the room after streaming yesterday because it was actually quite cold. Um, but I don't think I did too much else, I wasn't playing it because I just had it on. <laughs> oh dear. So cute! I was trying to get some gardening uh, done yesterday and I missed it. No, you're fine! I mean, all you've missed is a little bit of outlining and a little bit of colour. We've still got plenty to do, so do not, do not fear. Did a test print earlier and need to make some tolerance adjustments. Ooh, okay. It was so close to being perfect, but that's really good though, if it was really close to being perfect. Also, I want to... I'm gonna keep a couple of them for now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it to a slightly more cello because I've realised that this is a really intense one. I love... I love it. There are some also more intense ones than the ones I put in here. I still think freestyle might be my favourite. I want to put something a bit silly on. I'm gonna put a little silly song on. Let me put let me put this one on. There you go. Honestly, that's more the vibes today. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> We're doing tiny, tiny dinosaurs. I kind of forgot what we were doing. If we were doing something a bit more epic and large, then the other one would have been great, but we're doing tiny dinosaurs playing in a swamp. This is more tiny dinosaurs playing in a swamp appropriate. <laughs> oh, dear. I can save some of it for another day. I have saved some of it. I was thinking at some point what would be really fun would be to just make... I, we talked about this yesterday a little bit, but talking about uh, making just some really, really big playlists of video game music in different kind of vibes, like a more jazzy vibe, uh, maybe some more like like generally chill background music to listen to so that we have a few different playlists to jump between uh, It's just the undertaking is probably like a day activity of like going through every OST I know picking out one or two songs moving them here making different playlists here and there. It's tempting uh, But I haven't done it yet to be honest. Oh dear mm. It's still very hot actually, but it's still nice Somne, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Good morning. Good morning. We are we're having a chill morning. Well, normally I don't stream on uh, on Wednesdays. To be fair, normally I take Wednesdays off. But we're doing I'm doing a little sneaky test right now to see what happens if I do stream on Wednesday. The last few Wednesdays, it's weird, right? So the last few Wednesdays in a row, I've had like pretty knockout migraines. Like they just knock me out for the whole day. And I wanted to see, and so my experiment is technically already done. I wanted to see if it would be as bad if I had something to do that morning. Uh, and I, I did wake up not feeling a fantastic, but I don't feel as bad as I have previous Wednesdays. So it's difficult, right? Because I feel like I'm playing games with my own brain. Like if I wake up knowing to be busy, that I don't seem to feel as bad. But on all of my days off, I'm really sick and it's like, hmm. <laughs> So there's something going on there. Am I waiting until a day off to be sick? So what we're gonna see is if I absolutely die on Saturday. I'm curious. Uh, luckily, I have nothing to do on Saturday, so it's a good plan. It's a it's a good plan. We're gonna see, uh, or if it just you know means I have a migraine after three more. If I have one tomorrow, we'll see. We'll see. Milk. Good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm, I'm running some human body experiments right now, but only on me, so it's fine. Um, but the thought process is that I want to do. When we get to Chroma Core eventually, I want to stream a lot of that. So I kind of want to see what my limitations are right now, uh, as I am right now. 
Uh, and so we're, we're, we're testing them a little bit. We're going to be testing our limits a bit. Um, and yeah, in a, in a way that is planned for. <laughs> it's okay if I test my limits today, because I don't have anything else I have to do. Ah, oh, dear, so that's what we're doing. Fun times. <laughs> Although, again, so far, it's been pretty good. It's been going pretty well. I think I've had one on Monday, and I had one this morning. It's just pretty average. Nothing's really changed, which is fine. If nothing changes, it's all good. One day, I would love to be able to do like a 24 hour event. That would be so cool. But yeah, not yet. Well, well, that's probably, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I'd love to, especially for something like Grouped Over. Like 24, I've never done a 24 hour stream before. And so many people I know have. And it's like, damn, I feel like I need to, I need to do it at some point. Because everyone's given it a go at least once and has like stories to tell from when they stream 24 hours or experiences and stuff like that. So I, I want to do it one time. But I haven't yet. Actually, has anyone in this chat done a 24 hour stream before? <coughs> I actually don't know if Vile has. Uh, I know VAR does long streams generally anyway, but I don't know if they've done 24 hours. Oh dear. I haven't. I haven't. I'm, I'm not in the cool 24 hours. The longest I've done is 15 and a half hours. I did a 15 and a half hour stream and it knocked me out. <laughs> I, I, afterwards I, I was like dang and I lost my voice for like a whole day afterwards as well I did talk nearly the entire 15 and a half hours but uh yes it, it destroyed me never done 24 I didn't think you had oh dear. never done 24 I don't hate myself that much I don't hate myself I just want to push myself I'm just curious you know like what would happen if I did 24 hours but I don't I don't think I could do it right now I think I know what would happen if I tried to do 24 hours right now but at some point I would love to try it You've done 12 before? That's not that, to be fair though, I mean like, your regular streams are like 8 hours. But I guess a 12 hours is not, it's probably quite a stretch for you, but it's not that long for you, because you already do really long streams. <laughs> your streams are already very long. You did 25 hours once, Fen! You're in the 24 hour club, I see, I see. In the cool streamer club who's gone like, who's done a whole day. Very heckin' impressive. George, have you ever done a 24 hour stream? <laughs> Fen has, well, 10 Fen's are 25 hours. I think Shifty said they'd done 24 hours once, but I can't remember if they were memeing or not, but I thought they said they had. I know Dem has. I think, I think Bateman has, but I don't think Bateman planned for it. I think it's just kind of how it happened. B has, I was actually at B's 24 hour stream. Uh, we made them order a barbecue pizza, it was great. Oh, then Nyo, good morning, welcome on in. Nyo, and welcome on in Sleeves. Have either of you ever done a 24 hour stream? <laughs> uh, sorry, we, we, the, the topic we're on, you did a 16 hour when you collabed with Dem. I think, what is it, like Dem's a bad influence. If you stream with Dem, you'll go longer and longer and longer. <laughs> Because I think the same thing happened with Bateman. I don't think they planned to go that long and then they just do like 24 hours. <laughs> oh dear. You, yeah, 16 is still a lot longer than I've been. Absolutely not. Fair enough. Fair enough. Me neither. I've never done it either. I've also not done that. Oh dear. Hi, George. How you doing? I hope you're doing well today. No, you've done nine hours by accident, which is still a long time. Yeah, that's, a, that's still a long heckin' time. Oh, dear Frodan, good morning, welcome on in. How did your pottery challenge go yesterday? I hope that it went well. Oh, uh, we're talking, which I know that you're relatively new to streaming. We're trying to see if anyone here has done a 24 hour stream. We've got one. Fem's done a 24 hour stream before. Well, they did 25 hours, but you know, they've done a, a whole day of streaming. Yeah, we're trying to trying to find people and see, see get experiences. What's it like? What, what's it like streaming for 24 hours in a row? <laughs> Honk! Welcome on in, Shifty. Are you feeling a bit less sleepy today? I hope you're doing well. You're a masochist. <laughs> oh, I don't know how long I've done is six hours, and that's because I was trying to figure... Beacon Pines! I really enjoyed your Beacon Pines uh, gameplay. I love the voices you did for them. I saw that, that pop up in my my, uh, my stream recommendation, uh, Steam recommendations recently. I was like, ah, I watched your play that. It was a charity stream. I ended up with a one-chip challenge. Ooh. Oh my god, did you not want to go to sleep after that? <laughs> you were like, you know what, I've been awake for 25 hours. What if I stay awake for another 5 hours after I eat this very spicy chip? It's not at 5am my time, Oh, the long. Well okay, thanks, I'm glad. Don't think I've been past 6 hours, I mean 6 hours is a long stream. I feel like at that point you need some planning, right? Because at that point you're probably going over a meal time and 
it, you know, you have to make sure, like for instance, for me, I do six hours a day, but then if I need to do less, because a lot of the places near us close at four, which means that if I want to get there, then I have to end stream early because we have to drive, we have to walk quite a long way. Uh, so yeah, there, you know, there's life planning around. Like it'd be difficult for me, like on days like today, like at the moment we got a lot of emailing and invoices and all like that, so I'm just like sorting a lot of stuff out behind the scenes. Um, It'd be difficult for me to go longer than six hours because otherwise I'm gonna miss my window for like calling people if I need to. Ah <laughs> oh dear. They've done a 24 hour trip technically. No, they've done 25 hours. True, true. Uh, much less sleepy. I've been a part of 24 hour live streams before though. I have been like, yeah, like guesting on a stream for a few hours. I've done that. I've not done like the whole stream though. No, 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 no. I went to sleep. <laughs> Thanks. I'm one of the stream. Uh, that's been a uh, very long once. I'm unsure if it was Travel 24 though, but it was years ago. Yeah, it got me. It got me thinking like uh, this morning because I was having a chat behind the scenes with someone about old Twitch a little bit, and it got me thinking because like I don't know how long everyone here has been on Twitch, but there was a time where you weren't allowed to do arts and craft on Twitch or like IRL content before they had. I think they bought. Okay, I'm gonna get my dates wrong here because it has been a long time. But I think they bought the IRL category in in 2016, 2017. Like it, it relatively recently, technically. Like for, it doesn't feel recent, but like actually not that long ago. And I think before then, if you tried to do IRL content, they just got rid of you. They're like, nah, nah. So people would try and stream art and they'd be like, get out of here, this is for gamers only. <laughs> no artists. Oh dear. Things have changed. Things have changed. Oh dear. We have lots of categories now. It's nice. It's nice, honestly. There's a space for all of us. Because I think I've been on Twitch for over t around 10 years now. It's been... It be I I'm a lurker. <laughs> I I'm still a lurker. <laughs> but I was always a lurker. But I've been on Twitch for like... I think I've, yeah, yeah, about 10 years. I, the person I was watching, you had to sign in to watch them because they had like a, they would play games and stuff like that. I don't know, you just had to sign in, so I did. Oh, uh, did, around 2016. But that makes sense, Sleeves. If it was around 2016 when you joined, that would have been when there would have been like, I guess a, a big boom of artists and stuff joining Twitch because there was suddenly IRL content. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think it was around 2016, 2017 that they did that, but I can't remember exactly. Oh, I could be wrong. It could have been earlier than that. Oh, IRL content. What is that even? I, I know, right? What is an IRL category? Sleep. What is that? Never heard of them. <laughs> How are you doing, by the way? There was a day did some packing and cleaning at the same time. Took my brother to the airport. He's starting his trip a week before me. Oh, lovely. I hope they have a good flight. I'm good, thank you. I'm a, I'm a bit like fatigued from emailing and like chasing people. I've been chasing people all day. Well, all day yesterday, really. But uh, other than that, it's fine. Really? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Oh dear. Streaming outside while you do stuff. Yeah, that, well that's IRL, but then also technically what I'm doing here is IRL content because I'm showing you art. So IRL kind of at the time I think was a bigger category because it was a lot of other things as well. It wasn't just going outside like it is now more. It, it's now, it's, it used to be more just like anyone who wasn't playing a game was doing IRL craft stuff. <laughs> you were either gaming or you were IRL, one or the other. Ah <coughs> oh dear, like like following me on like vlog, yeah, like a vlog. That's what it definitely is now. I think I joined Twitch in 2014, 2015. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Actually, I wait. Can I check? Can you see that about people? You can. You joined in 2014. I can see because if you click your name and chat, you can see when you made your account. Yeah. Lucky instantly get how lovely look. And thank you for the hydrate. Oh. Flight was delayed by 35 minutes, but they're on their way. And the dinosaurs are looking good, thank you. They're very small and very fluffy. You came to Twitch with the COVID train, a lot of people did. And I'm like glad a lot of people did. And like a lot of people stuck around. A lot of people found uh, something they liked here and they stayed. And I liked that. It was really nice. It was a really good time for Twitch. Uh, obviously things have evened out a little bit more now. People are back in office and things have gone back to how, like more similar to how they were before. But yeah, no, for like a good period of time, it, I, I will say, as a, someone who started streaming, I, I've had a, had the account again for like 10 years, but I only started streaming four years ago and I started streaming right at the pandemic as well. Um, I do miss 
the like that those those that first year there were so many makers and crafters streamers and it was so nice. I will say though, maybe maybe it's just my my uh, rose tinted glasses, but I feel like we are having a bit of a resurgence and more people trying streaming again, which is really nice. Like we've had more makers and crafters joining. I've been seeing more new faces around, which has been really nice. So I feel like there's been like a little bit of a whoop, again. Ah oh dear, King to the COVID train. I was on hiatus and came back around COVID too. Nice. I can see the join date for others, but not for myself. Can you not see? Oh, I, I can get the one for yourself. Here you go, Robert. You, you, uh, created your account on the 9th of October, 2020. There you go. I got you. I got you. 9th of October, 2020. You. Oh dear. I had my Twitch since 2017, but didn't use it until April, 2020. Yeah, I was an old bean. I'm an old bean. Uh, uh, I'm old here. I'm not very knowledgeable because I, I really did only watch like a couple people at the beginning and I never even followed them because I was so anxious. I would just click the YouTube notification and come across a Twitch whenever they went live. You were one of the first people I followed? Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> I guess technically we did start streaming like six months after that. So yeah, it would have been would have been an earlier bean. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm I have been seeing more people trying to stream recently. Uh, this was another thing of like um again, having a conversation behind the scenes with somebody about how it doesn't seem like that many cosplayers are on Twitch and it's like they're not. But they I feel like people are slowly filtering across. I would also say like when I started streaming, there was a cosplayer that I was watching. Uh, who was making stuff for... I can't talk about their name, unfortunately, because they have completely rebranded and they are now a VTuber model, whereas they used to show their face, which is why I'm really careful about when I talk about this and I don't say their name and I don't say too much about them um, because I don't want to accidentally dox them. But uh, there was a cosplayer that I, f I was one of the first people I followed and they were making a Nezuko cosplay to try and enter TwitchCon in America. And this was obviously before the, the pandemic really started building up so this was like you know a few months before that and I remember watching them and being like I wonder if I could do that ah there's no reason for me to though you know I'm busy I got other things going on and then I lost my job and then I got claimed unfit for work and then the pandemic started and it was like you know what I don't have anything better to do <laughs> let's, give <it> a <laughs> let's give it a go and I remember asking this person a lot of questions and them being really really helpful and really sweet uh they were really really nice and they uh they gave me a lot of advice before I went live. And again, I only talked in their chat a few times because I was so anxious. They were the first chat that I ever talked in, ever. Um, uh, Cause I'd just been lurking for like, eight, you know, years and years and years. Uh, but you yeah, know, I, I, I chatted in their chat and and they get really, really nice. They're really helpful and they're really encouraging as well. And you know, for them, they rebranded and became a VTuber and they really shot off. They're doing very well now. And so that's their job. Uh, but so again, I have to be a bit careful about saying too much. But um, yeah, no, I, and I'm really happy for them because they were a really nice person. It's nice when nice people do well. <laughs> I don't know how to describe. It's nice when nice people are, do, are, are, are cool, but and they do really well and good things happen to them. Uh, but it does mean I can't tell you about the person who got me into streaming without doxing someone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. You'll just have to take my word for it. There was a person like just over four years ago making Nezuko costume and it inspired me to try making cosplays on Twitch myself. Uh, but before that, I, I think it was just them and Blapple that I ever really saw. There wasn't too many. And no, Blapple was a bit later than that as well. Ah, oh, dear. You do the Nika cosplay. I loved making the wig for that. That was so much fun. I normally hate stuff like that, but that wig that I love it. I want to make more stuff like that in the future. I don't have any reason to right now is the problem, but I would love to make more stuff like that in the future because that was really fun. I came to Green Park to Twitch on the dark side of Reddit music streaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, from Reddit is it? I, don't, I guess fair enough though, like if that's the reason that you came across, hell yeah. Feels like many started streaming during the pandemic. I think a lot of us just had a lot of extra time on our hands, so it was like, sure, go on then. Alan Sonia, good morning, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I actually have no idea how I found my way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, I, I feel like a few people are like, it's lovely to have you. How did you find us? <laughs> in our weird corner of the internet. 
I actually don't know there was an art category when I first joined. I assumed it was just gaming. It was just gaming. Twitch was just gaming for a really long time. You, again, weren't allowed to do art or anything. If you go to some of the older artists on, on Twitch, like in the art category especially, they'll tell you about the times where they were getting like banned for doing a drawing or a doodle. <laughs> <laughs> because Twitch was so anti-art for a period. They'll, they'll, they'll tell you all about it. <laughs> I, I didn't watch so many artists back then. Again, like, the other thing was it was kind of like, you wouldn't really see them because it was a gaming only platform for a really long time. I, well, not a really long time, because it was just in TV and when it changed into Twitch, that's when I made an account. So it was like pretty much just after it went from just in TV to Twitch. Um, Justin TV, by the way, was what Twitch was before it was Twitch for anyone who's not been here a bit less long. Um, but yeah, no, it was all for gaming only. <laughs> Just gaming. Oh dear, I was hearing double George! Thank you for lurking on the YouTube, I appreciate it. It, it, it was a TwitchCon contest that inspired me to start my Wonder Woman in 2020 and then the contest was obviously cancelled. Yeah! Yeah, the timing was, uh, a little something something. Yeah. Also, good morning, I hope you're doing well. I only joined because I partner started streaming and it was a great way to see and hang with him when we were long distance, which is really nice. My early days of Twitch I was watching someone play Chrono Trigger, nice. OnlyFans was originally made for art. Yeah, it's like one of those, right? Where it's like, Twitch was made for, for gaming. And you know, there's, there's still a lot of very big game streamers, but I would say there's just as many really big IRL streamers, vlogging streamers. Um, there's some really, really big art streamers at this point as well. So it's, it's nice that it has more categories because there's more reasons for people to come here. Like, you know, I know a lot of people in this community don't really watch any game streams. I do. I, I watch gaming and, and art and music and food. Food. I do watch food. Uh, so I watch a bit of everything, but I know a lot of people are really only here for one, one category. And it could be just music or it could be just art or it could be just food. So it's nice that they have options now. The Twitch bills come in. Who has Justin TV half of the time? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's just old Twitch. Really hoping once I get back with a proper job, I can go back to streaming regularly. Don't think I'll be able to have a, a set schedule, but yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's tricky as well if you have like work and other other commitments and such. But it's nice to see people as and when they can. I mean, a lot of things haven't changed about Twitch. Is like, yeah, yeah, really? But no, no, there's a lot of new good stuff. And I think the the front page is much better than it used to be. Like you get recommended stuff based on what you're watching and the categories that you watch more now, which is really, really nice. Because again, it used to be you'd go on the front page and you'd always just be recommended like League of Legends or uh, or World of Warcraft. And if you're like, ah, okay, <laughs> which is fine. If you like World of Warcraft or if you like League of Legends. But yeah, no. now these days it's pretty, it feels like a bit more personal, it's nice. Yeah, uh, saw that Twitch was just a TV on a Reddit vlog yesterday. Google was back rub, Pepsi was Brad <laughs> I didn't know about Google or Pepsi. I knew Twitch. This is, I've just been here for a minute. But again, I've only been streaming for the last few years and I was just a mega lurker before that. I just loved watching streams. Um, I do think there's something about watching a few different streams and like getting a, a feel of the vibe though, which did help me when I went live because I already kind of knew a lot of Twitch etiquette, which I think for a lot of people, the first stream is like, you use a big learning curve because you suddenly realize like if you haven't been watching lots of streams before that there's a lot of etiquette around twitch that people like unspoken stuff unspoken rules <laughs> oh dear which is always very frustrating just speak the rules tell me i'd rather just know uh now you get on the front page Tr truly did a 180 yeah i shouldn't have been there <laughs> i was lost that day oh dear. actually no it's happened three times now i've been on the front page of twitch three times i've been very lost <laughs> How did I get there? <laughs> but the, but one of the times I was told, uh, no, two of the times I was told, it was only one time that I wasn't told and that was the really intense one. The other two times I was aware of it. Oh dear. Exciting stuff though, exciting things to say. It does mean that my, my viewership is forever skewed, <laughs> but it, it's in the funniest way possible, so I do quite like it. One of them was charity. Yeah, one of them was with the Starlight Foundation. I went on uh, front page with them, um, which was really, really nice as well because we were part of a raid train. So I could then, basically I went on the front page. We had like a, a much increase because I think we were about 800 people at a time at that point. And then I got to raid them all into somebody else, which was really, really nice. <laughs> so I'm very, I was very grateful for that one. That worked really well as well, being part of a, a raid train because it meant that I could send them all to somebody else. Um, and then the first time I was one of the, I wasn't, I haven't been invited back since, but I was part of Women's Aware, not, but no, Women's Visibility Month. Basically like visibility of female Twitch streamers. Uh, and I was in there as a makers and crafting streamer. So I did that and I was on the front page then. 
Uh, and that was really early into streaming for me. That was like less than a year into streaming I did that. Um, and then, yeah, the one in October was, or the November even was the one I wasn't aware. But that was, it was fun, it was really fun. But yeah, it was very intense. Unspoken rules are the only mods, no, not banned yet. Oh well, no, it's all like unspoken rules that go across like a lot of Twitch. Uh, like, you know, not giving us your address, not, not giving any personal information, trying to avoid, uh, you know, anything that could make you a target, stuff like that. It, it's useful if you know all of that kind of stuff before you go live for the first time. Oh dear. You know, shouting out, being able to shout people out when they come into your channel, that's another one. Like if you're new to Twitch, you might not know about shout outs as a command. We didn't have shout out commands when I first went live and I did know about them because I didn't know how to set it up. <laughs> but uh, we got, we ended up getting there. So, you know, your first raid can catch you off guard because you're like, oh my god. Also, if you have Nightbot, making sure that you turn off the ones where it's like you can't say... Because, like, otherwise, a lot of people's first ever raid, their whole chat will get timed out. And it's because Nightbot's got settings on it automatically that mean if you put a certain amount of emotes or a certain amount of, like, repeated words, like a raid message, that you'll get timed out. So stuff like that, you know, you know, getting raided for the first time and everybody getting timed out, that sort of stuff. <laughs> stuff a lot of people go through uh, but it helps if you've watched other streamers and you can like be like die we'll fix that before it happens kind of thing i uh, usually told that oh yeah you should always be told that you're going to be on the front page always and normally it's like there used to be something you could apply for doing charity events which is how i got on it a couple times but no uh, because it, you're if you ever get told that you're gonna like offered to go on the front page they'll send you an email basically like would you like to be on the front page uh during this time and then you have to go through the checklist and say you've done this, 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 and this. Stuff like making sure that your all age is appropriate, that you're not talking about certain subjects, stuff like that. If it ever happens to you, you'll get sent the full checklist. And it's probably different from the one I was sent because it's been over a year. So yes, yes. It's not an automatic thing, no. Uh, they will pick you out if you're part of... Charity events for affiliates is pretty much the only way you get on the front page of Twitch, just to be clear. Um, this is the only way that I have. It's because of my affiliation with Boobtober was the the first, the one where I didn't know about it was because of that. And the second one was because of Starlight. It, as an affiliate, these days, the only way you'll ever get on it is for certain charity events. Yes, probably. <laughs> it's very difficult to do it otherwise. The amount of guys I see say respect women when the women streamers that follow are in bikini shaking their tits clothes off. I mean, you can still respect it. I respect the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> My whole gig is being a target. No! Yeah, shout out the lurkers. Yeah, shout out the lurkers. Cutie, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I've seen the view account drop like a stone. There's stuff like that. It's like... Uh, pe pe lurking is something that I was aware of before because I did it for so long. But a lot of people don't know what lurkers are and they don't know how to react to lurkers and stuff like that. The minor panic when that happens is kind of amusing though, yeah. Remember when waves weren't sending all your viewers? They still don't sometimes. It's why we shout people out before we raid just in case. I don't think I've been here, but I, uh, oh, you're Kyo! Oh, Kyo, welcome on in! I, uh, bless you, nice new name, cutie, very nice, but Kyo, nice, welcome on in. I wondered, because yeah, the same beginning of name. Like, not Australian, no cussing, not allowed. What happened to the time you didn't know? It's because of Boobtober. It was because of Boobtober, but it was in, it was in November, uh, so it wasn't in October anymore, and I think there was just a little bit of confusion, and they didn't tell me that it was going to happen. So basically in Boobtober, we'd said, if, you know, if any streamers from Boobtober can get on the front page, that would be amazing. And I think Vile was on the front page from Boobtober, but I think Vile was made aware of it. But no, there's a few people that got put on the front page from Boobtober that year. Again, it's a charity event. Charity events have a much more likely chance of getting affiliates on the front page. Um, and yeah, so we did manage to get a few members of Boobtober on the front page that year. But uh, yes, then they took me in November <laughs> without telling me. <laughs> yup. So that was, that was a something something. Um, so I didn't know about it. I had no- I know why it happened in retrospect, but I, I had no idea at the time. I didn't get sent the front, like, the list or anything. When I started streaming, we got ra bot raided a lot, and a lot of people had certain words banned to block uh, the bots, and it didn't- uh, I didn't get raided, but I hit a load of streamer targets, like the people talking uh, in chat once. Nice! Are you muted or something's happened to my speakers? Am I muted? I don't think I'm muted. Everyone else is- is- it might be your speakers. Check your speakers. Not that you can hear me. Ah, uh, dear. Talking about front page, reminds me of a jelly was on the front page talking about cannibalism and piss. Yeah. Don't tell anyone though, Jason. No one has to know. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Yeah. The Twitch app doesn't send people along with raids. Yeah, sometimes you get you get lost. So I always shout people out as we raid them so that people know where we're going. Pretty sure I was on Carousel. I think you were on Carousel because you had several hundred viewers. 
And not that you don't deserve it, but like it is unusual for you to randomly pick up several hundred. So yeah, I think you were. Sexualizing women and respecting them are two different things. I'm not saying anyone who lusts after women doesn't respect them, but they need to be better evidence. True. <laughs> Speakers are working again. Who goes on the front page that I use that to identify streamers with low viewers? Really? Um, I'm muted. Ah, oh, shoot. Damn it. Now you can't hear all of my absolute garbage that I'm speaking. Damn it. I wanted to spread my garbage across the internet. What the heck? Oh dear, you should be reprogrammed as a food channel. Yeah, we do talk about it a lot. I was tempted. So I've actually watched the Has Been Hotel show on uh, on Amazon Prime now, and there's a cannibal lady in there. I'm tempted. <laughs> I'm tempted to cosplay the cannibal lady. <laughs> Just for memes. I'm tempted. I could wear a mask for it as well, which is perfect, but not yet. Not yet. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, add it to the cosplay list of things I'd like to do. Yeah, these days, the best way of going on the front page as an affiliate is is generally to do charity stuff. That being said, I don't think trying to get on the front page is a good way to do charity because I, I've done many, many charity events and like there were two times I got lucky enough to be on the front page via charity and one of them I wasn't even, I think it might be was a mistake. So I wouldn't say do charity stuff just to try and get on the front page of Twitch, it's not a good idea, but sometimes there is the extra benefit of Twitch highlighting those charity events, especially big ones. The Starlight Foundation's a wonderful one because it's much bigger. Uh, sometimes, again, you are more likely to get pushed that way, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stream for them for that reason because you will only end up being disappointed if you don't get it. And I do remember like when I was put on the front page that there were other people that were very disappointed about that and um, how to put it. <sighs> if you get angry, like how to put it, you can be annoyed at yourself that you didn't get it and somebody else did, like that's fine. But if you go publicly posting that you're mad that I got it, it doesn't make you look like you're doing charity for a good reason. <laughs> Put it out there. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems like you're doing charity just to try and boost yourself, which at the end of the day, I guess if you raise money, it's fine, but like, it's a bit weird. It's, it's, it's a bit weird. All right, we should probably maybe consider starting actually doing some work today. Vile's here, so it's all their fault. I want Amazon Prime so bad, but have you decided we take HBO instead? Well, at some point though, uh, Kyo, you might end up, you know, buying something on Amazon. So I got one month free of Amazon Prime. Uh, which is why I've watched it. I don't own Amazon Prime normally. I get it a couple times a year whenever they offer me the free deal. At some point, maybe they'll offer you that deal and then like you'll go to checkout and they'll be like, do you want a free month of Amazon Prime? You can say yes. And then you get Prime TV as well for a month. And then you also get a, a Prime that you can send it a streamer and then you can take Bezos' money. Come on, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you for the generous donation of piss. Has been hotel, it's causing problems at house because I wants to watch it and I've seen some of the scenes and she's just not old enough. No, it's an adult show. It's, it's an adult show. It's it, it goes into some very triggering and very adult topics. It is, yeah, very much not a kid's show <laughs> at all. Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah, there is a lot. <laughs> World population increasing, so obviously these covers sharpen your knives. <laughs> no, I'm never to blame. It's, it's Val's fault. I don't buy anything from Amazon. That's very fair. You don't buy anything from Amazon, it might be difficult. What did I have to buy from Amazon that meant that I got it? I, I, I remember having to buy something. Oh, it was because the thread shops closed down. I ended up buying more of my thread from it. And then, <laughs> so I bought like a spool of thread, one, because my thread shops closed down and I can't get thread right now. There will be another one. It's had like the issues in the roof. In the UK, we've been having a lot of problems with buildings where they have this certain concrete in their roof. And if it gets discovered that they have this concrete in it, you have to shut the, the shop down or the shop or the cl uh, school down. In a lot of the case, you can't go in those buildings anymore because it's like degrading and it could fall down. So we've had that. Not asbestos. It's not asbestos. It's not the same thing as that. It's something else. It's a, it's a newer one, Cthulhu. That's only been going on the last six months, I want to say. But they shut down a lot of schools last year, um, late last year, because they had this. It's basically just. <sighs> It's, 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 a, it's not bad to breathe in, it will just fall down. <laughs> so it's a concrete that's just not safe. So that long term it like gets air bubbles in it and then it will collapse or something. I don't know, it's not the same as asbestos. It's more the structural st stability of the buildings that have that in it is not good. And a lot of schools have it because it was really cheap. So a lot of schools have had to have whole areas of them shut down because 
uh, they might fall down. <laughs> and yes, unfortunately, a lot of shops in, in Wales have had the same issue where they've got that same cheap stuff in their ceilings and their roofs. Specifically roofs, I think it is not ceilings, I think it's just roofs. Uh, but yeah, it means that they can't use it as a place of business anymore, which means I think we will get the thread shop back, but I just have to wait till they relocate somewhere else, which could be a few months, it could be a year or two, we'll see. I really hope they bounce back. It's difficult. It's difficult when it's stuff like that, because you, you know... I know that there was a couple of other issues near us with another place and they have all relocated and it actually looks really good they've actually been given bigger spaces I think the council might have stepped in to help out some of the local businesses that were struggling with it rocks in their head not good no rocks in their head not good oh the hashtag blame vile we always blame vile another one yeah what is it let me let me see if I can find it because what's the problem with the concrete in the schools there you go what's the problem with the concrete in the schools r-a-a-c so it's reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete a material type that is used in roof planks and wall panels but its life has expired which means it's liable to collapse with no notice <laughs> which means if you have r-a-a-c in your house from the time period that it would have been put in it is now going to collapse at any minute <laughs> But again, it was more used for public buildings. It wasn't really used, I think, so much in houses. So most people are fine for their home. It's schools, it's shopping centers, it's stuff like that that are having to be closed down because those are the ones that have it in it generally. Cinemas, big big public buildings. Yeah, I, I can copy and paste it. This is what happened last year. Very, well, late last year. I'll copy and paste it. There you go, there you go. There you go. You can read that. And you can Google it if you want more information. Google's your friend. Ah <laughs> oh dear. Places is collapsing because of me now. Yeah, it's Vile's fault. I can't believe that Vile did that. Can you stop collapsing the, the buildings in the UK, please, Vile? Very, very rude. Very rude. Ah oh dear, about the Black Thread famine. It wasn't Black Thread, actually. It was this one up here, which I've got more of now. It's the purple thread that I'm using for my cosplay. I needed it, and I needed it in this colour. And I've been having- I've just been having problems with getting it. But it's okay, I've got it now. Oh dear, I'm afraid I can't do that. Please, Vile, please! Stop collapsing our buildings! But yeah, there was a whole thing, and it's still going on. Like, it's still ongoing. Places are still finding it. And again, like, if you find that stuff in your roof, you gotta leave right now. It could collapse any second. <laughs> but it's his birthday! It is his birthday! Happy birthday, Vile! Every time Vile does a grandfather at R.A.C. <laughs> You can you stop ground pounding, Val? Jesus, it's delicate over here. Oh my god, can't believe. Okay, we're gonna start. By the way, I'm gonna start the timer. And we're going to. Uh, we're gonna. We're gonna do a little bit of sewing because I, you know I'm not vile and I I don't wait a whole hour before I I start. That's a vile thing to do. I don't do that. There you go. That started. We've started. Hell yeah. We're on our way. Already more productive than vile today. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's been a whole saga. Just 45 minutes. Yeah, but that was all vile. You know, that was that was just vile. Oh, actually, this is not the best angle for me. There we go, there we go. Let's get this at a slightly better angle so I can see. Like, why am I doing it from the top down? I'm not top down. Okay. The face here is gonna be a little difficult. But that's okay. We're okay, we're okay. We're gonna we're okay with struggling a little bit for a cute dinosaur. <laughs> Damn! The shade, yeah, Val <laughs> whenever Val's in the stream, it's only when Val's here, you know, when Val's not here, we have a really, really quick start to stream, but whenever Val's here, I feel like I need to slow down, you know, just a little bit, because, uh, you know, that's what they like in their stream, so I try to make the stream a really comfortable place for them. <laughs> I'm sorry, Val, you don't deserve, you don't deserve any of this. Oh, dear. We were actually talking about this the other day, the way that different people, like, you know how you talk with different people on Twitch and there's some people where you're like, oh, it's really nice to see you. It's so lovely. Nice of you to pop by. I hope everything's going good. And then there are other people where you're like, ew, is that a vial? Oh my God, is vial in my stream? Ew. Did you know that vial once took like six hours to start their stream? I can't believe it. <laughs> I, lo I love the way that we speak. 
<laughs> like, we do, like obviously everyone's good friends, to be clear. But like, yeah, the, the different ways that you you greet people. Blaffle's another one. Whenever I go into Blaffle stream, they're like, "Ew, it's jelly," and it's like, "Wow, Blaffle, wow, here I am coming coming to pop in and show my support." I was gonna spam you with love hearts, and then and then you said, "Ew, jelly," and now, wow. <laughs> Uh, the moment I shop, everyone just takes a double B. But you like- oh no, no, you don't like that. You like Mpreg, right? We don't do that when you come here, I'm so sorry. You know, I try to make people feel as uh, as welcomed and as uh, as seen as possible, but I can't do everything. <laughs> there are some things I just can't do with my streams. I'm sorry, Vile. On the plus side though, it does mean that you have the monopoly on it right now. Which, as a streamer, that's a really strong position to be in. Oh dear, I've eaten all the popcorn, I'm ready for the main event to start! Me and Vile go boxing. <laughs> oh dear. A completely different thing. Yeah, me, me and Vile boxing event when? <laughs> oh, streamer boxing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna win. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if either of us are gonna be winners. I think even if whoever, just getting in the ring and trying to box, I think we'd both just die. <laughs> arms would give out. These are crafting arms. These aren't boxing arms. These hands were built for crafting. Oh dear. Wow, you're like Twitch's first open the Embrex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, poor Vile. That being said, that would be a hell of a- You know like you have like the Twitch banner under your stream? I think my one is still meme streams and sewing machines. Vile. Twitch's first ever open the Emperor stream. <laughs> that would be a hell of like a Twitch intro. Oh dear. There we go. It might not talk maybe enough about all the modifications and stuff they do. For anyone who hasn't met Vile before and is very confused by this conversation, Vile does Nerf Blaster modifications. They're doing a really big competition at the moment called uh, Merge Masters, where they're merging lots of different parts of different Nerf Blasters together to make a new one, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's been a really cool event so far. It's been cool to see everyone taking part. Uh, but yeah, they're doing that at the moment. Not everything else that we're talking about. Oh, uh, don't the size, thank you. Look, they're, 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 they're growing and they're having little splashes and slowly but surely, they're gonna get there and they're gonna be very cute little beans. They are slowly losing their faces as well, but I will go back in and put them back. I'm gonna start doing art streams of shifty Mprex since everyone is pushing me to do that. Are you allowed to- Wait, no, I don't think you're allowed to do that, Vile, because I think that's displaying, uh, you can't make fetish stuff on Twitch because we nearly had artful nudity, but we don't have it, unfortunately. Nearly. So close. But not quite. Oh dear, what's everybody's favorite dino? Ooh, I, I struggle with this question because I actually have a few favorites and also technically my favorite is not a dinosaur. Uh, I think it's an isopod is the one, my favorite. Let me, let me, I'll have to look it up. What is my favorite dinosaur? <laughs> no, I, I don't know if it counts though. I like the, the really old ones, the ones before they were dinosaurs. Those are my favorites. The really, really old bugs. Oh dear. Dang, Cherios? I don't know if I know that one. Ooh, mine's Stegosaurus. Nothing wrong with Stegosaurus. I like the idea with Stegosaurus as well that it could, uh, like, almost, the, the, the spines might change color a little bit. Like, he, they can, like, pump blood to it to make them redder and more, more scary looking if they feel friend. I think that's really cool. Pros just want to work on our 3D modeling? Ooh. We might be asleep by the time we check it, Vile, but I will have a look. I look forward to seeing it, for sure. If you are asleep, I'll make sure to say really nice things behind your back. I can't say them to your face, but I can say them behind your back. Spinosaurus, Cacosaurus, Jester. I get the feeling you might be making some stuff up. Did you watch The Lamb Before Time? I did, but I... I... Okay, please excuse Baby Jelly and Jelly being a bit of a silly bean. I didn't like it because it didn't feel historically accurate. So, so yes, I did watch it, but younger me was not very impressed because the dinosaurs weren't realistic enough and I didn't like that. I only liked hyper-realistic dinosaurs. So, so yes, but I, 
I probably would appreciate it more as a, an adult. When I was younger, I only, I liked walking with dinosaurs and I liked all of those ones where they like, you know, had like CG renders of the dinosaurs. I liked that. That's what I wanted. I didn't want like cartoon dinosaurs that could talk. I wanted dinosaurs like fighting each other. I wanted them to fight. Jurassic Park will get the heck out. Exactly. It's like, nah, I want realistic dinosaurs. Dinosaurs is real, as far as you know. I know this is dinosaurs. I mean, I feel like the knowledge of dinosaurs changes like every few years because a new fossil is found that means that something can't be true or something like that. But it is really fun. It feels like if you're someone who researches dinosaurs, you're like slowly unraveling a mystery that's been going on for hundreds of years, which is really cool. Also, music. I've literally been here not, a, not an hour. I'm still here. Thank you. <laughs> please, please. I'll blow it up. There you go. Get rid of the tabs as well. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, yeah, no, when I was little, real dinosaurs, or oh, get the heck out. I'm not interested in cartoon dinosaurs. I want them to be real. Oh, dear. There was a walking with dinosaurs that I really liked. I think they followed Brachiosaurus or Dunkosaurus. It, it was like one of the really tall beans. It followed a tall bean dinosaur, right? And they basically it followed the life of like a very young one where they were like, born into eggs into the forest and then the eggs would hatch and then they were really small and they were like wandering around the forest but then the forest caught fire and then it was how they would it was basically like David Attenborough-esque but for getting these Dunklosauruses out of this fire and oh my god I I, I used to it used to get me like when they would that oh my god cry everton that was my that was my uh version <laughs> That was my version of the land before time. It was the bit where all the dinosaurs are trying to escape the forest fire. And yeah, how they, they're too small, their legs are too short. They can't escape the forest fire. Although I think some of them did. I just don't think all of them did. There we go. It's one of the most revisited dinosaurs. It's yeah. Dinosaur stuff is mad, but like mad in the coolest way. I, good mad. All right, our tall bean is done. Very handsome, I love him very much. Extreme Dinosaur was another just dinosaur show. They worked on two legs. <gasps> yeah, that sounds pretty cool. I probably, I see now that, that I might've liked. Well, actually no, I guess with their cartoon, I might not have liked it, but the idea of dinosaurs walking on two legs, I kind of like that. <laughs> but it's difficult to tell if younger me would have appreciated it. I do feel like younger me is a bit of an alien sometimes. Like, what, would you have liked this? Waves, dinosaurs on two legs. You like you like this? <laughs> Is this a thing you like? I did have a book that I liked. I had a book called, I think it was Henry and his Bucket Full of Dinosaurs. I liked that book. That was a good book. <laughs> I liked that. I think there's been sequels since that book, but I, I only had that one. I only had the Henry and his Bucket Full of Dinosaurs. But I liked that. Um... What else did I like for dinosaurs? I mean, we've talked about sea monsters before. <laughs> I th I, it's been a while since we discussed sea It's been a, I can't believe it's been like a whole year since we last talked about sea monsters. A lot of people here did go out and watch sea monsters. <laughs> after, after we talked about it, the walking with dinosaurs sea, it's so good. Oh yeah, and I got retweeted by the guy. To, sorry, a saga that may have been before for a few of you joined. Uh, a few years ago, we were talking about dinosaurs, right? We were talking about dinosaurs that we liked and all that. And I brought up a show that I watched. We had it on video as a kid. I'll see if I can find a link to it so I can just post it in chat for you. It was on, uh, it was on Netflix. A uh, Sea Monsters TV show. Yeah, it's like a television miniseries. Uh, it won a BAFTA for best visual effects. Oh no, that's, that's a new one. Yeah, this is the one. Nigel Marvin. All right, I'll get you the IMDB page. And so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, here's the IMDB page. So this is the, sh this is the thing. It's like a three part series and it is glorious. We, I actually, the, uh, like a couple Christmases ago, Shiny was working on Christmas day. So we, we didn't go see our families or anything, right? 
But what we did do is when Shiny got home from work, we had a big old dinner and we watched Sea Monsters <laughs> because it's like one of those ones where it's aged like a fine wine, right? The CG. And they do things as well. So they do it like in a documentary kind of style, as if they're documenting dinosaurs by traveling back in time and walking amongst them. So you have humans there walking around these dinosaurs and like getting injured by them. Like in the first episode, a sea scorpion takes a chunk out of his leg and he's like, this is why they were so dangerous. Look at like, look at how much of my leg they just slightly, like they grazed me and I, I exploded. <laughs> it's like, it, it's it's the whole doing the documentary like as if they're there and it's so good it's so like again big props because the guy that that did it nigel marvin the presenter plays it straight faced the whole time and it's so good my kids watch that show sea monsters or all the di uh, uh in the bucket full of dinosaurs because they did make it a television show didn't they you watched the sea monsters show and i loved it pigeon yeah, Nigel Marvin. And like, we had a whole stream where we basically talked about Nigel Marvin and sea monsters. And afterwards, we found out that Nigel Marvin was actually working on a voiceover for a dinosaur themed game. And we talked about it. I put it on Twitter and he retweeted me. And that is that is my celebrity interaction that I'll never forget. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was the that was a great moment. The moment when Nigel Marvin from Sea Monsters, a show that I probably watched like a hundred times as a kid, retweeted me. I was like, whoa, that's it. That This is the highlight. This is the highlight of my streaming career. And honestly, <laughs> it still is. <laughs> it was the best. Oh my God. Happy hacking days. Oh, duh. Oh, thank you for the luck, Pie. No, you're fine. Take care of yourself. Good luck with getting home. I hope everything goes smoothly. And George, thank you so much for the lurk over on YouTube. I appreciate it. Get some good dinners. Get some good dinners. Nigel Thornberry? No, no, not Nigel Thornberry. That would be, though, also, I would be pretty happy about that. If Nigel Thornberry retweeted me, wouldn't be mad. Uh, no, but not that Nigel. <laughs> Different Nigel. Oh, but yeah, that was a, that was a good time. That was a, that was a good heckin' day. <laughs> that was a good heckin' day. And... Yeah, Sea Monsters is wonderful. They they, they basically document, the whole idea is they document like the top 10 most dangerous sea monsters from from different periods of time in like dinosaur land. <laughs> so different different dinosaurs and stuff like that, they'd like uh, go through and they document them. So you have like, but it's not just dinosaurs, I guess, technically, because they also have like the Megalodon and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a mix. And they go through them and they, they rank them on how deadly they are, but they also go swimming with them. So they have like CG versions of the dinosaurs swimming around the real life humans, and it's wonderful. We also found a bit where <laughs> where there's obviously they're trying to like display a certain like kind of, uh, I, I guess, environment type, but they've copied and pasted CG trees in the background. <laughs> the, the trees aren't real. If you... <laughs> If you look at it, there's like a load of trees that are just exactly the same in the background. <laughs> and it's not even like it's that important. They're just background trees. Oh my god. But it gives me so much joy. Like, stuff like that. Again, age is like fine wine. It's also, I believe, on Netflix. Which means if you have Netflix, you can go watch it. It's just a three-part miniseries. If you're having a bad day, I would say, and you need like a little bit of a chuckle, a little giggle, it's a good option. It's a good giggling option. Oh, you're a bad lurker now. You're a fine lurker. My one place is I liked about a thousand dinosaur day posts on Twitter and then Sam Neil followed you. <gasps> Very cool though. I'm hoping to visit Abbott's Adam Savage's workshop and show off some builds. Would be the cool that would be really cool. I think a lot of us grew up with uh, Mythbusters and Adam Savage and stuff like that. So that would be I think many, 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 many makers and crafters would be super jealous of that one. Oh, that would be really, really cool. I really hope that you do get to do that, though. That would be amazing. Oh, dear. I really liked uh, Adam Savage's TED talk on cosplay. That, that that one gives me a little smile when I hear him talk about it. Yeah, it made me happy. My Bucky of Cobra Fables fame saw a piece of art I made and like, oh my god! <gasps> That's so cool! That's such a good one! That's such a good celebrity one! Oh my god. It's a day's drive away from me. But that would be so cool. But Vile is so cool, though. So cool. 
My best a celebrity interaction was was meeting Alice Cooper. He said my friend was cool, so I am Alice level. Oh, Alice Cooper level cool by proxy. Oh, 100%. That is really, really cool. I haven't had too many celebrity interactions, I don't think. Uh, like, yeah, I don't think I have had too many. Nothing, nothing that cool, that's for sure. There we go. Uh, I love Deadly 60 with Steam. I don't know what that is. Oh, dear. Hmm, have I had any interactions? With famous people? Oh, I served some celebrities, but I didn't know that they were celebrities. Who did we serve? We served the doctor, the, the, the female Doctor Who. I served her personally, but I didn't know it was her because I, I hadn't, I'd stopped watching Doctor Who at that point. So I had no idea. And it was only afterwards that one of my colleagues were like, oh my God. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I served her in shop, but it's not a very good celebrity interaction because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then another one, oh, who was it? Was it Eddie Izzard? He'd been doing a charity event nearby, I believe. And he'd come in afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it is Eddie Izzard. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Also known as Susie Izzard, okay. Yeah, so they, they came into the store afterwards and yeah, they'd just been doing a charity event nearby. And I knew that it was them. That one I did know, but they were also exhausted. So it was like, I'm not gonna go, you know, bother them. So I just served them like a normal customer. I think we all did, you know, reading between the lines. They'd been working at some charity event all day. So we just, again, as cool as I'm sure it would be to get for some people to get autographs, there is, I think sometimes just that you're obviously exhausted. I think they'd done a run and then I think they'd also been like on television or like, you know, doing interviews and stuff. So they were they were clearly tired. So we left them alone. We left them. Well, we didn't leave them alone. We, we served them. But like, you know. Yes. Oh, dear. I did three episodes of Kissy Girl, but oh, that was ten. That's very cool. That's very hacking cool. What's the other we're starting Tommy for art? Oh, how are you doing? Anatom Anat Anatomy? <laughs> An anatomy is rough. How goes it? I hope that you're doing well. If you need to pop back into lurk, you're fine. Good luck with it. Anatomy is one that I think all artists at some point have to do in it. <laughs> Big struggles. Not the easiest. I really need to get a new hoop because yeah, this one is just loose at this edge. So it just means I have to like slightly hold the fabric to keep it taut, but only in this one particular <laughs> Oh dear. Silly, silly little eccentricities of our older equipment. Look his little belly's growing. Look at his little belly. Oh, very cute. Very heckin' cute. There we go. I think if there's any others. I was on Blue Peter once. Near impossible to find it though. We've got it on video, but... But I don't think you'd find it on YouTube or anything like that. I was on Blue Peter once, um, but I was also like 10. <laughs> I was in a book called My Class of when I was about six. Aww. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's a cute one as well. Yeah. We won't pay taxes. I'm just joking. I definitely... Well, I don't actually earn enough to pay taxes. <laughs> but if I did, I would definitely pay them. Don't worry. Oh, when you list it all off, I've done a lot of things. Yeah, you have. That's really, it's really cool. I love hearing about people's like little claims to fames or like, uh, what do you call it? Claims to fames or like meeting someone famous or something like that. I think it's really cool. I mean, a lot of people at some point will get like a little claim to fame or something. Even if it's just something small. Also that you care about that other people might not know much about. Like I guess it is a very niche celebrity. I'm trying to think, is there anybody that I'd like to meet? There's a lot of streamers I'd like to meet, but it's mainly just because, you know, I'd love to go to a Twitch con and hang out with everyone that you get to talk to online and stuff. It's not necessarily that any of the streamers are like ridiculously big or anything. It's more just like, it'd be nice to meet everyone. <laughs> I don't know if that necessarily counts, but I do think that would be cool. 
one day to, to meet everyone or to meet a lot of people in person. I know some people don't want to be met in person, which is very fair. Keep yourself safe. I'm not going to TwitchCon this year, but I'm going to try and go next year, I think. That's the plan. I'd like to meet a lot of people. I met a lot of people the last time I went to TwitchCon too, but I didn't get to meet as many people as I wanted because uh, because the, the cosplay contest kind of trapped me for a whole day, which I'm not mad about, don't get me wrong. But I, I couldn't meet anyone that day because I was, I was, I think from 8 a.m. till about 6 p.m. in cosplay, behind the scenes ready to go. <laughs> so by the end of the day, I was also exhausted. Like me and Sun Koi were staying at the same hotel and we were walking back to the hotel after the event. And I was like, hey Sun Koi, before we go, there's a really good place for photos up there if, because there's like a beautiful lake and it's like got lots of wonderful like lily pads and stuff on it. If you're looking to take photos, you go ahead, but I need to go die in the hotel. <laughs> I need to go flop. <laughs> so we were like, it was a great Photoshop like, place down there. Now I need to go. Goodbye. <laughs> I was so exhausted. It was really, really fun, but oh my God. And such a heavy costume. I just wanted to like, I love the Mateus costume, but by the end of that day, I was like, I want to rip it off. Rip everything off. No more. And flop in the air-conditioned hotel, because that was the other thing. When it was TwitchCon in Amsterdam, we were hitting highs of like 40 degrees. And so it was very, very warm. And I was I was warm. I was very warm. I went to a radio station. I met a lot of artists during that time. That's really cool. Yeah, imagine, yeah, working at a radio station, you get to meet like a lot of really interesting people and hear a lot of really interesting stories. I mean, radio and streaming is really not that different either. Streaming is just like a one person radio show. But you could bring guests on, which I mean, I know you do, Vile. You have like uh, streaming people streaming along. And then you can also, oh, I guess highlight different things, advertise things with your stream. I mean, radio and streaming, I don't feel like are that, that dissimilar. There's a lot of crossover. Because related to a movie star, but funny enough, her mother doesn't want us to say who. Fair, fair. Well, also, I wouldn't want to, like, you know, dox teacup or anything like that by knowing a celebrity they may or may not be related to. I can tell you that I don't think I'm related to anyone famous. <laughs> oh, dear. Although, actually, I won't... Okay, I can't say who. Uh, I can't say who this is because this is... It would dox me too badly. I am not related to any celebrities, per se, but I am related to... I guess not a celebrity, a someone in history uh, that has a Wikipedia page about them and such. But I can't say who it is because obviously it would really very much dox me and not only me, but my entire family life. <laughs> so I have to be a little careful, but I am related to somebody with who has a page about them because of historical relevance. They're not that cool or anything. They were just part of an event, and yeah. <laughs> Tis very silly. Tis very- that's the closest I get, and it's not very exciting, honestly. Unless you like history, in which case maybe you'd, maybe you'd be interested, but I think that's about it. <laughs> I know Sari's cousin is in Slipknot, and he may have had a look at my face for quite some time. <gasps> that's so cool! Oh dear. I went to school with a couple of people that were like... Well, we had a really big school to be fair, so I guess it's not really that surprising. But I went to school with a couple people that uh, that have done, I, again, I have to be a bit careful because I don't want to dox myself, but they, uh, one of them has a medal in the Commonwealth Games now. Uh, and the other one has like had some certain best-selling singles and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they were pretty cool. Well, one of them wasn't cool. The person who won the medal, well, no, she's probably fine. I will say she's probably fine. I knew her as a kid. And so there was a time where she was obviously very, very athletic and was really, really like, you know, she, she won medals. She was doing very well. I beat her in the pancake race and she never let me down. Like she, she never let me let it go. <laughs> she was like, she always held a grudge at me after that because I beat her in the pancake race when I was like seven. <laughs> And after that, she never talked to me. She'd always like glare at me and she refused to work with me. I was like, okay, okay. But it's because she was training, or well, I think at the time she would have been training for the Olympics. 
and then I beat her in the pancake race and she was not happy. But she was also a child, to be clear. We were both children. <laughs> these are not adult grudges, these are child grudges. So I guess maybe that's my, uh, maybe that's my claim to fame. I beat a, a, a commonwealth champ in a pancake race once, when I was like seven. <laughs> I don't really remember it that much. All I remember is I know that she hated me after that. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Saki, good morning. Welcome on in. How are you doing? We are just slowly chipping away at our little dinosaurs. Get a little bit more in. Actually, it's, it's family related drama. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, my aunt did our family history and go back to Jonathan Swift. Oh, that's really cool. Just not as well. Ooh. Ooh. I need diners! Gee, they're gonna get ready for your daughter's life. Why did I rescue a dog and a cat? Let me just get my point to help them out. And then my alarm went off and I realized it was okay. I'm glad that the, the dog and the cat are okay. No skipping appointments for you, I guess. Good luck with your appointment. Apparently my great uncle's close friends are David Attenborough, but citation needed. Yeah, this is as well, like, sometimes I hear stories, you hear stories from your family and they're like, I think I need to see some proof before I believe that. It's a, it's a fun story, but is it true though? <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing super exciting on my side. Which is probably a good thing. I, sometimes, especially if you're looking at history, sometimes you don't want it to be too exciting. <laughs> yeah, nothing super exciting on my side. It's just, yeah. That's okay. Doing good in you? Good, thank you. We're talking about like celebrity interactions and whether like claims to fame and all that kind of stuff. Like a lot of people have met some really interesting celebrities or have done something cool like appearing on like, you know, like when you're a kid, maybe you appeared on a television show. Uh, one of my favorite ones is Amazonia Cosplay, who I will always be jealous of, not because they're the World Cosplay Champion, but because they got to go on Dick and Dom in the Bungalow. How dare. <laughs> and I will always be jealous that they got on that show. You know, they can be world champion of cosplay and whatever that, that, that is. And I, that's technically like, you know, a claim to fame. But is it as big as a claim to fame as being on Dick and Dom in the Bungalow? I don't know. And I can never be on Dick and Dom in the Bungalow now. So, you know, there's always time to train and try and become a world cosplay champion. But when is an opportunity like that going to come by? Never. <laughs> I'm never going to get to do that. Very jealous. I just checked out as well. She's one. I mean, got it as a kid godmother. Also, come god yeah i don't really look up people that i went like you know i have a few friends that i still have from school and i guess that's a little different because we keep up to date with each other but i haven't really gone and looked up what other people in my school well we also had a really big school to be fair but i haven't really gone and looked up what other people in my school have done <laughs> since since leaving it i mean i don't know if i would be scared to even like what do i want to know maybe i'll wait until i've done something where i'm like now i feel like i have something to add to the conversation <laughs> Because up until now, I haven't really done anything either. Had a very normal, normal life. <laughs> very boring, but I mean, it's been fine. Again, sometimes boring is the way to go. N no, no drama. Just vibes. Oh, I can reasonably believe it because one of my family have had no interaction with them. Uh, but my mum is a baby of one of the f all of her so adverts, and allegedly my great uncle's a host. Oh, really? <gasps> That's very hacking cool. Our parents are still friends. Nice. Hell yeah. My mom went to school with a comedian uh, that does a radio show, but that's about it. I mean, that's still pretty cool. That's still pretty cool. I mean, that's kind of, the, in my mind, that is exactly what a claim to fame is, right? Where it's like, it's not something where you're like best friends with someone or you're like super, super close. But you know, it's just like a little, a little, little thing where it's like, yeah, I, I know the, the so-and-so's brother of so-and-so's friend. Yeah. Like, cool. Like a little, a little obscure one, but it's nice. I don't know. Those kind of things make me smile. I think it's fun. Yeah, just like how many conventions I've gone to. I, I never really have had a huge interest in like meeting celebrities per se. Like I, I'm always more in the cosplay side of things. There are some cosplayers I would love to meet one day, but that's about it. And a lot of the time there aren't as, well, I guess these days there are more cosplay guests at conventions. I do think that's gotten better, but um, yeah, like, I guess back in the day they would just be going as cosplayers and I'd often miss them. The problem is I'm also, I'm only, I'm not a very shy person per se, unless I don't want to, I, I guess unless there's pressure, I, I, how to put it, I'm not shy until I have to worry about making a bad impression. 
So like with strangers, I have no no worry at all, no fear. I'm completely fine. I'll talk to strangers on the street. I'm not shy like that. But then when it comes to like a cosplayer that I've looked up to for many many years, that I would be really nervous, really really nervous. That that then I would be shy. <laughs> or or even like I'll be honest, I, I there's a chance me and Vile might meet this year maybe if things go well in person maybe. <laughs> And I think I'll be really nervous there because I've talked to Vile online for years, right? And it's like, what if I make an immediate bad impression? And it's that kind of thing that makes, like, I'm not shy 90% of the time unless there's stakes <laughs> and then I'm shy. Oh dear, strangers? Pfft, whatever. I can talk to strangers. That doesn't, nah, that doesn't worry me. But people I know? Oh, well, I'm terrified. <laughs> I don't know if there's a name for that. I used an OCWA, I helped him have a few chat rooms for- Oh, recording for ads! It wasn't a personal thing, it was just over the internet and we were buds. I think his username is Connor Dog. Now, I know who CWA is. They did a series of cosplay, <laughs> which I really liked. Uh, when it happened, it made me really happy, because that's how I found them. They did a series uh, where they bought really cheap internet cosplays. Oh, uh, duh. And they were like... <laughs> they bought really cheap internet cosplays, and then they showed them off and like what it looks like in the picture versus what it looks like in real life and obviously it was like a comedy thing I suppose where it's like you know big old guy wearing like maid costumes lol funny you know all that kind of stuff but what it actually did was show people why you pay for cosplays why you get really good ones and like later down in the series he did one where he actually went to like a proper cosplay studio and commissioned a cosplay and he talked about the price and he talked about the price difference but he talked about the difference in quality and like what you get for your price and the hours that spent making it and stuff like that and it was a really good thing it was really good for the cosplay community because you know having such a big person talking about like why you pay for cosplays and stuff like that and the quality differences. I don't think this was their intention at all to be clear, I don't think they went into those videos trying to make a difference in the cosplay community, but it, it ended up having a really positive effect where like because of those videos people were more appreciative of the time and effort that goes into like cosplay commissions and custom pieces and it was like oh hell yeah! So uh, it actually kind of created this really positive environment of like appreciating artists work and why you know when you buy a really cheap costume off amazon it's not going to be as good and if you commission an artist from the start to finish you're going to get something that is much much better and you know the quality is much higher and yada 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 it was just really cool it was that that that's how i found them so i had like an immediately good impression of them because i was like dang i know this is probably not their intention but they do be, you know, kind of crushing a lot of misinformation that's been floating around the cosplay community for a while, and it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Yeah, that's how, uh, that's how I discovered them. <laughs> oh dear. Yes. I've been a fan ever since. I think you've been doing good stuff for cosplay. Oh dear. And yeah, obviously they pop up in Iron Mouse's streams quite often, which is nice. I was reluctant to mention it. Oh, nah, you would have been fine. You would have been fine. Don't worry about it. Because I know they hang out. I didn't want anyone to freak out or be weird about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't speak for other people, but it was fine for me. Oh, dear. Uh, I went on a deep dive with my friend. I could have a voiceover for a John Oliver skit. Oh, that's really cool. That's a cool one. Hell yeah. I knew them for years and years and years ago when their YouTube was just starting out. Nice. I don't know any any really like old school big YouTubers, unfortunately, I'm afraid. I have no interesting stories to tell there. Oh dear. Which is probably a good thing because yeah. <laughs> In my case at least probably a good thing. You know, I watched a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers that maybe target audience was younger women, which in retrospect, it's probably a good thing that I never met any of them in real <laughs> based on some of the stories that come out in more recent years. Oh dear. There. Nah, nah. What is that? Donk, donk. There we go. Yeah, I only discovered Sea Dog VA more recently. And again, I saw him for the cosplay videos, but then, yeah, it was when, because I watched Iron Mouse already, it was good at that that I saw them more often. But they always have good chemistry. Their streams together are really fun. I like them. I like them. Although they're normally when I'm already asleep and I have to watch the VOD the next day. I, I often can't watch the whole thing live because I am such an early to sleep these days and they go live like 
as I'm considering going to bed. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. And in there. Although I did sit up kind of late last night. I was up much later than I was intending to be. Look at all these emails. I just don't like sitting on stuff. I don't like knowing that I need to email someone and not having done it. It just makes me annoyed. <laughs> so because I knew I had to email people, I was just like, I'm just gonna do everything. I'm just gonna email everyone. But then I'll, then you have to field like a lot of emails because like, people get back to you and it's like, oh damn it. <laughs> Shoot, I, I, I didn't realize you would email me back. <laughs> Oh, the, I knew it was friends with Neil Gaiman, and the fact that uh, it was now reasonable to, to think I would have been able to meet him in a pub one day became real life freaked out. I'm trying to get myself to a level I can think of him as a person so I can sit with him like a normal person. Oh, dear. Yeah, I'm like that with cosplayers, to be honest. You're not alone. I don't really get with it with celebrities, but cosplayers? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a little, I'm a little ball of anxiety when I get to meet cosplayers that I've like watched for a long time or seen for a long time. A little, uh, there's a little anxious ball. I know they're just normal people. I know, in my soul, I'm aware. But it doesn't make it any easier. Oh, dude, is dying because I had him in a video and he still has the same PFP and I was I'm like, I know their voice, but I, uh, yeah, I VC'd with him. And I didn't know he'd hit it properly big. And then I found out my best friend was a huge fan of his videos too. Hell yeah. That's very hecking cool. That's a really cool claim to fame as well. Hell yeah. What a good one! What a good one! What a good old claim to fame! Oh dear! There we go. All right, I need this bit to go to here, and then I need this bit. So I'm like trying to get the the, the direction of the thread to make sense for this head because it's a really weird head shape that I've given him. It's because the pterodactyls have like pointy faces, but I didn't want them to be too pointy because I still wanted it to fit into that like same aesthetic so I gave him like a little tiny point but now his head is kind of like a weird shape but I, I guess it's cute so it's fine my friend's kid is a child actor I'm just uh, glad oh well this I think this is can I say this I don't know if I can say mm. we used okay I'm gonna be vague um because I don't I don't think it's public information anyway, so I think I'd be safe. But I also, again, I have to be so careful because so much of my stuff is location-based. Uh, but we used to live next door to a certain American head of securities. Uh, uh, what was it? It was it a certain American head of security for the prime minister. Their holiday home in the UK was our next door neighbor. And the way that we found out about that was we'd been away, live like in Wales for like a couple days because I was at my open day for my for going to university here and like so right before I moved out, right? Uh, and we came home and they were having this massive barbecue and they were like, oh you the neighbours and we were like Yeah <laughs> Yeah we're the neighbours and there were all these Americans everywhere <laughs> <laughs> and they were having this massive barbecue and they had like steak and all these cuts of meat and they were like do you want to do you want to join us and we were like okay <laughs> which is it's, it's difficult to explain but that's really odd like where we live everyone keeps to themselves you know we're all living rurally so everyone's very like in their own space like yeah everyone knows everyone but like when it comes to their house everyone keeps to themselves they were not like going around inviting people to barbecues and stuff that's weird but like they they invite us and then we were like oh okay so you've moved and they're like oh yeah we won't be here for most of the year i'm so and so's head of security and we were like oh <laughs> oh okay so we had someone in the american i don't know what would you say what, whatever they are whatever the the security people in the american government do living next door to us for a while well living next door to us staying next door to us because it was very much a holiday home like they said they weren't there that often but they did really good barbecues. Really, really good barbecues. Oh my god. Like, probably... <laughs> no offense to my other friends, but probably the best barbecues I've ever had. <laughs> they had everything there. Oh dear. Ah, but that was right before I moved out, so I only experienced like two barbecues. Because then I left. Went to Wales. Never went back. Oh dear. No idea if they still live there now. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. Yeah. There you go, that's a little claim to fame, but I can't tell you exactly who it is because I just don't know what is public information and what isn't. 
and I don't want to get doxxed. And he managed to make comfortable living doing what he enjoys. Yeah! Not a famous person, but I recently googled uh, a boy I went to school with and he taught me colouring pencils and now he has a PhD in music! That's just really nice though. That's just very wholesome. Hell yeah. Lovely and wholesome. My sister's boyfriend's in the army in America and he does such good barbecues. Yeah, why do Americans do such good barbecues? What's that about, huh? Is that like part of your DNA? Your barbecues are really good? Because like, <laughs> I've never had a barbecue that good before. And I also don't know if I'm ever gonna have another barbecue that good again. Like what if, what if I peaked really early with my good barbecues, right? That, that would suck. <laughs> What if I've peaked? What if I never have a barbecue of that quality and I, I just have to live in the memory that I once had a really, really good barbecue and, <laughs> and never again? Oh dear. Well, I guess two times I had a really good barbecue and never again. Oh dear. Ah, oh, unlike with Sada because I have hope! Oh, welcome home. I hope, I hope the day has gone good. Oh dear. Hey Jenny, I want to ask, what do you feel whenever you're studying an off for art? Personally, I enjoy it. I'm just curious. I think it's in memorizing where the parts go. What do I feel? Stressed. Probably. I did, so I studied anatomy through life drawing, like live life drawing. So going into life drawing lessons. And I, I guess the feeling is different because the person you're drawing will likely see your art at the end of it. Not all of the models did, but a lot of them would go around and look at people's drawings afterwards. So I would be focusing so hard a lot of the time on trying to just do the very very best that I could so that when the model looked at my work they were okay with it. I don't know, I don't know what you would call that. <laughs> Probably, I, I guess stressed, but like it did force me to learn quite quickly. So deep concentration and maybe mild stress would be how I was feeling when I was doing more anatomical studies. Uh, but that is because I did live life drawing, which is a really good way of learning, but obviously it's just not you know, obtainable for everyone, like it's something where if you're not doing it nearby or if it's very expensive or if it's very booked up, which has been a lot of local places, they book up so quickly that it's difficult to get new people in. Yeah, in any of those circumstances, it's quite hard to do live drawing IRL. Oh dear. But generally, I, th I think it's really good. I will say like, as much as it stressed me out, it's, it's the quickest I've ever learned. Doing live drawing, it was like such a steep learning curve. I have never learned so quickly. So it was also very satisfying at times because like it felt like I was getting better really quickly. Because every single time I'd have my art, you know, critiqued by the people in charge. I did it for two years as well, two years, so I, I was there for a while. But um, yeah, every time I'd have my work critiqued by the people in charge, which meant that it was really easy to know what to improve next time. And then yeah, like the pressure of wanting to make something good or better than last time really pushed me to keep trying. The next crazy thing I got to uh, the beach with the chairman of the World Welsh School of Music and his son, his name is Tony Small Google, he was uh, on the Queen's birthday honours list, which is cool, and he used to tutor my dad on trombone! That's very heckin' cool. Hell yeah. Oh dear. I find anatomical fascinating and I love it, yeah. I think probably the feelings I had doing it was due to the environment that I was in a lot of the time, which there was like pressure, but not, I guess, too much pressure. Just like a little bit of pressure. And you're being squeezed a little bit. And yeah, the, the models, not all of them would, but some of them would come round afterwards and have a look at your art. And you'd always be sat next to your art, which meant that they would know that you were the one who did it. And yeah, that, <laughs> it, that would always make me a bit nervous. But again, at the same time, I am drawing them. It, they, they have the right to come have a look at what I'm drawing. But yes, it would make me a little nervous because you'd worry that you hadn't done it good enough or that they weren't happy. I will say though, I don't think the models ever really talk to us. They would go around and look at the art and they'd smile at us and they'd be like, oh, but they never really like talk to us. I don't know if that was like an unwritten rule of live drawing that the models don't talk to you. But yeah, no, they never really talk to us. They just would go around and look at the art and smile and stuff like that. So it's not like we ever received any critique from them or anything like that, which makes sense because I guess they're there as a model, not as one of the artists. But yeah, it was good. I learned a lot, so much, those two years I was there. So, so much about what I enjoyed. I, I think that was the other thing. I learned not just about anatomy, but what I enjoyed drawing and what I didn't like drawing. <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot about myself as an artist from doing life drawing. And it really helped me in everything that I, I do now, like perspectives, not just drawing anatomy, 
I guess that's the, I guess, the takeaway of life drawing. Even though you are pretty much only drawing anatomy, the takeaway is that you learn so much more than just anatomy. You learn perspective, you learn different angles, lighting, cloth, all of that kind of stuff. You, you end up learning like a whole host of skills. And I guess that's why it's so valuable to too many art so many artists because like I'm definitely not the only artist that's gonna stand by life drawing as a really good tool for learning. I think that's a, a pretty popular opinion actually. But uh, the problem is is how is life drawing accessible to you and is it accessible to you? Because a lot of time it's not. If you can't go to life drawing classes, you can go to life drawing archives online and stuff like that, which I'm sure that you're already aware of because you're looking at anatomy. But like, there's also a place on Twitter where you can get like lots and lots of free poses and stuff like that. Uh, I will say, personally, everyone's different. Uh, there was no, you couldn't trace when we were doing stuff because obviously you had to draw from scratch. And I think being forced to draw like without tracing over things to learn them, like learn it through watching them pose. Like instead of like tracing the muscles, like you would watch them pose in different areas and you'd see how the muscles would move and you'd adapt like that. That helped me uh, because before that I was more into like, if I had to trace, I could just quickly trace it. It's not like I was selling it. Screw it, it's for my own practice, right? But life drawing really forced me to stop that. And that really forced me to grow as an artist as well. But that's me personally. I think there is a place for tracing. But I think sometimes when you're trying to learn, it can actually hinder you because you don't understand why you're doing it. Whereas when you're looking at poses and putting the muscles in place, you're understanding the stuff behind it more, which can then help you do your own drawings down the line. But that's just me. It's just an opinion. <laughs> you definitely don't have to take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the other thing about life drawing is you know, one of the, the things that they did every single week was you'd have like half an hour of only five minute drawings. And what that would force you to do is to get the main lines of the body in and just go. And I think if you can, like, if you have that time where you can spend five minutes, like flash a pose on screen, you have five minutes to get it down. Stop at five minutes. Look at what you've done kind of thing. And again, you probably won't like a lot of the stuff you've done. I definitely didn't, but, uh, it's a really good tool of helping you grow quickly because it gets you finding the lines that are most important to get in early and, and again, learning through doing it. But again, that is just me and I can't, I am not a teacher. <laughs> I am. This is what worked for me, but it might not work for you because all artists are different and we learn in very different ways. Oh dear, I cannot draw at all. I've tried doing class, etc. and I just really can't get my brain to do it. Give me 3D work. That's fair. Again, not everyone as well is going to get along with that. I actually didn't know that. Oh, well, there's loads of... Oh, okay. So you can get like pose archives, life drawing archives, lots of different things. I personally, there's one on Twitter that I like. And the reason I like it is because I like doing the quick, quicker drawings. The only thing to be careful of is if you're someone who struggles with nude bodies they occasionally do they do like a lot of different pose references and i think they're just called the pose archives on twitter or something like that and then like every few days they'll drop a new one and then you have like a challenge do it in five minutes go and then you do that when you see it i mean i'm someone who's doing a drawing every day so something like that someone who posts stuff like that on twitter i really appreciate i also like uh when people post things like here's five colors make a drawing out of it and then you do that and it's like it's a challenge and it forces your brain to think quickly but by by continuously cha challenging your brain and making you approach art in lots of different ways over time you discover ways that you enjoy and ways that you hate and then things that you like and things that you don't like and i think it can really make you evolve as an artist just by challenging yourself again and again you just have to be in the mind space that you're going to make a lot of art that you don't like and i think sometimes that's quite difficult i i i don't like that either but when you're learning, you do just make a lot of art that you end up hating, and I think that's really normal. <laughs> but you, if you're doing a lot of quick drawings and a lot of quick challenges and stuff like that, it's very normal that you'll make a lot of stuff that you don't like. You know, if 90% of it doesn't stick, right? But the 10% that does helps you grow really quickly. So, yeah. You just have to be in a bit of a, uh, a heck, it, yeah. heck it kind of mindset, you know? Just gonna go for it. Well, thank you for the party. Impact, good morning. Welcome on in. Thank you, T-Store. It's all about realizing what a drawing actually is. Oh, okay. 
will be in yeah i think i think when it comes to art it's especially difficult because people learn in so many different ways and also you want to use your art in so many different ways as well so it's not just learning it's also the you know what are you going to use it for they're so different and it can be very difficult for difficult for something that works for one person to work for everyone right life drawing generally is a really good tool uh avoiding I know it's really, it's, it, the thing is, I'm not saying to avoid tracing because I think it's bad, but avoiding tracing where you can because it, you know, you need to make mistakes to get better and tracing can kind of make that a little hard. But it's not that there's anything wrong with tracing, it's not to like shame people that have, it's, uh, it's just it can it stunt your learning. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna stop that there for a second, we're gonna do a discord check. I know it's a little early. No, it's a little early, but I just figure it's a good time because we finished a little guy and it, it's in seven minutes anyway. <coughs> you can have a luck, have a good luck, good luck, dice. I've taken an art class at the same time as welding AutoCAD and 3D modeling. All of the hand-eye coordination and mental exercises. Yeah, I mean, I, we could do. Do you guys want to try doing like what we had to do? I'll see if I can find a pose and we could do like a really quick. Would that be of interest to people? Do you want to try a five minute exercise? I probably won't be very good. Oh yeah, tracing for someone else's work for profit is morally wrong. Yes, that's bad. Or not, you know, when you reference someone else's work, even if it's not for profit, if you're posting online, you know, let people know. Uh, but yes, uh, no, 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 no. But tracing for learning. I think we were talking about before, it was mainly just for learning. You guys want to do a, a quick life drawing exercise? <laughs> we could do it. We can have a little break. We've got five minutes and it gives my arm a break anyway. Let me see if I can get you a pose that I've also not seen before. Because that's also important. If I want to do it too, then I can't have seen the pose. I probably won't be very good at this anymore. Uh, if I go to Twitter and I go to the pose archives, because I like them anyway. <coughs> oh! Excuse me! Alright, let's see. Okay, we have some poses. Oh, can I show these? The problem is, if I don't know, can I show men in boxes? The thing is, most life drawing is people who are not wearing clothing because you want to see the muscle structures, you want to learn. Am I allowed to show this on Twitch? Okay, I could just post it in chat and we could all just give it a go, right? And then you could pick one and go for it, right? Because there's four options uh, for each gender. Oh, it's educational. <coughs> yeah, but I don't know what Twitch- you know how Twitch can be a bit funny with stuff like that? What I'll do is, I'll get you this one. So this one, it looks like a warrior holding a scythe and you have male and female versions, right? So here is his pose. I'm gonna get a piece of paper. I'm gonna use my sketchbook because I, I use this for basically everything at this point. Uh, let me just get my sketchbook in and put that there. There you go. I, I put a little piece of page behind it just to make it feel thicker. And then I'm going to get it up on screen and I'm going to pick... Oh god, these are all hard. These are hard poses, I will say. <laughs> We've got some hard poses here. Um, I'm going to pick the female one. Do I want to pick the female one or the male one? Oh god. Choices, choices. Uh, yeah, I kind of like this one with the woman. Um, all right. If I change this from one hour, right, to five minutes on the clock, it's a cover. Do you think it should be fine? All right. In that case, we'll trust. We'll trust. Uh, if I save this image here and I'll add it in. So this is from the pose archives, which you can get from that link there. We're going to do a life drawing exercise and it's going to be five minutes. You have five minutes to draw. Okay. And this is always like how we opened classes for warm-ups. This is 
warm-up material, okay? There's the pose. This is the pose that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, if I actually, I'll do the one on this side just so that I can do this. There we go. So you can see which one I'm doing. This is the one I'm gonna be doing. Five minutes on the clock. Uh, there we are, we got five minutes on the clock. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> We're gonna give this a go in three. I'm probably not gonna do a good job, but two, and then one, bonk. All right, so I'm seeing, I'm probably gonna screw up the proportions, but we're gonna get that in there. We're gonna get this in here, cause she's kind of at an angle. So we got one leg forward. Uh, if we give her her ribs in, so we've got some ribs in here and shoulders are kind of up, shoulders kind of up. Uh, oh, but they're losing that. Okay, get that in there. And then face. Oh, I think I've gone too far down with the head. Uh, ear is like up here. Okay, I've, I've gone way too far down. <laughs> she, she's just looking straight down. <laughs> oh, dear. And then get top of leg, top of leg. And then knee, foot. Foot comes forward, put foot here. And then uh other knee other foot foot goes side so and then go around the knee go up to there uh, <laughs> start building up some leg muscle a little bit she's meant to look kind of strong and i've kind of made her not look strong okay there you go the head pointing down is really annoying me we're gonna we're gonna fix the head I think I've also made her stance too wide, but that's okay. And then we're gonna do head. Maybe we'll just have it more like... So, there we go. And then pole goes here. Oh, have I, I've gone too close. I can't get the top of the pole. <laughs> pole goes here. And then shuba 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 with the, with the scythe up there. And then she's got one hand like here with the thumb coming around this side. She's got one hand here where you don't see the thumb. The elbow comes down to the side. So it's like uh, there-ish. And then right up at the side of her. So it's like, oh God. And then the other side, I've probably made her too thick again. Oh, well, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? We'll do it. In my version, she's a bit bigger <laughs> and that's okay. And then Screw it all the way up so that's more obvious. Start emphasizing some of the bits here with pencil and making it more obvious. I don't really have time because I've only got two minutes left. I don't really have time to go in with any of that. I've left her boobs out. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot her boobs. Uh, get that in there and get that in there around the rib cage. Her boobs are too low. Damn it, I should have put her boobs in earlier. Forgot. There you go, we've got some boobs in, got belly, got shoulder, going into head, going into the other bit. I've made her a little squat. Oh, I didn't get a very good angle on when I was drawing, to be fair. That might not have helped. Uh, get big toe into small toes, and then... <laughs> she doesn't look like she's doing like a strong stance for me, to be fair. She looks like she's just like... Eh. <laughs> Oh dear, get the ear in. We'll see if we can get any of the hair. I don't think we're gonna get any of the hair. I think the hair is, is too much to ask for. Uh, yeah, that's just gonna, and then the nose is like there, so it's like... Oh dear. Oh, we got one minute left. Oh, what do I, how do I even fix this in one minute? First of all, legs. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, I really don't like this one, I think. I think probably it would come back a little bit. I don't know. I might run out of time here trying to fix this, but I think... Yeah, it's a little better. This is too long. <laughs> and then we have like the side all the way up there. We have... Ah, uh, does it come out? No, it doesn't come out. Uh, yeah, if I can get some eye kind of areas in, but oh no, we're out of time. <laughs> oh no, we got one minute, we got one minute. No, sorry, it's, it's, we've got 50 seconds technically. Uh, so I think if I... Ooh, okay, and then I've kind of screwed up this shoulder a little bit by 
where I put the thing. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, so it's like so. I think, yeah, I've made it too big at the top because it's coming out where it shouldn't be. That's okay though. And then. Mm, this bit needs to come in a bit because that's not how that would work. And then make sure that's in there, but not like that. And then. Uh, should I put her in a bra? Probably. <laughs> Let me just. I'll put her in a bra, but I'm. I just because that's how the picture is, but it's not perfect. Uh, and the pants she's wearing is like I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. <laughs> All right. So that's how what we would do, and we do like six of those at the beginning of every one. Now they wouldn't normally be this intense. Here's my here's my side to side. Yeah, short too. Yeah, too short. I went too hard on the upper body, so she's a bit more squat, and I made her too muscular. So she's too big, her arms are too big. Like the this arm here is like quite obviously not right. Uh, the, the, the pose is there, but it's not quite there. And that's like, but that's what we do. Every single, every single, every single session. You do that at the beginning. You do it six times. I'm not gonna do it six times. But uh, yeah, you do that six times at the beginning. And it would mean that kind of over time, you would start being able to get those movements in much quicker. Now I am out of practice, very out of practice. But uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what you do, and it's good. You posted yours? Oh yeah, let's let's go through other people. You've seen mine. I'll just bring this in so this is back where it should be. There you go, there you go. Move my pencil out, move my pencil out. Uh, let's get rid of that poet, and then let's get... Ooh, whoa, Cthulhu, that's so good. Wait, let's see seconds. So this is uh, Cthulhu's uh, five minute piece. Look at this. Look at this! They did a different pose, but it's the same, it's the same set. That's so good! You've captured this so well! Hell yeah! I see that you went for not doing the feet, which honestly is a very smart move. Avoiding feet? <laughs> feet need time. But this is, this is a really good five minute piece. So yeah, just being able to get the movements in really, really quick. Also, I need to catch up on chat. My god, I am behind. Ah, dear. Thank you for, oh, thank you for the luck in the YouTube anime. Take up a secure place to live. A car has been acquired. Oh, nice. Uh, I was waiting a fuel car that allows us to fuel the base. Lovely. Short has a, and wide arms, yeah. You've done the one where you get shorter each time. Yeah, we'd start at 10 minutes and then, yeah, you'd go down to uh, 10. I think we went down to 30 seconds, but yes, I've done that one. Honestly, I didn't size it right. I also did it in pen. Yeah, yours were very permanent lines. <laughs> I don't draw. And so this is funny. Listen. You did a great job. You did fall into the, uh, you know, obviously the time limit makes things difficult, but I can see what you've done at like the start is really good. If you'd had more time, I imagine you would have been able to fill the whole thing out. The time management is difficult. Like, you know, what do you prioritize? Oh, I didn't mean to do that one. Uh, the, the, the time management of what you prioritize in a life drawing lesson is tricky. But yeah, if we get an accident with a scythe, yeah, he cut his bottom one off. But yeah, no, a lot, a lot of people, especially in their first life drawing lesson, won't finish a piece. They won't get the whole body in because, you you know, time management is tricky and it's something that you, you learn the more that you do it. So yeah, no, there's definitely nothing wrong with this. It's very, very typical of a first time. Very, and it's fine. Like, the bits that you have got in are strong. Oh, dear. Yeah, exactly. You did fine. You did fine. All right. I think we had some 3D modeling for Vile. <gasps> this is what I've been working on recently. <laughs> God damn it, Vile. Why is it so complicated? But it looks really cool. Hacking complex, though. Hacking complex. Ah, oh dear. In defense of everyone here, I did a degree in drawing. <laughs> uh, no, no, Cthulhu's is naturally ridiculously good. Nah, that makes sense. You did a really good job. Five minutes, it was fantastic. Ah, oh dear. Both of you, I think both did really, really well. That's kind of what a life drawing lesson is. And then what would happen is everyone would look at everyone else's and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And you do the like five minute poses. And eventually by the end of like each, you'd feel better about it. It's just... You, you kind of have to get over the fact that, you, you know, you have to be quite self-critical. What don't you like about your piece? For me, the arm is not right. I would redo that. Um, I made her too, too chunky, so it meant that certain parts weren't looking as good. I wasn't copying it as well. I didn't get some of the slimmer lines in. But uh, yeah, we, 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 you learn. You learn as you go. And this is also really, really cool. I want to do a little clap. Where's the little clap? There's the little clap. Also, I see Psycho's been posted in embroidery, trying some stuff out for an exam. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, these are so cute. These are so Oh my god. Wait, is these leaves as well? <gasps> Anime. Anime, I love them. They're so pretty. Oh my god. 
They're, this is perfect. This is for the suit, right? I'm assuming this is for the suit. Oh dear. Hell yeah. Very hacking cool. Right, I am going to. We'll leave you for a second. I'm just going to do a couple of stretches really quickly. I'm not going to do the lifting because my shoulder is still feeling a little sore. So if my shoulder hurts, we don't do lifting. But that's okay. We can do stretches and we can make, make hands still feel good and stuff like that. There's not a problem. <laughs> Oh dear. Also, I like how it's our first break. It's been two hours, but we did chat for a while at the beginning, right? And then we had to do an impromptu life drawing uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, it's why I'm trying to draw more every day. Even if I can only draw for five minutes, you can still do a pretty good practice every day. Sometimes I draw stuff that I use for stream, like the dinosaurs, but sometimes I just, you know, take a life drawing thing or colour things. There's like colour palette ones or like challenges that you'll find. If you're interested in getting better at colour, which I am interested in, that's like something that I've been targeting a little bit more. Doing like colour palette challenges where they give you a colour palette and they're like, use it. This is, but no other colours, only colours in this palette. And it's like a nice challenge that, you know, you can still make whatever you want, but it's not too... You're still having to push your brain in a new direction. Colours is one that I'm not very good at, so I've been very much trying to get better at that. Most of that is digital, just so I can directly sample the colours is the only thing, so it's not in my sketchbook whenever I do that. But yeah, it makes sense. Alright. Okay. Ooh, let me just do a couple of the back stretches, and then I think we should be good to go and do the light pluridon. <laughs> Ooh, let me go in another back stretch. Ooh. No, props to the people that did give it a go. It, it, life drawing is rough. It, it, it's not easy. So honestly, props. Props to you both. Well done. Well hacking done. Oh dear. Well, we, we all did a good job there. We, <laughs> we all did, I just need to close the extra tabs that I have. Two seconds, because I've, uh, I've got a few tabs open from doing that now. Let me just uh, get all those closed. There we go. Is my music a little bit loud as well while I'm here? While I'm here! Oh, also, two seconds. <laughs> I got so many emails. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, actually, we are about to, to switch. We want to go to sort out the music now. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort out the music now. So we're about to switch. We might as well do it now. Nice! <laughs> Stretch, yeah, having a good stretch, getting my stretch on. Oh dear, after an impromptu life drawing lesson, although I, just to be clear, I wasn't the teacher. I could tell you what we do, but I definitely couldn't teach it. I can just be like, this is how our life drawing lessons would normally go and how we were taught. And I really liked it. And it put a lot of emphasis, not on the pieces individually, but like, on what you learned from them. So which which personally I really liked. Because again, like there's a lot of pieces I made that I really didn't like. I did some really good feet, by the way. Sorry, tangent. The one thing that I ended up being really good at drawing in live drawing was feet. So like I would do a lot of athletic poses when I would was doing my drawing. I'd focus on those so that I could get the foot stretching to like its maximum. I got some really, really cool foot ones. Uh, it's a shame that that ended up being like what I was best at because uh, <laughs> it would have been cool to like. But I think the problem the problem I had was because I got good at drawing feet quite quickly. Um, that's all I did for a while because I was like, I know this will look good, and so I stopped trying to experiment with other things. Uh, but I, I did get some. I wonder if I can get you some other pictures of your feet. I don't know if it'd be allowed. I mean, they're not sexy. It it, it was very much like an anatomical drawing kind of vibes. But I don't know if they'd be allowed still. You have to be careful with feet. Feet are difficult. And the feet might not have been sexy, but my drawings of them are pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty, um, listen, I don't pat myself on the back too often, but I get pretty good at drawing feet. <laughs> not anymore, unfortunately. I'm very out of practice. Also, look at my hecking thumb. You see this? You see how, how rude my thumb is being right now? It like full on cracked open. <laughs> very rude. I have been moisturizing it, but hecking rude thumb. All right, time to, to get the Lipluridon in. Our last little dino who needs a base colour so that he stands out a little bit more against the background. Because right now he do be blending in a little bit. I still think he'll be a little blended in because it's blue on blue. But it is still darker blue on blue. There we go. Oh, I haven't started the timer. Let me start that. There you go. Now I have started the timer. Honestly, having a timer on a stream has been very useful. <laughs> Not just for stretches, but also for random life drawing things. Ooh. Yeah. I do, I did, I'm really glad I did life drawing when I did. 
I nearly didn't because after the, you know the first lesson I, if you've never done lifeline before maybe if you're an adult it would be different but I was a bit younger like being just around naked people is a bit like what 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 is this I felt really awkward about it uh, I would always put myself in a position where I couldn't possibly make eye contact with the uh with the model as well to start with which meant most of my initial ones were from the back which I want to say personally I actually think drawing people from behind is harder than drawing people from the front uh, at least that's been my experience with it something about drawing people from behind is just really different I think there's less like points of reference from behind than there is on the front but yeah drawing people from behind surprise in my opinion at least surprisingly difficult <laughs> there we go yeah all of my first ones were basically from behind because i was like i don't want to make eye contact i feel very awkward about the whole thing but then very quickly you realize that it's a uh, it's all about the art and there's nothing else like weird about it and then you kind of get over it <laughs> or at least i did i guess if you were someone who was very new to adverse it might be a bit difficult but for me i was just a bit young and awkward and it was much easier to get over that. There we go. What I really liked as well was we had the place where we did it, they would bring in, we'd, you'd have like models that would come back multiple times, but you would have generally a different model each week. Like, so even if you'd, you had a model before, you probably wouldn't see them again for a few months. So they rotated the models a lot, which was really good, which meant we had a really good range of like older, younger. Uh, we also had like uh, the different genders and stuff like that. But then we also had uh, people that had had surgeries, people that haven't, people that had scars, people that didn't. Uh, like if you're older, you have a lot more wrinkles generally and stuff like that. We had one woman who came in a couple times who had had breast enlargement surgery. And so like, you know, when you're considering proportioning someone out and then you have to proportion in the fact they have had surgery and change the way that it, it, it really, it's really interesting. It was an interesting challenge. Uh, and it was really cool as well to see so many people with so many different body types and try drawing them and like the different challenges with each body type. I personally found it much easier to draw old people. Older people have more wrinkles and more points of reference. So when you're trying to do like, at least in my opinion, when you're trying to do like an accurate picture, old people are much easier to draw in my opinion. <laughs> and whenever an older person was the model, it would be like, yes, good. This will be a slightly easier day. Young people, when they have like completely smooth com like complexions and stuff like that, hard. Really hard. Much harder in my opinion. Especially if you're working on a model like one piece for um, for like an hour or so. You know, it's it's tricky. Also, it's Squeed! Welcome on in, I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. We've been talking a little bit about life drawing. We did an impromptu life drawing exercise a few minutes ago. <laughs> And so we've been talking a little bit about life drawing and if it's improved our art and stuff like that and how we approached it and I, I'm a big believer in life drawing. I'm very biased because I did also do it but I, I'm a big believer in life drawing uh, for helping you grow as an artist and yeah I, I, I'm very grateful that it's something they did end up doing because I think it really helped with my perspectives and stuff like that. I still have to relearn a lot of stuff because it's been it's been like 10 years since I did it so I'm like very very out of practice but I feel like that core knowledge is still there so if I wanted to get back into it like riding a bike like I wouldn't truly forget kind of thing that's the vibe I get I probably could I would just have to practice more there we go the dinosaurs are cute thank you I loved the the Mother's Day cards you made they were so beautiful so so beautiful oh dear I did send my mom a card but it was not that not that extravagant. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> oh, dear. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, we are slowly working on a little dinosaur swamp party. And they are, they're all having a little splash around in the swamp. I'm very fond of them. We just have to get their base colours in, really. Uh, so that's what we've been chipping away at, is getting all of their, their base colours in. Um, and they're all colours that are meant to match like the background. So, you know, we have the orange for the fish, the pink for the lotus, the green for the lily pads, the blue for the dragonflies, and the yellow for like the little strands of like reeds. So they're matching things. Oh, so Taffy, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Good morning. Oh dear. Are you gonna add eyes? I am gonna add eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eyes will come back. 
I I just wanted to get all the base colors in first so that I could then like do the eyes over the top and not have to worry about going around them. So what we're going to do is we're going to get any colors, shading, details in and the eyes will probably be one of the last bits to go in. Yeah, the eyes and the mouths. But they're all going to have little smiley faces because they're having a wonderful time splashing around. <laughs> so we will represent that with their happy little faces. Yes. But not for a while, unfortunately. It, prob it probably will be... It, it might not be the fully last thing that we add because I do kind of want to do some little like water droplets as if they are splashing and stuff like that. That might end up being the last thing we add, but it will be one of the last bits we add so that I don't accidentally sew over the top of it. I want to do a little shading and highlight on the colors themselves. So take like a little bit of dark and a little bit of lighter of the green and like add those in. Some of them have extra bits like the feet, the spines, the belly, like that kind of stuff that need need a second color in there. So we're gonna we're gonna go back in, add some more colors, and then uh, do some shading, and then should be good. <laughs> Thank you. They were well received. I'm not surprised. They're very very nice. Friday is Evan Evan Evans Day, Bill, Indiana. On Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's a convention center. They're holding EvilCon anime convention. The pro cosplayer Casey Renee is gonna be there. Oh nice! I follow Casey Renee on Instagram. Very hecking exciting. Oh dear. There we go. Well, I hope, I, I'm assuming you're going if you're saying this, Smitty, so I hope you have a really, really good time there. I hope you enjoy yourself. Have a lovely time. Take lots of pictures. Eat lots of good foods. Oh dear. I might actually have to change in just a second because I'll be honest. Having a bit of a hot flush right now, that's why I'm going a bit quiet. I'm feeling a little bit rough. Two secs. Pause and recording, gonna hide. Back in a mo. Sorry about this. Nothing you've said, just bodies deciding to die. Yeah, my body just decided, actually, Jelly, you are boiling hot and you must go flop. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry, let me mute again. I'm so sorry. Sorry about that again. My body has just decided to die. <laughs> it's like, you know what, Jelly? You've been live for all of two minutes. Time for you to die. <laughs> I'm fine. Oh dear. There's this whole body of mine. Come on, keep up. Can I keep up with what I want to do, please? Sorry about that. I had to go change because my body decided to have a hot flush and then it immediately decided to make me sick. Love it. <laughs> I'm fine. Don't worry about it. It happens relatively often on this stream at this point. 
<laughs> and I have to go take like a five minute break to go be ill for a moment. Oh dear. I love it. I love this body. Thank you for my flesh. It's great. It's working really well. <laughs> Makes me feel really good. <laughs> nah, sorry about that. It's fine. Do not worry. Oh, then what happened? Well, guys, welcome back. We actually had an impromptu life drawing uh, experience where we we did like uh, we took a pose and we all did a five minute one where you basically have to draw the pose as good as possible in five minutes. Um, my one is in my book and I just put it away, but you can see other people's ones in the Discord and the live stream chat if you want it. We, we basically just did like a five minute uh, drawing exercise, which is really common in life drawing, where they'll do like a pose for five minutes and you have to get it down in five minutes and then move on immediately to the next pose. Or you might have like a quick review and then move on to the next pose. So we did that, we, we gave it a go. We had we had a little, you know, cause we've been talking about life drawing anyway. We thought, well, let, let's see how we do. And we gave it a try and I am very out of practice, but it was really cool. It was cool to see how everyone approached it as well. It was really good. And I haven't done something like that for a while. I, I do it every now and again, to be fair, because again, I'm doing daily drawings, but I hadn't done a five minute one for a while. 10 minutes I've done a few of, but not five minutes. Five minutes was very quick, very, very quick. But five minutes was the ones that we did. So like, well, if I'm doing an accurate representation of what my drive, life drawing lessons were like, it would have been five. Yes. Oh, the teacup, good morning. Welcome on in, I hope you're doing well. Thank you, we are, we are slowly but surely building them up. They're becoming big old beans and they're, they're looking more clear and distinct. And I like them very much. There we go. Ah, oh, dear. <coughs> sorry. I'm so sorry about the coughing as well. Uh, if I have to hide, I will again. It's one of those coughs, unfortunately. The, the reason I always hide my camera if I'm doing a really bad cough is because it's one of those coughs where it like makes you gag. And like, there are certain things that I do not want on the internet. And uh, coughing where I'm simultaneously gagging is something that I do not want on the internet. And I also don't want to have to like subject you guys to watching that. It's probably pretty gross. I can't say that I've ever watched myself do it on camera, but <laughs> I can only assume it looks pretty grim. But yeah, my cough is one of those coughs where if you have a really bad one, you kind of, that's why I always hide my camera. It's like, yeah, so I'm fine. It's very normal for me but it's, it's not great for Twitch. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, exactly, Vile. Also, Cabanossi, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. <coughs> I saw a really interesting because every art and study she called, I feel the weight of this minute as I bend my body towards the clock. Lots of medical side of equipment placed and contorted in weird ways. Tender table have a pretty consistent care needs and care time, but that clock always calls for being quicker. Oh! That's an interesting one. Hell yeah. Also, how are you doing, Cabanose? I hope that you are doing well. I hope the art is treating you well. I hope that your crafts are being good to you and you're enjoying them. We are slowly but surely embroidering a lot of teeny tiny dinosaurs. Very small, very cute. Good for the soul, you know? Oh dear. There we go. I'm really hoping that this hot flush goes away soon. <laughs> I think this is a thing that a lot of people can relate to, like hot flushes being very annoying. It's freezing today. I know in my soul that it is cold. However, my body is saying, actually, Jelly, you're really hot right now. <laughs> you're, really, you're really warm. You're overheating in this, in, in like, what, five degrees. <laughs> I'm having one of those mornings as well. Too, mi too hot. Oh my God. I can't believe it's so hot in here. What the heck? <laughs> I could do the, is it hot in here or is it just you? Or, who's you? Everyone in chat. <laughs> Can you stop heating up my craft room, please? Oh my God. <laughs> oh dear. That might be a bit parasocial of me though, right? Gotta be careful. Otherwise people get mad at me again. <laughs> there we go. What? Up there. I want to get the flippers. I want they to look like little petals. So I want to get the um, the flippers, the thread in the right direction. I'm being quite... It means it's taking longer, but I think it will look really good if all the threads are just flowing into the, like, the little petals, but they're actually flippers. I was originally going to give him really little flippers, kind of like the little arms of the T-Rex, but then I was like, nah, I want to give him big old flippers, because like, like, Plyplurodons are like... At least 50% flipper. 
I was like, he's gotta be, he's gotta be at least 50% flipper. That's important. It's important. We are making them very chibified, but like, it's still important that he is 50% flipper at least. So that he could, because I've not done his face like a Lyphorodon. Because Lyphorodon have like really, the really, really long faces, right? Or like the long jaws maybe would be the better way of putting it? I don't know, they're, they're long. I gave him a little short face. Really god, goes back to the crazy bill, us having the air con on all the time. Ah, I'm sorry. It, it, you, sometimes you have to. I'm sorry to hear that though. I'm always, I always try and be really sparing with the air con. Uh, I got it for the first time last year, so I'm still not used to like how much it costs to run it, right? And so I, last year I was really, really sparing with it to the point where I wouldn't put it on unless it was like 30 degrees in this room, and it's like, well, that's already too warm. I should be putting it on earlier than that. Also, by the time it's 30 degrees in this room, it's really hard to make it cool down. <coughs> ah. Okay. Maybe this year I'll be a little less sparing with it. But yeah, I was just really nervous because, yeah, you hit aircon can make the, the bills go up really high. And so I was really nervous about it because I've never had it before. This year, I'll be better. I'll be better. Oh, you can technically use the aircon as a heater. But I've never needed to do that. Because <laughs> this room heats up just fine on its own. When, as soon as I turn the PC on, it's like, ah, yes. Toasty. <laughs> we're on the phone from the Kadabi area. It was an average for similar households. But yeah, pretty consistent 28 to 29 at minimum. Yeah. But it's the humidity is what's killing it. Ah. Oh. Damn. Damn humidity. Making things difficult. What the heck? I get it though, we're the same, we're on an island, it does be, you know, whenever it gets hot here it's also horribly sticky. We don't get good heat in the UK, we only get sticky heat. Everything is sticky, we're sticky, everything you touch is sticky, delicious sticky sticky heat. There we go. Look how cute. Little flipper. It is mad like, I'm, I'm like getting, not quite getting close to running out of thread but I'm already on the way to running out of thread. <laughs> it's mad how much you go through, but he's so cute. He's very worth it. All of them are worth it. There we go. We used to have smaller dehumidifiers, but because I dedicated to dehumidifiers, yeah, they push out. Yeah, all they push out is hot. Yeah, like one of the in the, an old place we lived. Uh, this, but this was well was not our fault. This is going back into the the renting situation in the UK is pretty terrible right now. But a place we used to rent uh, had like a lot of issues with damp and mold. Uh, and so we were told that we had to have the dehumidifier running like near constantly because otherwise we'd have to pay for the damages that the damp and mold created, which was caused by the fact that the house hadn't been upkept properly by the landlord, but we would still be the ones who would pay the damages if anything happened. So we had to have like the dehumidifiers on pretty much constantly and it was horrible. We did leave that one pretty soon after that because also it was having, it was having a lot of issues with mold. Uh, but yeah, no, that was, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what renting is like in the UK, but it, it is a pain. It is a nightmare. It's like, come on! You know that there's a problem in your house that means that you have to have dehumidifiers running like 24-7. Just fix the house! Please! Rather than buying all these dehumidifiers, just fix the problem! Yeah, the tenant's responsibility. Yeah, it was our responsibility to make sure that the, the mold and damp didn't get out of control. Even though it was caused by like a problem with the house. Like, come on! I'm so glad I don't run anymore. I'm very, very lucky to be in this position, though. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I, I am very aware of how fortunate I am to not have to be renting right now. But yeah, no, I'm so glad I don't. I'm so glad I'm not renting anymore. I rented for ten years, and oh, you do get a lot of good stories. You get a lot of good stories of like awful things that happen during renting and like horror stories and all that kind of stuff. Kind of similar to retail, you leave with a lot of really good stories, but with things that you wish that were just stories that you hadn't had to live through, you know? <laughs> like, I would probably appreciate those stories more if I had not had to also live through them. I don't understand how they sit on their asses and then the last resort they left the yeah, property only could do, yeah. We've had some really good, um, we've had some really, really good landlords before. This was before I started streaming, so you guys never saw this place. But one of the places we rented, it was like a one bedroom, right? One bed with a little living room and a little kitchen and a little bathroom. So it was just a really small flat, right? Uh, but normally, apparently, only one person would live there at a time. So it was, you know, I was moving in with Shiny, so there was two of us. 
And when the landlord found out that there was two people moving in, not one, they came by personally and bought a second set of chairs and a second like seat and stuff like that. So that the whole place was kitted out for two people. And they, they bought it, they just bought it over and they were like, yeah, normally we only get one person here, so it's not a thing, but we figured you'd like a second seat at the table and a second seat to sit on and stuff like that. And they were really, really good. I loved that landlord. They were so nice. Like the entire time they were, we were there, they were really, really nice. But um, yeah, it was, <laughs> the, 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 you know, they are few and far between. We would have stayed living there a hell of a lot longer, but unfortunately uh, the landlord of that place was looking to sell it. So they were like, they gave us good notice, but then the pandemic happened. And they were like, oh, if you need to stay a bit longer, like you can. I understand that we're about to go into lockdown, but at that point we'd already found a place. We were like, I'm sorry, we're gonna leave. Um, but I would have stayed there longer because I think that's probably the best landlord I've ever had. She was, she was really, really nice. She kept out of our business mostly, which I guess wait, I also appreciated. But like when she did pop by, she was very fair and it's like, yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, uh, should I not have fans in the summer? I won't have AC, so I figured fans would be okay. Uh, yeah, fans use way less electricity. That is true, yeah, fans should be fine. I think that's what most people do to get through the summer here. I'm glad you're not renting anymore. It is possible if we move on from renting and prop... Uh, uh, it really upsets me, and this is a happy place, even though we're having stimulating conversations. Oh, okay. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, we, we can move on. Oh dear. Yeah, fans are alright though. I thought I didn't uh, know if there were electricity rules though. No, no, there's no rules on electricity. It's more just like, you know, use... Use what you <laughs> use what you can pay for, kind of thing, I guess. Because like, yeah, it, it can get expensive quickly, you know. It can get expensive quickly. Oh dear. Oh. Oh. Thank you for the fish whispers. Go. How you doing? I hope you're doing good. Do, 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 do. Is this unrequited or are you just quiet? I'm stuck here on this one-way street. If you want to talk about it, come back a bit. It, this is a complicated one. Sorry, I might have seen a bit put out there. Generally, the way that it goes on Twitch, I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. That's not what I want to do. But... <sighs> it, it, I guess it's like, you know, we were literally talking about this earlier, kind of like etiquette of Twitch. Telling a Twitch streamer not to talk about a subject is a little... This is my space. And, if, and it's completely fair if you don't like the topic to leave. But now I feel like I can't talk about it anymore. Because I don't want to make anyone upset. So I guess it's kind of an etiquette thing if like, it's generally a little thing to come into someone's space and tell them not to talk about a certain thing. I know you don't mean to be rude though, which is why it's like... Because uh, I know you're not trying to be rude. And that's not your intention. And it's just a, a yeah, one of those things. Fish. And oh well, you know. Do you know what that means? Yeah. It, it, again, I know you're not trying to be rude. I know that wasn't your intention, which is why I was a bit like, uh, uh, what do I do? Do I tell you this is a thing that people generally don't do, or do I not tell you? Or do I- uh, I won't continue the subject at this point, obviously, but yeah, generally, generally, you know, Twitch streamers, it's their space, if this is a little room that I'm in kind of thing, and if this room is not a comfortable place for people because, say if we're talking about sharks and you're very, very afraid of sharks, that's completely fine. You, you know, I can't they say sharks because it's on my t-shirt, it's an easy one to think of, but if you're afraid of sharks and you're not happy to join that conversation, then yeah. That's completely normal. There'll often be conversations that you're like, yeah, I'm really afraid of sharks, so I'm just not gonna join in on this one. I'll come back another day kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is my little this is my little space, which means, yeah, normal, sometimes it means that not all subjects will interest everyone and it will not be a fun talking point for everyone. But it is, at the end of the day, my space. So the only time we'll normally shut down conversations are if I'm not having a good time with it, because this is my space. But I would not go into somebody else's stream and be like, can you not talk about it because it makes me uncomfortable? Because that's their space. I would just go somewhere else, you know, for a bit. There's plenty of times where I've gone into streams and I've heard people talking, you know, in depth about migraines. And I'm like, that's really cool that people are, are talking about it and getting it out there. But I'm having a migraine and I don't really want to hear about it. Right now, so I'm just gonna go somewhere else for a bit. That kind of thing. But again, I know that you're not doing it to be mean. 
obviously. There's no there's, there's no malicious intent there, and I'm very aware of that, and I don't want you to think that I'm offended or anything. That's not the case. That's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. I wasn't aware of the etiquette. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's an, an etiquette thing, but it's I know that you're not trying to be impolite or rude or anything like that, and I don't want it to come across as I'm angry or upset with you, because I'm not. <laughs> I am absolutely not. Like a fish! Thank you for fish whispers. How are you doing, goat? I hope you're doing well. Welcome on in. What the heck is that? What the heck is that? Sounds Good morning! I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, it would, it'd end up leaving lots of topics off the table. And one that sucks me could be really stimulating for others. Yeah, and like, we know us. We change topic every 20 minutes anyway. <laughs> Sticking on one, the only time we ever stick on a topic for more than five minutes is if it's like feet or something. Sounds Good morning! How is your stream? I hope you had a good one. Let me get you some shout outs. What were you up to? What were you doing? Oh dear, I hope you had a good one. Welcome on in, I can see art. How was your art? We've actually been having some discussions about art today because we've been talking a little bit about life drawing. How was your stream? I'm not suggesting that you were necessarily doing life drawing. <laughs> I don't know what art you were doing. I'd be interested, but I don't know what art you were doing. But yeah, we were talking a little bit about life drawing earlier as a tool to improve anatomy and also like perspective and just general shading and stuff. It's been really good. Oh dear. Oh my god, Steve's welcome in on the YouTube as well. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. I'm doing good. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay, Go. I have... I'm not going to do any, like, big exercises on my shoulders today because it's still hurting a little bit from yesterday, but it's not hurting as bad as it did. And I ha yesterday I managed to do all the sets that I was recommended to do. So I think that my shoulder is slowly getting better. It's, it's just going to be one of those things where I'm, I'm getting older. I don't bounce back as quickly as I used to kind of thing. But uh, yeah, no, it's getting there and it, it feels like it's getting there and it's finally feeling like it's starting to get better. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to becoming the buffest version of myself that I possibly can. Ah, <laughs> uh, David Austin I was the etiquette. Uh, uh, learning each other's community norms in a process. It is, it absolutely is. Ah, oh, dear. God, I love life drawing, but I was actually working with a polymer clay. <gasps> oh, lovely. Hell yeah. Oh, I hope you had a really nice time. I, I've seen some polymer sculpting. I know actually uh, one of my sisters has gotten very, very into it. Uh, someone someone gave them some polymer clay and they've been all about it ever since. They, I will say, for reference, they are like, uh, they are 11. <laughs> or no, well, they're 10, they're nearly 11. Uh, so they are not very old. But uh, no, they they were like, I'm gonna start an Etsy, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sell jewelry, and I'm gonna sell beads, and I'm gonna make polymer beads, and I'm gonna make polymer art, and we all had to be a bit like, you know, first of all, <laughs> you're a bit young for getting an Etsy page, but uh, we appreciate. Listen, the business mindedness, very cool, v honestly, very impressive, uh, but maybe <laughs> maybe just do it for fun for a little bit first. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, very heckin' cool. All these business jellies. Ah oh dear, I've been lurking. Oh, thank you for the luck, sleeves. I do really appreciate it. Ah oh dear, the buffest jelly ever. You got this. Yeah, I'm gonna be so strong. Yeah, for for contact for Sal's and all the raiders, uh, we have a bit of a shoulder injury, and we've been told the best way of preventing this injury in the future is to just get really, really strong. So we're on the journey to becoming the buffest person ever, but or like one of the buffer embroidery artists on Twitch at least. I would like to become the buffest embroidery artist on Twitch. <laughs> But it's gonna be a very slow journey because I'm also recovering from the shoulder injury, so I have to keep taking breaks. But eventually, we're gonna we're gonna become the buffest embroidery artist ever. Oh dear, or at least on Twitch. I had so much fun because I haven't sculpted in a few years, so it was really awesome. Hell yeah! You made a four-leaf clover necklace pendant, a wedge of Swiss cheese. I I will say I've seen people make some really cute yeah like little foods and stuff like that always very satisfying. I, I don't have an eye for clay work, I will say. I, I've tried doing clay work a bit in the past, I'm just not very good at 3D stuff, but I love it. I, I love seeing other people do it. Uh, there you go, if anyone is looking then for some polymer clay, for some for some good vibes, for some 3D art maybe, go check out Sal's. And Sal's, if you need to go look after yourself post-stream, if you need to get anything to eat or sleep or anything like that, please do. Please go look after yourself. Yeah. Oh dear. If you want to stay around though, you're more than welcome to, but I, I do get it. Especially if you've been working with, well, I guess polymer clay though is not so sticky as like, you know, clay clay. Uh, so I guess maybe it's not quite so bad. Like had you come and saying, yeah, I've been at the potter's wheel making clay, I'd be like, oh my God, protect your keyboard, please. 
<laughs> you need to go leave completely understand. Oh, dude, clean up the space. Yeah, I will say actually, thinking about it, I've worked more with clay clay than I have polymer clay. I haven't really done that much with polymer clay. I'm not against it. At some point I would like to get good at, uh, it's not the same, but monster clay, so that I can start making like resin molds and stuff like that. I would really love to be able to do some more of that. I've watched a lot of other people do it on YouTube and Twitch. And it's like, damn, that would be a really useful skill to have, huh? But uh, I've never, I've never experimented with it, so I'm, I, I would be going in pretty fresh, you know. I, I don't know too much about it. Oh dear. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, it's not nearly as messy as ceramic clay. I've worked with that before, and I miss it so much. You miss ceramic clay. See, I, I guess. I don't have bad memories of ceramic clay. I just know that I'm, I really struggled with it. I did it for two years and i did everything for two years today it seems like but no I, I did study clay making like actually but i was really not very good <laughs> i just really struggled with getting my thoughts from 2d to 3d i think as well i kind of encountered it's a pretty common artist frustration but when you want you you have an image in your head and you want to do something but you don't have the dexterity or the skills to do it and i think i was running into that quite a lot when i was interested in clay which was you know it's not the clay's fault at all but it was making it like a bit more of a frustrating process because i was like damn i really want to be able to do xyz but i can only do x <laughs> i can't do the other bits and it's uh yeah, like I, my imagination was beyond my skill level, which meant that I kept struggling and failing. <laughs> I think a lot of artists have that at some point though, right? Where it's like, there's something that you really want to make, but you you can't keep up with it. Or like it, it's, you, you're not, you haven't quite got the skill range to do it yet. I maybe haven't noticed it in sewing so much, because I feel like with sewing you can chip away, but at least with traditional art and also, yeah, we're probably with a... Uh, ceramics as well I, I think i'd hit that and again it's not the ceramics fault <laughs> it's it's really me for trying to do stuff where I, I just didn't have like the information and i wasn't i wasn't good enough yet but yeah it made it a bit more a bit more frustrating and so i gave it up <laughs> when i first took clay class i was so frustrated i couldn't make things look all fancy yeah like I wanted, like, they, they would set you up in a way which was really good for beginners, but I'm like, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and like, why can't I give this a go? And then you'd heck around and find out, because like, yeah, your stuff will explode, or you've done this badly, or the glaze doesn't look right, and it's like, Gah. I'd get really frustrated. But again, it's not Clay's fault, <laughs> it's my mindset that was the problem in that. Oh dear. But any art medium, it takes time to understand it. Yeah, exactly. Definitely not like a, a ceramic specific thing, like trying to do stuff that you can't. You know, yeah, when your imagination is beyond your, your skill, gratification is really hard to find. Yeah, for sure. Like that's definitely, definitely where, where I was. I've gotten better with that sort of thing though, over time. Like I still take on big projects and stuff that I'm nervous about. But to be honest, most of the time with the projects that I take on these times, or these days, I guess, it's less like, do I have the skill to do it? And more, do I have the time? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, making an embroidery every day for Chromacore. I knew I could make embroideries, embroideries every day, but could I do one every single day for Chromacore? I didn't know that. Uh, but I would have been satisfied regardless because I would have made pieces of art. That's me, but with watercolour and just colouring in general. Colouring is hard. I, do you get the thing, Dice, where you've done a really beautiful outline and everything's perfect and then you go to colour it in and you ruin it? Because <laughs> I, that, that to me has been my experience with paints for so long <laughs> where I've done art that I've really really liked and then I go to try and colour it in and it's like that's not quite right it, it looked better before I coloured it in but hopefully the more times we do it the more times we make something and colour it in eventually you know eventually we'll get it right <laughs> every day yeah <laughs> eventually we'll get there I'm the same. I mean, again, I mainly work in embroidery threads, and embroidery threads is a very slow medium, so it's pretty nice. It's chill. You don't, you don't, you're not speeding through things, and you can really take your time and think about it. But when, like, paint, because paint dries, so you do have like a finite amount of time that you can work on it. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I don't do that so often. I did do a Bob Ross challenge once on stream. Uh, we did like, uh, we followed the tutorial and I remember Bob going so quickly and me just not being able to keep up. Also, I used, uh, what did I use? Gesso for my white paint in the background and it dried by the time that I meant to go and work on it. And you're meant to have like a wet, 
white backing for most or like wet white or black depending on like the background color and mine was just dry and then I didn't have a palette knife so I tried to use a butter knife and the effect just wasn't the same <laughs> it was very fun though I will say the artwork not that great but the fun 10 out of 10 Ah, oh, dear me every day Sunday. no you do some really beautiful black and white art as well though Ah, uh, but I can get that, I guess. If you do a really beautiful black and white piece and then you colour it in, you're like, no, it's not right anymore. <laughs> that would be frustrating. I watch multiple colour theories just so I can understand colour, but I still don't understand. It's just the whole, like, I'm there with you because I'm also doing more colour things at the moment. Oh, yeah, actually, you might not have been here. Have you tried doing dice any of the colour palette challenges uh, for art? It's something that I've been doing recently that I found has really helped me go out of my comfort zone with, uh, with trying new things it's basically like there are certain like nope let me find one let me find one uh let me see if it's a i'll go on twitter because that's where i find them but i just need to i don't want to go to that i need to go to color palette challenge I don't know how to spell any of these words, which is the problem I'm coming into. Color palette challenge. Somewhere that- oh, where's the one that I've been getting them from, though? The problem is I follow too many people, so if I go through my snot, it's not gonna help me. <coughs> I want- Hmm. Oh lord, where have I been getting them? There's too many! Oh, I'm not spelling palette right either, which is definitely not helping me. Okay, this might be making it more- I might- I might have made it more difficult than I needed to. Hmm. Where's my dailies? Where are my daily challenges? Oh god, I found the other one so quickly. Ah. Uh, basically, there are Twitter users that just make color palettes and they just post them every day and if you want a daily challenge that's your daily challenge and you'll see lots of other people the thing the reason why i'm looking for it on twitter is because you'll see lots of other people um who will who will also do it and so you can see other people's final results as well but i want i want to find one that does like consistently because it's nice when you can scroll back through it oh dear hmm Hmm. Is it that? Sorry, I'm still looking, my bad. Uh. <coughs> no, I, I, I might have to find this one after stream and post it. This might be a, a post stream putting it in the Discord kind of vibe. I mean, you can definitely look it up without me helping you, I guess. Yeah, if you want to, but if I can find any of the users specifically afterwards. But it basically, what you're looking for is places that generate colour palettes, and I've done a few. Um, the first art I ever did of Waffles was doing a colour palette challenge, where you basically just get given five colours or something and you have to stick to it. And that forces you then to have to, to, have to work your art around the colours rather than colouring in second. When, when the colouring is first, you know? It makes you approach your art in a different way. Or at least it has for me. But I'm still practicing, I will say. Colour is the bit that I'm weakest at, really, when it comes to art. In general, I would say. <laughs> Colour palette's a great solution. Why? Oh, I don't know, man. My body is having a bit of a moment. I'm so sorry. I, it... we'll, we'll, we'll go to the countdown and we'll see how I'm doing. I'm, I'm really sorry about <laughs> Uh, just to be clear, it's nothing anyone has said or done. It, it, I have a slight feeling that I might be about to have a migraine. I'm getting pins and needles, but only in half my body. <laughs> only, only on this side, which is making me think. Is it slumping? I don't think it is. No. Mm, not really. I have hemiplegia, which means that sometimes half your body just goes numb. But like... I don't feel like I'm having a migraine right now, and normally that wouldn't happen straight away, so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just hydrate for now, see if that makes it better. Ah, me relying on colour and lighting to make my art look good? 
Oh my god. But no, but your line art is beautiful, Somne. Somne. What are you talking about? What are you speaking on? You had those the amazing strategy to color your work in black and white values? Oh, that's a really good challenge. That's a hard one, though. That's a good challenge, though, trying coloring things in black and white values. So everything still pops and you understand what colors you use? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm terrible at that, but it is a great challenge. <laughs> one of those ones where it's like, I appreciate, I appreciate the challenge, but... Hard. Color is really hard. My line art is so part. You're lying! Well, maybe that's how you see it, so I guess that's not a lie. But that's not how I see it. I think your line art is stunning. I absolutely love it. I, I think a lot of us feel the same, yeah? We, we, I, I, I don't think it's just me that loves Somne's art. There we go. I took a colour theory class and it helped me a ton. Really? Oh, can you take colour theory? <gasps> I've never... I've never even considered looking up if there's classes to help with stuff like that. That's a really good idea! Yeah, having someone talk me through it, because yeah, colours is hard. Making things look good, I don't understand how people do it. <laughs> how do you do it? Oh dear. Also, what's stuck in here? I see, I know something is stuck in here, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, no, no. Went to college for art, so it was, oh, it was a requirement. I see, I see, I see. So it's like, what other stuff you get as part of the course? That's really cool, though. That's really hecking cool. Yeah, I've never, I never even thought of something like that. Yeah, I've been doing the palette challenges as and when I see them, and when I feel like doing them as well, because I will say, it's a bit more involved. Like, I don't always have the time to do, like, a full palette challenge. It's because it's digital art, and I'm a lot slower at digital art. But when I had the chance to, I, I really liked it. Going colour first, and then making the art second, is, like, very, very uh, out there for how I've always done art. For me, it's like, you have an idea of something you want to draw, and then you start sketching it out, and then you colour it last. So starting with the colour is really weird. But I kind of love it. I, I like it a lot. I just wish that it was more natural to me because right now I still very much have to follow like colour palette challenges and stuff like that and daily posts and all that. I, I can't make them myself. I'm not at the stage where I can be like putting together a colour palette very easily. But I love I love taking part in other ones. Maybe I should start posting those on Twitter a little bit more when I do it. Maybe, maybe. I get a bit shy with my digital art to be honest. I'm a bit more open about my sketches and stuff but digital art I'm still quite new to. I get a little, I get a little shy, <laughs> a little shy. <laughs> but maybe I should. Then at least I'd have like documents of improvement over the years and such. Because I imagine I'll do it for very many years. Ah oh dear. I know someone are doing it. Toby used color palettes for their community and turned it into grayscale and had to color the art in with that. And at the end, they turned the color back on. Oh, <gasps> that's so fun though. Uh, so I know, um, you know, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, they did, uh, or like they did. They do body painting normally, right? And they've a couple times now done body painting challenges where their camera is in black and white and people watching have to guess what colour they're using and if they get it right, they'll, uh, or if they get all of the colours right, then they'll turn the colour back on and let you see what it actually looks. So as she's painting, you're guessing, like, what the colour palette she's using is or what the different colours are as she paints them on her body. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it was, it's a really fun stream to watch. Last time they also did it where people could add a colour, but they wouldn't know what colour they were adding. So they could add a colour, but it was in black and white, right? So you'd have to kind of guess what colour you were adding to it and whether it suited. And again, at the end she showed you, she was like, these are all the colours you picked, look at how they go together. And like, I'll be honest, she did a good job of like trying to work them in, but it was some odd ones that people picked. Because, yeah, when you're looking at it in black and white, the way that it looks is very, very different to when it's in full colour. Oh dear, but yeah, that was really cool. It was a really cool, uh, both of those are really cool ideas. I don't think I've ever done anything really black and white on stream. I mean, I, I definitely live in colour and sparkle and stuff like that, so I guess it makes sense that I haven't really done anything black and white. And I don't tend to do art that isn't embroidery on stream very often. Like, we've done some VTubers and stuff like that, but obviously that's very colourful. Uh, we've done... Occasionally we do sketches and cosplay planning, but we don't really do any, like, art art. It's mainly just embroidery, which uh, is art, of course, of course, and the cosplay is art too, but it's not, I guess, what people... Not like black and white, you know, learning art. 
<laughs> I shared the views of work on the stream. Oh, the Discord art section, thank you. We'll have a look at those. I think our next break, yeah, is coming up in like 15 minutes. So we'll have a little look at those then. Hell yeah, thank you for sharing. I look forward to seeing them. Oh. And at next break, we'll do a little evaluation on how we're doing. How we doing? Oh dear. It's okay. <laughs> Oh dear. I can't wait till I have like a really really buff body and it can do anything that I ever wanted it to do. Be like, yeah, you want to lift that rock? I could lift that rock. I want to have that kind of body. I don't know how often I'll be lifting rocks, to be honest. <laughs> That's not kind of the environment that I live in. But it would be cool. It would be cool to know that if I saw a rock that I could lift it. It'd also be cool to get closer to my childhood dream of becoming world's strongest man. <laughs> Oh dear. One day, one day. Although actually I probably wouldn't want to be that muscular. Not because there's anything against it, like you look how you look, but I think working with such small things with such big muscles, it might start getting difficult, right? Because you know, you have to be quite flexible to be like moving around your pieces and stuff. So as cool as as cool as the big muscles are and everything, I think I'd probably have to be a bit leaner that I could still do all the little delicate cosplay bits and bobs where I have to be a bit flexible, where I can still cut stuff on the floor uh, by holding it down with my feet and cutting. <laughs> at some point I should get some fabric weights, but for now, I get by just fine by sitting on my fabric and cutting around myself. <laughs> oh dear. Actually, when we move upstairs to the next craft room, we'll be able to... we'll actually be able to spread out on the floor a little bit if we want to. We could actually do some work on the floor, which I'm really looking forward to. I always enjoyed working on the floor. I always felt, uh, everyone's different. Obviously everyone's body's different, but I always felt that working on the floor was really good for my back. Like I always felt like I got like a little back workout from, from stretching around the floor and like cutting things up and uh, having all that space to move around and was really nice. I want to make sure when we do move upstairs that there is still like a fair space that is just floor, just open floor that I can cut out pattern pieces, especially like big pattern pieces. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure people in this, in this community are quite used to that because we do have a lot of people that do do sewing, but like cutting out big pattern pieces, you need a big space for it. <coughs> like even for like a dress or trousers or something like that, the pieces are just large enough that they'll, they just never fit on my desk. And I have a big desk. I mean, it's not a cutting desk or anything, but like for a, for a household desk, my desk is quite big, but yeah wouldn't be able to cut pattern pieces on it, unless they were like really small pattern pieces. I guess the streaming equipment probably doesn't help with that, but even just generally. Oh dear. There we go. Ooh. And in there, I think I might have to get a little more. I did cut the blue a little shorter than the others because I've been having leftover small pieces. I don't want to waste too much thread, but it seems like I might have tried to be a bit too stingy because I don't know if we're going to have enough to fill in the whole face. Because the heads are kind of big. I mean, they're not really that big. They're like one P pieces, but for filling DJ. in with embroidery, DJ, they're kind of big. Kind of big for like a filling in with teeny tiny embroidery. Also, CJ, thank you for the DJ. Welcome on in. How you doing? We are still chipping away at our dinosaurs, getting them in. And ye, I'm having I'm having a nice time with them. I like them very much. Also, what is the heck? What the? Oh my god! Did you not? Just then and there? <laughs> what? How did? It... Two seconds. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna have a slight argument with my thread. Like, how did you even manage that? Like, I I sewed you through the fabric, and when you came out the other side, you were knotted. Excuse me. <laughs> how does that even happen? What happened in there? When I wasn't looking for two seconds. Oh no, good morning. Welcome on in on YouTube. I hope you're doing well. You love and boy, me too. It's like a very relaxing process. It's nice and slow. You get to have a long think about all of your decisions. It's nice. It's just a, a chill vibe kind of craft. Unless you're <laughs> unless we're doing some sort of challenge, which you know we haven't done for a while. We've been pretty good. I still need to get some things. So next month, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of embroidery. Uh, which is another reason why I'm doing some experimentations just to see like how long I can stream for and stuff like that because I want to do a lot of it on stream. Uh, we're going to be making another animation out of embroidery next next month 
uh, but it will be a little different from the last one. I kind of want to... <laughs> I'm being a talking of doing things that you don't have the skill for yet, uh, or working outside your skill base. I kind of want to do some interesting stuff with like camera angles. Uh, so I want to get some interesting vibes. And what I want to do, we're gonna do uh, some videos, right? Not on stream. You'll have you'll have to you'll have to see this in retrospect. Unfortunately, we're gonna do some little videos of like certain movements and then see if I can animate them in embroidery and we'll use myself as a reference because what I want to do is quite specific. So I've been like drawing up some things that I want to do and one of the things <laughs> it's going to be really odd to film. I don't know how much of the filming you're going to see either because it might give away a little too much of our location but um, I, <laughs> I want to have like the, the hand coming out of the ground like you see in zombie movies. That one I already have pretty good reference for online, so I can kind of see how that happens. But then I want to see, I want to get, I don't know how I'm going to do this, right? But I have this, this image in my head of like the shadow of a hand coming out of the ground. And then kind of like the hand coming down on the camera in a way where like it covers the screen mostly black. And then you kind of get like the rushing of thread and then you're looking at the the zombie from the other side where it's crawling i again i'm hitting way outside of my knowledge zone here especially with animation i i have made very not really yet i've made one proper animation and i made it in three weeks and i even looking back i don't really understand how we did it it feels like it very much wasn't real so i'm still kind of knocking above my uh of my weight here but I think it'd be really cool to get that shot and I think it would really lend itself to embroidery because you could kind of do something with the threads where maybe they're not even sewn and they're just moving more stop motion-esque. I think that would be really, really cool. I'd really like that. But I don't, again, it's, it's the whole like, I have an image in my head of how I want something to look, but I don't always have the knowledge of how I'm going to make it look like that. And I feel like with the Iron Mouse one, we kind of just scuffed our way along. <laughs> Which, it worked! We finished the thing in time, and I'm very proud of it. You did great, thank you. I'm, I'm still very proud of it. But like, I want to make something something different and bigger. And what I kind of want... Um, I can probably talk to you about certain bits of it now, because I, I'm quite quiet about things until I'm sure that it's going to happen, because I don't want to get people's hopes up for something and then it not actually happen. Um, but at this point, we are getting pretty close, I guess, to April. So it, it won't happen the first week of April, because the first week of April I'm a bit busy. But we'll probably start it in the second week. Uh, and there's not really a time limit of it per se, but I would like to get it done before Chroma Core starts, since it's of my cadet for that. And I want to have... okay. It, it to be like... it's gonna be Goblin, I'm sorry, I love Goblin. Uh, but it's gonna be Goblin. I want to have like a little lore video, right? Like, but very, very short. And what I want is... I want to see like... a figure... I, okay, so I want to have like it start with uh, a coffin being lowered into a grave, and then you see the grave like degrading over time, just to give the idea that it's been there for a while. So that would be quite an easy one to do with embroidery, because what you do is you embroider the grave. In this case, it'll be the grave of the Goblin King. <laughs> so you embroider the grave, and then you just kind of like take lots and lots of pictures as you sew like grass and stuff like that so it's a really easy one to do in embroidery because you just add to it like just over time you add more and more grass more flowers um you could add some cracks in the tombstone if the tombstone is being destroyed uh, which i think that i will be well maybe not destroyed maybe like bits coming off you will have to unpick things from the back but again it's, as long as you haven't done anything else over the top of it, it's actually quite easy to unpick just a few stitches. Just plan for those stitches to be unpicked when you first sew them and you can go back and unpick them. So that kind of, that sort of time lapse will be really, really easy to do. And I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so that bit will probably be the first bit we did. Yeah, do it in reverse. Mm, no, can't do it in reverse. Too much unpicking leaves a, a very visible distortion on the fabric. So you have to build it up. You can't build it down, if that makes sense. Uh, because, yeah, in, by unpicking too much embroidery, it leaves holes in the fabric. It leaves holes in the... St it, it just makes it look... Uh, you you want to build it up, not build it down. That bit, that bit I'm pretty certain on. Um... It's just embroidery things, isn't it? 
Um, I, I really like talking to people about embroidery animation though because it does come up with problems that you wouldn't have other ways. But again, it's really, really easy to do it and build it up. Like I did it with this one. I can show you one I did it with before. I've actually done degrading things before, right? But a very short one comparatively to what I want to do. Uh, but it's not like we have no experience with it. We've done it before. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere in my many, many things. Uh, where did I put the thing? The building? Is it this one? Can you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've done this before. Obviously my camera was moving a lot there, which is why it's like vibrating a little bit. But it's not like it's not something we've done before where you can like, yeah, you can degrade things pretty easily by just adding a little grass at a time. I'm still really proud of this one, by the way. I don't know if you can tell, I'm still pretty proud of it. <laughs> Also, we are about to do an art show and tell, so I'm, I will I will pause my embroidery there since we have not got the Liopleurodon in, and now we just have to go back adding lots of details and color variants and stuff like that. But all the bases, oh, sorry, let me invisible this for a second so you can see it. All the bases are in. Hell yeah. But yeah, no. So we've done something similar before, and it's not difficult. That took me. Well, the other thing to bear in mind is that this one, this one that I'm talking about now. That, that was less than a day because again like you draw the base bit and then you just overgrow it and it, it gives the effect very easily of like yeah as long as you're planning for things like for me in my case it was planning for the roof to crack open so behind that i had some extra stitches you know stuff like that it's not difficult to plan i wouldn't want to unpick the whole thing but you can, you can unpick bits and it works pretty well and you can make things look overgrown really really quickly and again this was one day i could if i had like a whole month i can make it a lot more detailed <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so yes that is and also i won't be doing it with a reflection because that made it 10 times harder actually <laughs> oh dear but yeah so we'll do something like that to this for the start and i know how i'll do that and then once that image is there i want to have someone kind of like appear in the background I don't know if I'll have them just in several frames walking in. It doesn't need to be, that bit doesn't need to be fluid animation. They kind of just need to, the, the, the idea that someone's walked up to the grave, right? With a book. I don't know from what angle I want them to come in though. I've been drawing it from a few angles and I can't quite tell where I want them to come in from, but we'll get there. Uh, and I want it to be entirely in shadow. I'm going to be using a lot of black in the next embroidery, specifically because it will make things easier to edit for me if a lot of stuff is in shadow. So like a lot of the more complicated stuff, there will be a lot of shadow so that it makes it a little easier for me because matching colors when you have to take lots of different pictures is a pain in the ass. That, that, that I learned from the Iron Mouse one where I was having to, to fix the colors of like 120 frames the night before and it's like... <laughs> And they're not perfect. I, I did my best, but it was like, it was probably too much work. Oh, actually, we need to make a decision on this. First of all, let's go across to the Discord, because I know that some art's been posted in there, and I would like to see it. And we have one from Pi. This is a pouch with crochet hook, scissors, needles. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Only I can see it. I'm sorry. I'm hoarding, hoarding the art to myself. Pouch with crochet hook, scissors, needles, and other small sewing notions. I sewed it a few years ago. Hacking nice. Ah, uh, to be fair, it does look like it's been used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see that you've been using it. But that's nice. Being able to make stuff that you can immediately use is lovely. Hell yeah. I can... I need a little clap. And then I... If, do we have any scissors? <laughs> can you get us scissors? Yeah, yeah, you can. Hell yeah. I'll get you some scissors. And then I think we had Sal? Sal's has posted some art in the art channel? Oh, and Somne. Somne and Sal's. All right, we're gonna look at the clay polymer sculpture from Sal's because this is what they were doing on stream. Very hecking nice. Hell yeah, with a little much. Oh, very fairy core. I see what you mean about the four-leaf clover. Is that because it's gonna be St. Patrick's Day soon? Or is it just a coincidence for some good luck, you know? Oh dear. And then, oh yeah, that's, that's really nice actually. I really, it feels very almost like a, like a little fairy portal or something. It feels like a little fairy portal. A little fairy portal could open at any minute. I love it. And then... I love it. There we go. We love it. And then some of the uh, stores you were talking about in stream that I ruined the colour with and I had to go back on. Ah, oh, but that's so nice. God, see, but like, how can you say you have bad line art? That's so nice. The clouds are so satisfying. Like the edge of, it's really nice. I Obviously we're all our own biggest critics, but I think this is absolutely stunning, Son uh, Sonny. I think it's really, really nice. I think, I think, I, I, I didn't, haven't seen it in color, so I couldn't say on that, but I, this, 
This is really, really nice. Oh, and they're like slight outline on the sword as well there. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I love it. Hell yeah. Really, really nice, Somne. Oh dear. I think that's everything in the Discord that I had to go over for this one, right? I think I think we've gone over everything. I think we've, we've gone over those. We've gone over the art. I don't think anything else has been posted, so I think we should be like, god damn, Cthulhu. Cthulhu losing count. Yeah, I think we've got I think we got everything. Also, Lagoon, welcome on in. I hope you are doing well. Alright. Let's see. How are we doing? We've only been going for a couple of hours. My body's just slow. It feels a bit better than it did earlier, to be fair. I feel less ill. <laughs> Which is nice. <laughs> Thank you for my arm. That's cool that you see it as a fairy. Yeah, to me it looks like a like something you'd see on the back. Like you'd be walking in the forest and you'd see it carved into the back of a tree or something, and you'd be like, oh, <laughs> okay. There's a little seal on this tree. What does that mean? That's what I would imagine it as. Like either a fairy door or like something that you'd like stumble across in a forest and be like, oh, <laughs> there's law here, but I don't know what the law is. <laughs> oh dear. All right, we have to pick out some colors. We have brain work to do. I'm thinking, originally I was thinking that we'd mismatch them a little bit, but I'm thinking actually we maybe keep them all as our own colorway and we'll just do like darker versions of the colors or lighter versions to like speckle them and stuff like that. I think is what I'm gonna do instead. And then a little highlight. It's a door I would so love to find in a forest. Yeah, and Kyo, you're back. You had a friend come over? Oh, I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a good old time with your friend. We've just finished getting the base colour of the Lyplorid on him, which means all of them have their main base colour. And we just have to make some decisions now about where we go next. So I'm thinking that we use lighter and darker versions of the colours that there already are so that they stay as little contained areas of colour. I kind of like that because I kind of like how this looks. So if I was to like start jumbling the colours around a little bit, I don't know if I'd like it as much. So I'm thinking to make them a little more contained. And like, is that the vibe I'm going with? So like, you know, the orange will have like darker orange spines and then lighter orange and stuff like that. Oh, uh, he needs someone to talk about to a sensitive topic, so I gladly listen to his worries. That's very hecking good of you. Hell yeah. I'm glad that they had someone they could turn to. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're having a rough time, friends and family, I feel like is always a good shout of someone you could talk to. Uh, if not like a professional, of course. <laughs> you know, sometimes we all need, we all need to talk to someone who's a, a bit big brain and can help out a lot. But friends and family is a wonderful first option. Ah, oh, Dennis, cool, cool that you could be that for someone. All right. <laughs> Procrastinating, making a decision. Um, let's get some threads out. If I get some threads out, then I can kind of vibe with whether or not I like this idea or not. And I might, I might hate it. <laughs> and if I hate it, then I won't do it. But I'm thinking. We did have like a darker peach, didn't we? Was it this one? Was this the darker peach I was thinking of? Yeah, like it's a very similar color, but it's definitely not the same color. Having that for the spines and the belly, maybe. And then we need a shading color, which needs to be a bit darker, which I could use something like this reddish. It's a bit darker, but it's not too dark, I think. And then we need like a highlight color, <laughs> which I think might have to be, it's a very light colour anyway, so I think something, unless we pick, no, I can't pick yellow for all of them, maybe like something like that. Oh god, this is going to get complicated real quick, isn't it? We've made it things difficult for ourselves again. Oh dear, once again, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Alright, I'm thinking this is a highlight, and that is lighter, so that could work. This is the detail bit, and then this is the shadow. That feels quite dark, doesn't it? Will they even have any shadow on them, actually? Wait, they probably don't- no, we're not doing shadow. no. They're cute beans. We're not doing shadow on them. These are not- <laughs> these are not shadowy beings. They're just small beans having a splash party. They don't need shadow. Okay. <laughs> Normally I go quite hard on shading, but- oh! <gasps> no! The bottom fell off! Two seconds, I have made a mess. <laughs> oh no! My colours! No! Oh, get back on top. Come on. Oh! <laughs> my colours! My well organised set of colours! No! <laughs> Alright, you get back in there. 
I will have to sort you out later. How dare. How dare you throw yourself on the ground and get all messed up and make me have to resort you. Oh my god. So rude. I mean, is it my own fault for not properly putting the lid on? Probably. <laughs> Probably. But still. Oh dear. Is this from Slime Rancher? It is from Slime Rancher. I like the Slime Rancher OST. I played a lot of it back when it came out. How do I have garbage on my top? I just put it on. All right. Oh, that doesn't like... Is that why it fell? Oh, I think I found the reason it's, it's not. There you go. Okay, safe. <gasps> oh no, I can see some just on the floor. Okay, we'll come back for that. It's fine. We'll pretend we didn't see it. <laughs> oh dear. To be fair, I, I might be a little mad that I dropped it, but at least it's not beads. I can I can be as mad as you like about about <coughs> dropping things, but as long as it's not beads, it's fine. <laughs> now if I drop beads, oh, this is a different story. I have dropped beads on stream before, never like awfully. I've dropped them worse off stream though than I have on stream. Like when you go to pick up a packet and then the lid's not on properly and you just sort of throw them everywhere. I've done that a couple times on stream. <laughs> Once again, that, that is the consequence of my own actions and not properly putting the lids on my pots, so I can't even be that mad. Like, I did that to myself. I love Star uh, Slime Rancher. I love Slime Rancher too. I have played a good, a good lot of it in the past and I've always very much enjoyed it. Alright. Let's work then, dinosaur by dinosaur. Getting... I might not put the... the... the what you call it, timer on. I guess I probably have to, otherwise people will be like, why isn't the timer on? But I might not be listening to the timer right now because uh, because I'm feeling a bit rough anyway. I might just take a break every time we finish a dinosaur, if that's okay, for a little bit. So rather than waiting for a full hour to be up, <laughs> I'm not normally someone who would put in extra breaks, but I think today might be one of those days where I might just need a couple of extra breaks every now and again to make sure that uh, I'm doing okay. I'm just a little, just a little bit rough. Just a teeny tiny bit. Not terribly rough, but a teeny tiny bit rough. Ah, oh, dear. I just noticed the one of the He does! Yeah, somebody pointed it out yesterday. This little guy, he wasn't meant to be blah, 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 okay? But I, I am completely happy with saying that, like, you know, subconsciously, I was like, make them look like the bubble bubble guy. And he does look like the bubble bubble guy. And it wasn't on purpose, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> Oh dear. Maggie, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. So I'm just getting, I'm once again, you've caught me getting very excited about bubble bubble. <laughs> All right, we'll put the timer on, but I might not make it to the next time. We'll see. I might have to take a break a little early, but we'll try and get to it because it would be nice to, but I won't hold myself to it too high. Yeah, yesterday we were talking- Oh, actually, Val, you probably would have liked that conversation. Yesterday we were talking about how in- Like, back in- Back in the day, when we were playing games, um, you know, we, we didn't have the internet, which meant that, you know, when you found a secret in a game, you felt like a genius. You felt like the biggest brain bean in the world. And Bobble Bobble is one of those games where it has, like, secret levels and, like, levels that you don't want to skip and stuff like that. And- I remember playing with my family and my family is showing me a secret for the first time and it's just blowing my mind. Like, what? Oh my god. Yeah, it was great. No, good hecking times. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, your headphones are low back. No, you're fine. It's nice to see you, but yeah, you're all good, Maggie. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. You take care of yourself. Ah, oh, dear. And I hope, I hope your headphones are okay. There we go. Yeah, like the, the, old, the olden days of gaming where finding a secret made you feel like the smartest bean ever and it was like really cool and then you'd go to school and you'd be like guys I found a secret in a game oh uh, I still remember my doom codes you still have them I didn't play doom I like well I guess you kind of knew that because I played doom for the first time a couple weeks ago but I didn't play doom when I was younger but we did have croc and the legend of gobbo's codes for getting to different areas and all that kind of stuff yeah, and like we would just write them like in a piece of paper and put it inside the game thing, like the, the game case, so that the next time we play we could just skip to different areas and stuff. Yeah. Croc and the Legend of the Gobbos. It was great. I actually though, I say that was a great game. I was very afraid. Croc and the Legend of the Gobbos hit something in my brain as a kid where I was very afraid of a lot of the enemies in that game. Like the chicken, the ladybug, I was, I was afraid of everything. 
all the all the bosses I was just kind of like freaked out by. <laughs> I don't know why. Now, now when I play the original Tomb Raider, I can't find any secrets and I feel like an idiot. Yeah, it's like if I try to play Croc right now, I wouldn't find any of those secret levels and stuff like that. But back in the day, you were like, we were primed looking for them because they could be secrets. Uh, ID clip. Those are the two you needed. I think we yes, yeah. Yesterday when we were talking about it, the one that came up a lot was Mother Load for The Sims. <laughs> Which was a very good code, and we all used it very responsibly. Uh, <laughs> mother load. It gave you like, what was it, 50k every time you did it? Or something like that? Was it 20k or 50k? It gave you a lot of money in game if you typed in mother load. <laughs> oh dear. I mean though, I, I say that that, that I, I actually I think I wanna re rechange my statement a little bit though. Because yesterday we talked a little bit about how that doesn't really exist anymore, but I think that it does exist. I just don't think it's maybe as common. Because you get games like that people will forever theory craft on. I mean I, Five Nights at Freddy's is a wonderful example of people creating theories and looking for secrets in the game and playing the game over and over again so they can get those special events and stuff like that. So I think that community very much still exists. I think it's a little different than it used to be, and that's okay. Not the same, but it's still, the vibe is still there of like trying, you know, those people that were like trying to theory craft on like Undertale or Five Nights at Freddy's and all these really big games that like get really popular and try and play them a million times to find every little secret. Like it definitely still exists. It's just a little different to how it was. Yeah, I want to change my statement slightly. It, it looks different, but I think it's the same vibe. I used to know all the secret areas in Donkey Kong Country. I know people who use Novel Load so much, it crashed the game! Yeah, well, back in the day, these crashes were much more common. I think it was 50k. It was 50k, gotcha. I was like, I couldn't remember. I know it was a lot of money. Cheat codes in PS2 was so fun. Well, you could get, like, magazines. If you bought gaming magazines, you could buy magazines that would have cheat codes for certain games in them. <laughs> oh, dear. Which is... It is always a vibe, always a hacking vibe. Like, ah oh yes, I have bought a gaming magazine and now I can use my cheat codes that I get from my gaming magazine. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, get a little, get a little cheeks. And then, get the little spines in. There we go. Yes, yep, yep, getting the game magazines. So we didn't get the gaming magazines, but like my parents and my friends and my parents did. And they were very into that kind of stuff. And I remember them, like, we weren't allowed to watch them play Grand Theft Auto because <laughs> they were little and they were like, nope, you're not allowed to watch us play this game. But I do remember them getting, like, they would they would get the, the, the magazines and so that they could get the cheat codes in Grand Theft Auto and then we weren't allowed to watch. <laughs> we weren't allowed to watch that. I mean, you look back on it, they were playing Vice City and you look back in Vice City and you're like, I mean, it's like pixely nothing, but yeah, you know, obviously it does depict certain acts that might be a little, a little not great for kids. Oh dear. Oh, come on, come on needle. Yeah, there you go, there you go. The two ways is funny because it was like step forward then back, spin around three times. But it's like the stuff where like the old cheats would make you sound like actually mad. Like if you go up to someone, you're like, guys, I'm playing Tomb Raider. And have you tried stepping forward, stepping back, spinning around three times and then doing a cartwheel because it unlocks a special room. Like you sound like a mad person. <laughs> but like legitimately old games used to have cheats like that. And it was really fun because yeah, you'd go in and you'd, you'd talk to people and you'd be like, I found a cheat code and you do this, 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 and this, and then it unlocks this and this. And it was, yeah, really, really cool. I kind of love it when games still incorporate stuff like that. And I, I will say as well, like, some games do a really good job of keeping stuff really secret. Of course, there is an argument of like how much was intended and how much is unintended, um, you know, but one that I, I going back because I watched I watched this playthrough. I watched a few people play for actually afterwards, uh, which was Fear and Hunger, which was a game that I was kind of interested in, but I didn't think that I could stream because of the nudity in it. But apparently there is now nudity mods, and so like you can stream it. But one of the things that was really interesting to me was people talking about the cheat codes for the speed runs of Fear and Hunger, and if you go onto a certain tile and click A and spin left, you spawn people. <laughs> 
And it's like stuff that, again, there is an argument of like how much of this was on purpose and how much was this just game people accidentally leaving things in, but it's really funny. <laughs> you, can, you can just stand in a certain spot and you can just spawn people and they just appear out of nowhere. And it's, it's stuff like that. It makes me smile. It reminds me of the olden times, but also it's very funny. <laughs> Oh dear. Someone to write the code down on paper and leave it in a case you check out in Blockbuster or the movie gallery? Yeah! For us it was the local library. People would write on the... The, the, the manual that came with the games. I don't- this is just the game manual. The people would like write codes inside of the game manual. Some of them even had spaces for people writing codes in them. Like they'd have like just text you could just fill in. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I almost didn't believe them. Yeah, it's like it's so out there that you're like, hmm... But then you try it and say, wow, a secret. I wonder if modern games, but I think they do. I think it's just much quicker to be found. And rather than it going by word of mouth, you get forums on the internet where people discover stuff like that. I don't think all games do it, but there are still games that definitely leave stuff in. Again, I think Five Nights at Freddy's is a really, really good example of like a, a, a game that has got people theorizing for years about what things meant, about what this was. And like and adding to the story with each installment and it get it gets people talking and it, it might not be your style of game per se like to be honest it's not really my style of game either but i can appreciate games that get a community really talking and theorizing and and putting together their own thoughts and trying to work things out and you know playing th th i remember when people playing like the first five nights at freddy's game and you know there are certain events that you had to get quite lucky to see which means you could play the game multiple times and still not see certain things whereas other people might play the game one time and get like a really rare event like a, a poster changing and then they'll go on a forum and be like yeah no that's not what the poster looked like for me and you'll have like a whole conversation because someone's got an event that they've never got again and then other people are trying to replicate to get that same event I, I, I just, if you can't tell, I think it's a really cool thing that people add into their games. I think it's really cool, it makes me smile, and I like it a lot. <laughs> and yeah, it definitely was in old games a lot, but there are definitely... I, I would say though, the people that are making these games are probably people that grew up with cheat codes and stuff like that, like as a part of their gaming experience, so it kind of makes sense that they still include it in their games. Happy midweek! I just see you! Welcome on in! Sorry, you have caught me in the middle of this. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. We're talking about old games and cheat codes and like stuff like that and how theories can really add to, to game franchises and all that. In Simcopter, if you hit the right circumstance, activate a code that's supposed to Oh my god, it was beautiful! It was a 90s family game! Amazing! My parents were watching some 80s crime down last night and there was, uh, they went to bed and discovered the man in the blockbuster video on the He's and I was instantly like, this dates it, yeah. You wouldn't have that anymore. I'm always catching you in deep combat, I'm so sorry. We have these conversations where I'm like, I love this, I want to talk about this all day, every day. It's so fun. Symphony, good morning, welcome on in. Yeah, we're talking about Undertale's a really, another one that's really good. Um, Undertale and Deltarune. I'm going to add Deltarune into it. Because the theories and stuff has been like, and the people like trying to go into the code and working things out in that game has been really intense. It's been really interesting. And I love that the, the maker of Undertale left stuff in the code and they left things, you know, in there so that if people did try to deep dive into the game, there were things you could find and there still are things you can find. I think that's really cool. I think I, it's such an attention to detail. And there's no reason to do it because you don't know that your game's going to pop up. You don't know that your game's going to be like really big. You don't know that it's going to create all these theories. So you leave it there hoping that one day someone goes and looks. And I think that's, I don't know. There's something about that that I, I just really like. I just really like that I do. I think it's amazing. I think it's really, really cool. And it makes me smile every single time. Ah, oh dear. I mean, there was also games that, uh, oops, sorry like jogging the whole thing. There's also games that really play into that. Uh, I don't want to spoil it too much, so if you don't want spoilers for Doki Doki Literature Club, uh, don't listen to this next five minutes. Uh, but Doki Doki Literature Club is another one that really leaned into that. So to actually complete the game, you have to go into the game files and you have to alter things. And the game does give you how to do it and stuff like that. It doesn't make it difficult, um, but it gives you it gives you basic instructions on how to do certain things to delete certain characters from the game. And it's all very silly and it's all very made for the gameplay. So it's not like actually how it would work if you were to delete a character per se. Um, it's, it's set up specifically so that the game can have that mechanic. 
But it, again, it like harks back to, you know, yeah, to finish the game, you have to go into the game code and you have to delete certain characters and you have to add this here and you have to write in this here. But then they also take it a step further because that's part of the game. But if you were to go back into the game code and look at the character codes and everything like that, go watch somebody else's video on it if you're really interested because it's actually mad. But they have, there are whole forums dedicated to decoding Doki Doki Literature Club and the stuff they left in the files because there is like audio files that have been turned into like QR codes that have been turned into binary that if you run it through oh, like lots of different code stuff over and over again, you can decode things. You can see faces of characters that weren't in the game. You get clues and hints towards a world that is maybe not even mentioned in your version of the game because different playthroughs can end up in different ways. And it's really interesting. Again, it's just someone who's put like a lot of extra time and effort into something that you would never normally see. Never normally see, because why would you look? <laughs> why would you be looking, right? But for the people that really got interested in the theories and all that kind of stuff, they did. And it was really cool to watch a whole community come together and decode it like that and go for everything. It's like, hey, do we have anyone who's fluent in C plus? Oh yeah, me, let me have a look at this code. Meanwhile, can you have a little look at that? It was like, you imagine like an office, like on deadline day, busily handing papers around and, and trying to work things out. People bringing up theories, people dismissing them. It was, it was really, really cool. It was really entertaining. And like, there was kind of snippets. The thing is, I suppose these days with games, you kind of have to be there while it's happening. Because right now, you know, those, <clears throat> excuse me, all those codes have been decoded. It's all been done. Uh, but it, it wasn't quick. It took a while. Uh, but yes, at this point, a lot of stuff has been done. But it's really interesting. It's so cool. And again, I love that people still add stuff like that to their games for the people that are really enthusiastic about it. And not all games do. It works really well in a horror scenario, I think, specifically, because it feels like you're being a detective. You're going through it and working everything out but it's very, very cool. It sounds super creative. Yeah, I do think you have to be quite creative to think it all up. And it's like leaving a really detailed puzzle in like, and again, it's not a puzzle that I could solve. I would never be able to solve that puzzle on my own because who speaks like 20 coding languages? <laughs> I couldn't do that. So you needed the community to come together and work out. I can't imagine it, it having been solved any other way than the community coming together and, and working on it. Because the, the likelihood of one person being able to actually go through and solve it all is like pretty small, really. <laughs> so it's really, really cool. Really, really cool. That was a really cool time. Uh, if you were interested in horror to be on the internet. It's part of the reason though I'll never, I probably will never play Doki Doki Literature Club on stream because well, first of all, I already know the twist. I already know what happens. I do have the game. Uh, but secondly, I think a lot of the joy for me of Doki Doki Literature Club was all the stuff that happened around the game, not necessarily just the stuff that happened in the game. So I think it was uh, a little bit of that, which, yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's difficult to get that across unless you were there. And I still would say, if you are genuinely curious about the stuff of Doki Doki Literature Club, go, there are deep dives into it, people explaining everything. I think there's a game theory on it as well. So... Uh, you can you can go watch it. Listen, I'll be streaming for a while probably. I'm feeling okay right now. So you can always go and come back and tell me what you think of it. But yeah, it's dark. Doki Doki Literature Club is dark. And I would say the, the further you get into the code, the darker it is. Yeah. The soundtrack sounds terrible. But yeah, but if you run it through four different decoders, you see a new character. Very creative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing like reddits just like popping off with like oh, we've worked this one bit out and it's like oh my god <laughs> Reminds me of NGS fourth wall stuff. It's really cool uh, A lot of people thought that the stuff that they found in the code was all a teaser for a new game That they might be releasing based on a book that's in the game of Doki Doki Literature Club But at this point it's hard to say whether that's the, the case or not because games take a while to develop So it's like we probably wouldn't know if that's the case for a while at this point because if that is the case and they are developing a game, they also have to develop a game, which <laughs> will probably take a little while. So yeah, I don't I don't know if that is if like at this point, we don't even know if the theories are right, I guess, because again, it takes a while to work that out. So it's probably not going to be happening anytime soon. But it's it's really, really interesting. It's really interesting. Again, I, the game itself is quite slow at the beginning, especially until it starts to kick off. The first, it, you don't really, it, it, it's a slow burner. I, I would say again, I don't want to spoil it for you if you've never played Doki Doki Literature Club. It is an experience. And I do 
recommend it, but it has got some pretty triggering uh, elements in it. So do look through, as with all games, look through the the trigger warnings before playing the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always recommend that anyway, but yeah, with a game like Doki Doki specifically, <laughs> it would be worth looking through that before playing the game. But if you're okay with that and you don't mind the trigger warnings, you can have a really cool time with it. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. All right, I picked out a lighter and a darker orange. We'll do the same thing. We're just gonna go through all of them. I think, by the way, he looks really cute. <laughs> Sorry, we were talking about Doki Doki Lights the gloves. I was like, I'm not gonna mention it, but we did finish his bait. He just needs his little face in now, and then he's good to go. Um, so we just need to do that with the rest. We actually might finish this today. I didn't think about that, but we might. <laughs> I kind of assumed I was going to be doing this on uh, on Friday as well, but it looks like it was zooming a little bit, so we might be done. What other games have had really cool theory crafting in it? I do think game theory, and I, I obviously it's a bit of a sore topic for a few people because they've just, they, you know, Matt Pat's no longer the main figure in game theory anymore, so I know a few people have been sad, and I, I get that because I also watched a lot of game theory. But uh, yeah, I, I, there was a lot of really, oh, what was, it's really dark though. There's one, there's one I'm thinking of that was really dark. Was it Petscop? Because Petscop's not a real game, is it? It's like a, a fake game that someone's done a fake Let's Play of. It is mad. The, the thing that really gets me about stuff like this is somebody, for their first video, with no warning, made a video of a game that doesn't exist, and they filmed it, and then playing a game that doesn't exist as if they were doing a let's play. But there was nothing to say that, that was gonna take off. There was nothing to say that people were actually gonna watch it. And they put all of this effort in, into it. But like, and it, it's really lucky that it did take off and not a lot of people did see it. I wish Twitch had the option where you could send hidden messages giving spoiler tags if you need to click it. I kind of wish true. Actually, Kyo, that's actually a really good point. Like a Discord spoiler, so that if people want to lurk but they don't want to be spoiled, that they can just mute it for a while and they don't have to worry about- That's really clever! Oh, the Veggie Tales? Not Veggie Tales. No, I think it- Oh, Petscop, I think, was the name. It is dark. I, I, I think they put some trigger warnings on the videos themselves. But I wouldn't watch that one unless you're okay with the trigger warnings they talk about because it does talk about real life events as well, uh, which is pretty intense. That's a really interesting one. Ah, oh, Dale Hawk! Jennifer! Jennifer Auspicious Fish the Fur! That's me! <laughs> Hawk, welcome on in! I hope you're doing well! And Sam, the dyes are cute! Thank you! We need to give them little faces, but we're gonna do that last. So what we're gonna do is we're going around, putting little little variants of colour on them, and then we're gonna do their faces. Then we're gonna give them little faces. They're gonna have teeny tiny little happy, happy grins, because they're playing around in in the swamp. I would have a little happy grin if I was playing around in the swamp. Oh dear. I got cool smart. It's a really good idea, actually. Now, I'd never thought of that before, but yeah, like, because occasionally, like, yeah, for like when we were talking about Doki Doki Literature Club, I had to say, you know, if you don't want spoilers on that, we are going to be discussing some of the end game. And it would be nice if, yeah, people didn't have to worry about seeing the spoilers in the chat, because obviously it's very difficult then for you guys to actually join in the conversation without also putting spoilers in chat. Yeah, I, I get that. That, that. That's difficult. That's a really good idea. I am, thank you. I did something, but I shouldn't. I started, you started it? Hawk, oh my God. I love Resident Evil 7. I don't know why you're doing it with just a knife, but I appreciate the effort. Resident Evil 7 is my favorite horror game that I've ever played on Twitch. I really like it. I really, really like it. It had everything that I could have possibly wanted from a horror game. And I just, just really, really good. Really enjoyed it. I don't know if it's the best horror game ever made, but it's the best one that I've ever played on Twitch. Yes. Uh, back from a big lunch. Oh, lovely. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. I have also just put a knot in my fabric. Uh, Come on. You got this. You got this. You don't have to stay knocked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you don't have... Oh, no, no. Wait, did I split it? I split it, didn't I? Oh, I split it. I'm a butt. I'm a butt. Okay, two secs. Let me... Oomph. We'll just stitch it back in again. I've still got plenty of thread on here, so I'm not I'm not too worried. Arguably, I got too much thread to begin with, so this is my own fault for making it not because I pulled off too much thread. I could blame no one but myself. 
It's all right, Thirteen times over and I need a challenge. Have you considered speedrunning it? I don't know if you have already, Hawk. You might have already. But the madness speedruns of Resident Evil 7 are awesome. Awesome stuff. Oh dear. Also, commission update. Ooh! Oh my god. Oh, cool. Okay, okay. Look at 24 deaths so far in the basement fight with Jack. Oh my god, that's not bad. You've actually been zooming then. That's pretty hecking good. Uh, she's emailed apologizing, said that her friends and family have been pressuring her to get a refund, and she definitely wants to go ahead with the costume because she thinks the work is beautiful. Ah. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that that she's had a change of heart because it does make it easier for you now. You know what what you need to do and just get it sent and yeah, makes makes things a little easier. It sucks that all that happened and you had to go through all of that stress, but uh, I'm glad that it's been worked out. I've been like two and a half hours, but that's good enough for me. Honestly, fair, fair. I like watching speedruns of Seven. Uh, I haven't done a speedrun of Seven myself, but it is one of those ones where it's like, you know, you have like a little list in your head and you're like, ah, it's on there. It's on that list. I don't know if I'll ever actually get round to it, but it's on the list with a, a lot of other things, unfortunately. Oh dear. It's a very busy list. Go. Oh dear. Excellent. Yeah. I'm glad that that's seemingly coming to a, a conclusion. That hopefully everyone is happy with. Because yeah, that sucked. The, the you know... Uh, yeah, yeah, that really did suck. Otherwise. Oh dear. Yeah, probably all the stress I've been going uh, slower, so I am behind. I'll probably need to ship it a couple of days later, but like five days ago she told me she didn't want to work on it, so that's entirely helpful. Yeah, I think she'd understand that, like, you know, hey, since you said you didn't want it, I stopped working on it for a couple of days. Are you okay with being shipped a couple of days late? I feel like that's that's not... yeah. Considering that a few days ago she wasn't expecting for it to ship at all. Yeah, I feel like that's that's very fair. Oh my god. My thumb. My thumb! Okay, because tomorrow we're playing Slay the Princess. And at that point my thumb gets a nice break for a day. And then from the looks of it, I think we're finishing this today. Which means that I think probably on Friday we'll end up doing cosplay instead. Because I think we'll have finished the embroidery for the week. I'll start another one next week, but for this week... It went really quick. It was really fun as well. I wouldn't be against doing another one like this in the future. It was very fun. Very fun. Now I just have to hope she likes it when it arrives, and it arrives with no more issues. Yes. Yes. You need to get some sleep like Oh no, thank you, Sal. And thank you so much for sharing your art with us. It was really lovely to see it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and a massive, massive thank you for popping by. Ah oh dear, no more full costume commissions. Thank you very much. I do not blame you. What's the name of the Spot the Difference game? Oh, that was Exit Number 8. Or The Exit 8, I think. is The Exit 8, I think, is what it is, actually. Yes, The the Exit 8. But the number 8. It's The Exit 8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one was really good. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, I do want to have... I, I had a little look after that stream at Observation Duty. Um, it looks like there's five of them, I think, or maybe more even, but there, there, there was a bundle I could see of like a lot of different observation duty ones, so I might have a little look at that in the future. I'm not going to do it just yet because, you know, I have a few other games to play first, but I am curious. I am curious. I saw I saw it getting good reviews and it did look kind of fun, so it's, <laughs> it's on a different list, but it is also on a list now because I am curious about it. Oh dear, you're welcome to see you. No, thank you for popping by. Take care. Get some good Z's. Oh dear, the person I want to kick in the shins have shifted from her to her friends. Oh, true. We want to kick different shins now. Oh dear. Uh, also, uh, the observation duty is great and I love it. And it's great for chat too, yeah. It's like, I saw it and I was like, that looks like it would be fun. It's just that I have a few things that I'm like, ooh. Because I kind of almost want to do all of them. Question, what up? How do I help you? Oh dear. How can I help? There we are. Hi, Infinite! Welcome on in! I hope you're doing well. Yeah, the exit uh, was good, but short, but pretty unique. Yeah, it was good. I really liked it. Uh, do you still have the duck game? I do still have the duck game, yes. Pla Placid Plastic Duck Simulator. A good game, and I like it. I also have like 300 hours in Placid Plastic Duck Simulator. <laughs> I have many, many hours. I still watch it sometimes on my off days. I'm like, look at these ducks. Look at these good old ducks. Oh dear. 
Yeah, if I had it running in the background, it, it started to crash my PC, unfortunately, which is why we stopped having it. But I, I still love it. I still love it. It may, I liked it very much. If I ever get a better PC, which I don't think I will anytime soon, because it, it does fine 99% of the time, then sure, I might bring them back. But yeah, it was, uh, it was giving me little crashes, which is not great for stream. <laughs> so I had to let it go. Oh dear. Oh dear. Could it be a huge scale, you know, like Portal 2 with the exit content? You probably could. It's, it's a really interesting concept that I think you could take in a lot of different ways, and it would be a really fun game. Oh dear. You have to head out. No, Teacup, thank you so much for popping by. It was lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope that it goes well. It was nice to see ya. Oh dear. Yeah, Plastic Plastic Duck Simulator. You missed the duckies. I miss them too sometimes. I used. I, it was only very recently that I deleted the scene for them, to be honest, because I liked the ducks. They just crashed my PC a lot. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't from any dislike. I still like them. I just wish that, yeah, I could do my streams without having to worry about the ducks crashing me constantly. But they were great and I did love them. <laughs> Maybe it's my fault for getting all of the updates and downloading all the extra content and stuff. Could be on me. Could be on me for getting all the extra stuff. But like, how can you say no to more duck content? <laughs> Oh dear. There we go. Ooh. There we are. What about the racing game we did where you got the rare car on your first race? We kind of keep that for, for charity streams or like really long streams because Nitro Racing is really, really good if you're going for a bit longer because it gives you like a break as a streamer where you don't have to be crafting and stuff like that. So I really like it for marathon streams. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. So I'm, st I'm still working things out here, so don't take anything with too much... Like, things may change. I don't want to get anyone's hopes up too much. But for Chroma Core, my current goal is to try and do the entirety of the embroideries on stream. Now, that might not seem... If you weren't here last year, that might not seem like an intense, uh, intense thing, particularly because you're like, yeah, you do embroideries all on stream all the time. That would mean probably consistently streaming about 10 to 14 hours a day, <laughs> just to be clear. Uh, so it would be, it'd be quite a lot of streaming. That's why I'm doing a lot of testing at this stage to see how my body holds up with doing multiple six hour streams a day. Then we might go up to a longer trying to do some eight hour streams, see how that goes. Basically, I want to see what my limits are. I want to, I want to properly test my limits. It's been a really long time since I've done anything like that. And I want to see what I physically can do because I very much enjoy streaming and I like doing long streams. But I always feel like I'm kind of stuck with this body that doesn't like, <laughs> that, that gets sick very easily, right? So I'm always like, oh, what can I do? What, what can I do that's not going to take it too far? So we're doing a lot of tests and the next few months we'll continue to be doing tests, little different tests. Tests on foods, which you won't see so much of. Uh, tests on this, like how long I can last without having a migraine in a safe way, in a safe way. I'm an adult and I can work out my own stuff. So don't worry. But uh, what did the doctor say about the jello? None of your business. <laughs> That's between me and my doctor. You'll just have to trust that I'm an adult and that I can make my own sensible decisions and that I wouldn't be doing anything that's going to be making me purposefully ill, if that makes sense. And that's why it's important to do tests and try things. And then if it doesn't go well, that's fine. That's OK. Uh, sorry, sorry, man. <laughs> You're all right. I often get people try to back seat, seat doctor me and it's a uh, it, a lot of disabled people deal with being backseat doctored, if that makes sense. I, I don't know if that's the right way of putting it, but you get the idea. Uh, none, none of your damn biz. Oh dear, is my general answer. <laughs> oh dear. But uh, yeah, I want, I want to see what I can do. I want to see how far I can push it. I can't do like subathons and stuff like that, and I'm very aware of that. Like overnight and stuff, it's not going to happen. The same reason we don't do 24 hour stream. But like, how long can I actually go before my stream start triggering migraines in me? I actually don't know. And it would be nice to know stuff like that. Like information like that's just super useful to have so that I don't push myself too far. So yeah, we're doing some experiments and if things do go well, which I'm really hoping they do, obviously I don't have a whole lot of say, uh, but if if things do go well and it does it does work and I'm doing quite well, um, then I what I want to do is yeah try and the goal is if I can stream the whole of certain embroideries maybe not all of them but even some of them, uh, yeah yeah that would be really really good that would be really really good. 
I would really like that. So we're just gonna see. And that's why I'm doing it now, because it gives me a few months. Ah oh dear, we worry about our streamer Tarragotchis. I know, but I think as well there is like a balance between worrying and trying to mother people when they don't want to be mothered. And again, as a disabled person who has already had a lot of their stuff taken away from me, I don't really appreciate it when people come into stream and try and make decisions for me based on my health, you know? It's like, that is the one thing where it's like, I am in control. <laughs> so I don't, I don't appreciate when people try and take it away from me. I know it doesn't come from a place of hurt or harm, but I think it's pretty common, unfortunately, that people do this to disabled people and it's just not chill. Like, you know, leave me be. Oh dear. I have no interest in doing summer of 24 hour streams. That's very fair. I simply stream until I get bored, which is honestly a good way of doing it. What a heckin' healthy, healthy way of streaming. I'm addicted. I don't know if you can tell. Also working on beating and jelly, you didn't give me a heart attack yesterday? Wait, what? Because of all the stitching? Like me with lights triggering my migraines. I can feel when it's getting a bit too much and I know how to deal with it. Yeah, it's like, I know my body pretty well at this point. And also, I don't appreciate people giving me medical advice if they don't have my full medical history. That's why we always say as well, you know, we don't do medical advice in this channel. <laughs> the only medical advice we'll ever give you is to go to a doctor. Yeah. Oh, I get that, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's a touchy subject, isn't it? It's a tricky one. Oh, dear. That's why I shut it down. <laughs> All right, that's another one done. We got two, two little beans. This one's a bit more subtle, but I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I can still see the bits of light on him, and I love him very much, even if he's a little subtle bean. That's still good. Ooh. Uh, right. You're back home. Welcome home. I hope you've had a good day. We are adding some some darker patches and some lighter patch this is one's gonna be really hard i don't know if i have i this might be my only lighter yellow so they, no, there's no choices there it's either that or it's white i'm picking like a darker color and a lighter color so we do the details and the blush in the darker color and we do the highlight in a lighter color and then that's about it these guys are pretty simple i might re-emphasize that oh dear i might re-emphasize some of this did you read it i did read it Oh dear. I'm gonna re-emphasize some of the outlines because like some of them like around the foot here I, I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like a little wobbly I think having like a slightly thicker outline would be cute anyway I think it would also be cute. So when we go back in and add the eyes and stuff like that, then yeah I'll probably also add a slight outline Got just 10 minutes. You staying up late for a 3d print file? <laughs> Are you staying up late for this by any chance? Late night, late night 3D printing. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. No. <laughs> it's uh, my only thought is it's unusual to have you. Listen, I'm happy to have you as a part of the stream for as long as you want to be here. You're very welcome. But it's unusual to have you as a part of the stream for as long since I'm assuming it's like 1 a.m. for you, or like maybe even later. Uh, I started it while I was already sitting here. Oh, okay, true, true then. True, you didn't you didn't stay up late doing this. You you started it late. <laughs> is that better? Is that is is that a, is that better, Vile? Alright. It's Oh my god. Wait, Vile, that's so much late. I was like, oh my god, I gave you too much benefit of the doubt. I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably like 1 a.m. with Vile. It's 5.30 a.m. Vile. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can late nights with Vile. When are you when are you gonna start your like midnight podcast, Vile? For your for all your midnight streams. When's when's a midnight podcast coming? I wanna hear I wanna hear midnight vile thoughts. Thoughts from Vile at 1 a.m. <laughs> oh dear. That'd be kind of funny actually. You know, that would actually be kind of fun. That would actually be kind of fun. Yeah. There we go. Little feet. <laughs> Calling Vile at 3 a.m. Uh, you could play like, you know, like the Animal Crossing music gets wackier at night. You could play like the wacky 3 a.m. Animal Crossing music for wacky 3 a.m. Vile. There we go. Oh. 
All right, we got little little dark feet on this one. The lime Floridon doesn't really have a darker bit, so I might have to I might have to quickly squidge something in because otherwise it's gonna look a little odder. They just have the uh, just have the blush. <laughs> I might have to quickly squidge in some detail that I wasn't planning to do so they don't feel left out because everyone else has like a little detailed patch that's in a darker color, like the spines on this one, the little feet on this one. I might have to give them a little something. They do normally have like a white underbelly to be fair. I guess what I could do instead of doing uh instead of doing a darker color, I could actually pick two lighter colors. That might actually be easier as well than picking a darker color. I could pick two lighter colors and use those as the blush and use that to, to detail the belly, because the belly of, I, from what I've seen, we I mean, not that there's exactly any proof of this, it's difficult with dinosaurs, right? But from the pictures I saw online of Liplorodon, they had like little light bellies. So maybe, maybe we make a little light belly. Be kind of nice. Okay, let's do little blushy cheeks. Very important for cute little dinosaurs to have their little blushy cheeks. And in there. There you go. <laughs> little blushy cheeks. Now I know I've been staying at this lake. Been awake for at least 20 hours. Oh, is it because of the change in schedule with teacup gone perchance, maybe? They feel like when you have a big change of well not just you, but like when any of us have a big change of schedule, it can definitely throw our sleep off first, right? And teacup teacup being there and then not being there, would that do it maybe? Because I feel like that would do it for me. If Shiny wasn't here being like, go to bed, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm going to be awake till 5am and then I'm going to be absolutely useless the next day. So <laughs> maybe that's me projecting though. Maybe this is me projecting. <laughs> like if I don't have somebody else to tell me to go to sleep, I also never go to sleep either. I just stay awake forever. There we go. I also nap. If, if there's not someone to keep me awake, like don't get me wrong, I appreciate a good nap, but I nap too much. If there's not someone there, like I'll nap for like way too long, much longer than I want to, until it's like uh, now I've wasted like most of the day from napping. So that that's the one for me. I don't so often go to bed late, but I do sleep a lot more. When there's someone else here, it keeps me awake a bit more. It's kind of always been like that actually, even like just having housemates and stuff like that. I nap a lot less when I'm around other people. All right, let's get some highlight on you, which is probably not really going to show up because I already picked a really light yellow. So it's, it's going to be kind of subtle, but that's okay. That's okay. Doesn't matter if it's a little subtle. We know it's there. You wish you could nap. You're not a napper. I'm a napper, but, the, but I'm better if people are around. I'm better if people are around. If people are around, then it, it prevents me from falling asleep, <laughs> which is good because don't get me wrong, a nice nap can definitely set you straight if you've had like a bad night's sleep and stuff, but I don't know. I always feel tired afterwards. <laughs> sometimes they're really good or sometimes they're really bad and there's no in between. And I, you just never know when you're getting into a nap, is it going to be a good nap? Is it going to be satisfying? And am I going to leave this nap feeling better or worse? And I don't know, I don't know what the warning signs are to say whether it's going to be a good nap or a bad nap. It's risky business. Risky business napping. <laughs> sort of a mix. Teacup moving. Daylight savings. Oh yeah, you've had your daylight savings go, haven't you? A lot of change this month. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Ah, oh, dear. A lot of change. I think I would be getting bad night sleeps if I had that much change happening in my life as well, to be honest, Vile. You know, you would not be alone. We'd all be sleeping badly. We'd be like, ah, too much has changed. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. Can you see this color? <laughs> Once again, Jelly, Jelly is saying, yeah, yeah, like it's making a huge difference, guys. I don't know if you can tell, but me adding this color, massive difference. Looks so different to how I did a second ago. Meanwhile, no one can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> but no, no, it makes a huge difference, guys. Really, really big. Massive difference. My god, you, you, I can't even recognize it from what it looked like a second ago. There we go. And get a few extra ones in there. There we are. 
You used to nap, but it was like three or four hours. He's that's what I don't want. I don't want to nap that long. Because then that's like half the afternoon gone. <laughs> but like, how do you stop it? I guess alarm clocks is the answer, honestly. <laughs> there, is, there is an answer here. I'm just not using the answer. Uh, oh, heck, who's haunting? Oh, it's Maggie. Oh, bless you. Oh, thank you for stealing money from Jeff Bezos for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the heckin' sub. Thank you, thank you. It's very hecky kind of you. Bless you. Oh dear. Massive, massive difference, right? Oh my god, I can't even recognize it from a minute ago. It looks so different. <laughs> oh dear. All right, we have two more to go. I might pick these ones out uh, just together because it's actually not taking me that long to go in and put the changes in. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. <laughs> All right, we need to pick out some greens, which is a difficult one now because all my greens are mixed up because I tipped it all out on the floor. All right, we need to pick out... I'll put that over there, we don't need this one right now. We need to pick out one that is darker. That seems like a good one for the darker one. One that is darker and then one that is lighter. Ooh. Which again, I think I have very few options for lighter because I've picked like the lightest green. I could use a light yellow or something, but uh, this one is technically lighter, so we'll use that one. Oh, I can put this one away as well. I've, I've finished using this one. Unless do I want to go like a little warmer, maybe? I could go a little warmer. And... Uh, it's kind of darker though, isn't it? Ah, it's so tricky. And I might be missing a really good one, potentially, because I threw them all back in again, which means they're in a really weird order. Ah, you know what? It's fine. Wait, is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. This is the one. There you go. Switch it back around again. And then I need to pick out a blue. Where's the lid? Ah, oh, there we go. There we are. I'm fighting a nap. I'm held captive under a sleeping cat. Oh, that makes it harder. In the same way that having more people awake in the house makes me feel more awake, having more people asleep in the house uh, do be having the opposite effect. Having something sleeping on me would probably really make me tired. <laughs> oh dear. Put that over for looking after later. And then, whoa, Bezos is like Santa Claus, but instead of coming down the chimney, Alexa opens the front door and he walks in and just steals your wallet. <laughs> yeah, it's important that we steal from Bezos every now and again. Very important. And I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's very hacking kind of you. All right. We got to, oh no, we were going to go two shades lighter, weren't we? We were going to do a really light blue, which would probably be like this for highlight. And then we were going to do a medium light blue for the underbelly. If memory serves. Was that what I was going to do? That sounds right to me. Which I think this is the medium light. There's also red in there, which is not quite right. Sorry, also you can't really see it. I'm sorry. I'm hiding it all from you. My bad. My bad. Let's take one lighter as well. There we go. I'll take. I'll keep all of these out because honestly, I'm just going to get lost. I'm going to get lost. I'm going to forget what my plans are. It's fine. Bezos ate my uh, at my hamster. <laughs> At Bezos, my hamster. Oh dear. I want to steal that box and put them all on bobbins. I want to do that too. And I just don't. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. Because I, I really want to, to be fair. I want to wind them all onto bobbins. I just don't. I don't own them. But I, you know, I think about owning them. And I just don't. I'm a serial procrastinator, you know? <laughs> I should do it. But I have not. I have not. Oh dear, I really wanted- oh sorry, sorry, poor Hammy, poor Hammy. Oh dear. Bobbin stream, yeah, like what, what, grinding them all on? Maybe at some point. <laughs> it would be a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot of stuff. But, maybe. Honestly, it would make it easier to go through my things. Would, yeah. It would, would it make my life easier? Yeah. <laughs> probably. Probably. Oh dear. There we are. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna do both of them at once this time. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do both because they're really like there's not a whole lot to do. So I might as well get them both in the same recording, and then we can go back. And then once we've done that, it's just just a little black outline, just a little black outline. Make them from cereal boxes. Yeah, I've seen people do that where they like you make it from reused cardboard or like Amazon packages and stuff like that. Just cutting them up, making them. It's not so it's not so expensive, and you don't have to buy them. It's honestly a really good idea, and it uses the cardboard, so it's nice. Nice little DIY. There we go. And then... 
in there. Oh. And in there. Go. And this one doesn't really have a whole lot of shame. This is the other reason. Is both of these have like nearly nothing. You know what I can make them from? I don't really have cereal boxes, but I do have the- you know the cereal bars you get? A lot of those come in cardboard boxes, and I often have cereal bars around because they make a really good snack. So I often have cereal bar- cereal bar boxes <laughs> around that I could probably start saving and just make them out of that. I did just put a lot of them in recycling earlier this week, unfortunately. <laughs> but I will make- I will make more of them in no time. Like, in no time at all, I'm sure that I will have more. Oh dear. Prints are done! Did it work? Did everything go well? Oh dear. I hope that everything went well. Did it did it go as smoothly as it possibly could? That is my hope. It went nice and smooth. Oh dear. Good plan. Yeah. Well, because otherwise I just recycled them. Like, there's nothing, there's <laughs> nothing else I could really do with them. There we go. Uh, let me make this one a little bigger, because it's going in the same direction as the fabric, so it's a bit subtle. Make it a little bigger. Nice, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Sew that back into there. Good plan, yeah! I'm just not so big on cereal. I like cereal, but I like cereal without the milk most of the time. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I get in the mood for cereal. I'll have like a week here and there where I'm like, yeah, all I want to eat is cereal and I really like it and then I immediately go off it again. <laughs> it, it's, I have very short phases of liking cereal, so it's normally not even worth it to get it. Like, just pick me up a cereal bar. No, so much milk. Ew, no, keep my, keep that milk away from my cereal. Ew. Oh, dear. Uh, print look great. I have to wait for things to cool down, then check the tolerances, but something when I get up. That's fair. You're going to bed then, Viles. Go, go take care of yourself. Get some good sleep. I'm sure that I will see you around. Uh, you've not checked out Vile before as well? Oh my god! Rebecca! Bless you! Thank you so much for stealing money from Jeff Bezos! Hell yeah! Bless you, we're, we're little thieves today. Oh my god, we're stealing everything from Jeff Bezos. Amazing! Thank you so much! It's very heckin' kind of you as well. Thank you so much for subbing. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all their money. Oh dear. Dr dunk the- Do you do that, Sleeves? <laughs> Listen, I'm not judging you. If you do it, that's fair. As long as you enjoy your breakfast, you enjoy it however you like. But is that a thing people do? They dunk their cereal bars in milk? I have a cereal bar and a cup of tea as like a snack sometimes. And that's honestly pretty good. Pretty good. I, I do like my cereal bar with that because it's like a little bit filling, which is kind of what I want. Because if I get like a, you know, if I'm hungry, a standard biscuit, I can eat through the whole packet. So, and like a, a cereal bar is a good option. <laughs> so that I don't just waste a whole packet of biscuits in one go when I could have eaten them slowly over time and really enjoyed them. Oh dear. You're finally off the bed. No, you're fine. Thank you for popping by, Violet. It's always lovely to see you. Now, get some good sleeps. Look after yourself. I look forward to seeing more of your Merge Master stuff uh, on Friday and Saturday. Hell yeah. Alright. I think that's about all we can do for that, I, th I think. Probably, maybe a little bit down the front here. We can do a little bit down the front, sure. Just a teeny tiny bit. And then we need to do the blue guy. And then they just need their little faces. I can't wait to put their little faces. I'm a bit nervous. They feel like a face you can mess up very easily. I'm probably gonna do the eyes with two strands of thread. And then I think I'm gonna do the mouth with one and just build it up really slowly. <laughs> just go real, real slow with it. So that I don't, I don't do anything that I regret later. Build it up really, really slowly. Oh dear. I think that'll be the vibe. Oh, nice. <laughs> very good there we go so we'll, we'll get this last one in i'll see what we're doing how are we doing for time by the way we've got four hours i haven't had any lunch but i can't say that i'm feeling particularly hungry right now i think rather than risk it on stream i might just keep going and eat after stream and that way if it does rub me the wrong way and i feel ill then i don't have to worry about feeling ill on stream 
<laughs> Being ill doesn't really bother me this much anymore, but I would rather do it in my own time, you know? I've got to schedule it in for when I'm feeling, feeling, uh, like I've got some spare time. I'll do that later. <laughs> oh, dear. Bonk. Bonk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get, let's get these in. Plus, we're so close to finishing this anyway. Like, it's probably less than an hour from being finished, I think. It really depends on how much we do with, like, the black outlining and stuff. If we do a lot of black outlining, then maybe... Actually, maybe I should do the whole black outline with just one strand of thread and just build it up really slowly. That might... That might be more sensible, mightn't it? Yeah, maybe... Maybe that is what we should do. Build it up really slowly, because we've spent so much time on this already. It, it'd suck if we made a mistake and, uh, and ruin any of it. I don't think we will, to be honest. I, I, you know, fully ruining it at this stage, I think we'd have to try quite hard. I'm really proud of it and I really like how it looks. So I don't think I'd fully ruin it, but I also don't want to regret any of it. So maybe doing just really, really thin black outline and just going with that would be a good idea. Just to make sure we are being careful. Especially when you're so close to the end, right? I don't know how everyone else approaches it, but when I see the end is in sight, I often get like a little a little trigger happy with whatever crafts I'm doing because I'm like, oh, we're nearly done. Let's just quickly rush to the end so we can see it finished, right? <laughs> Which I feel like is when I'll always make most of the mistakes. Try and avoid that a little bit. Also, that's very cute. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. And let's do the little chin bit and get that in there. Oh. There we go. <laughs> and then a little bit more. Really, I would like this to cover the whole bit here, but I think I'm gonna go pretty small with it. Because if I planned it a little bit more in advance, maybe I could have done that and it would have looked really cool, but I think right now it's going to start warping the threads a bit too much if I do that. And also, the others don't have it, so it might make them stand out even more. And yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with it being subtle. A little a little something something on his chin. Ah oh dear. I feel a little help. Nah, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I don't want people to worry about me watching. I can make my own decisions. Do not worry. Ah oh dear. Embroidery abuse. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. He's got his little spots underneath, but it's not too much. If I had gone back, I, if in retrospect, just to be clear, I'm very proud of this, but in retrospect, I think what I could have done, which might have made this a little bit more cohesive, would to actually like get off a belly area and like like kind of what I've done here where there's like a, uh, an actual outline on it, which technically I guess I could still have done, but I didn't think about until just that second there. <laughs> But having like a little belly area might have made it so that it fit in a little better because the rest of them all have little areas where the the color darkens a little. Jelly, I always worry. JK, nah, it's it's fine. We're fine. I don't need people here worrying about me. We're all good. Alright. Oh. And let's get some highlights. Oh wait, I didn't do the blush. Ah shoot. I'll have to go back and put the blush in. I forgot. Like, I don't know. He should have blush, really, shouldn't he? He should have blush. Also, anime, we saw your flowers in the Discord and they are very heckin' nice. Very heckin' lovely. And the leaves, too. I love them. When you showed us the designs, I must admit that wasn't what I was expecting. Like, when you showed us the designs of the suit. But having seen that now, I think it's, I think it's really, really cool. With more information, it's like, oh yeah, I would never have thought of that, but it's a really cool idea. Yeah, anime is, by the way, for those who, who didn't see it earlier, you can go see it in the Discord now, to be fair, it is there. But uh, they are making a suit, uh, and they are adding, like, lots of overgrown elements to it. And so they've made these beautiful... Are they crocheted flowers, or are they just, like, embroidered flowers? I'm not, I'm not sure, they're very delicate. But, like, these kind of, like, crafted flowers, and they are really pretty, and leaves as well. And I'm assuming they're going to be looking at maybe attaching those to the suit. It's very heckin' cool. It's a really cool idea, honestly. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, yeah, they're crochet flowers and leaves. Got it. I, I wonder if it was just, like, really small crochet. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, there are some pictures in the Discord, and we will probably pop over and have a look ourselves in a sec uh, again. But, yeah, if you, don't, if you can't wait, if your curiosity is too strong, you can go look at it right now. They're right there. 
But yeah, no, I think it's a really cool idea. I think it's a really cool way of doing it as well. And getting that overgrown effect. Okay. Did I have just a teeny tiny tad? Maybe more than that. Teeny tiny tad. Oh, it's all, it's all tiny bits. No, I thrown it away. Get it. Oh no, I have this one. This might do it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing that there's only only threads in my bin. Threads and fabrics. <laughs> so I can just take stuff straight out of it again. It's like, ah, nah. I can actually use a tiny bit more of this. There we go. Alright. And yeah. a little blush in there too. Because I, I would feel bad if he was the only one not blushing. He needs to be blushing too. They all need to be blushing because it's cute. There we go. Nice. Right. First of all, we'll do a little Discord tour. We're going to do a little Discord tour in case anyone has posted. And if not, then we will move straight back on to doing some more of the outline stuff because it is really, really close to being done. Like, look at that. <laughs> They've all, I mean, again, it's pretty subtle on most of them that we've done any highlight or low lighting stuff, but we have, uh, you have to take my word for it. We have done it and they look really cute and I really like them. They just need tiny little faces so we can see their little expressions and stuff. And would this be too thick? Oh, actually, maybe this could be okay. All right, so sorry, I'm, I'm I'm immediately moving on. I should be looking at the Discord. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> easily distracted. Okay, we'll go into live stream chat first. Thank you for the hick. Uh, Lime like, and we have Snow Miku. Oh, nice. And another one which I broke, but the uh, point time will fix it in a minute. Nice. And she's back up with rearrangements. Fucking lovely. So you're doing some, some uh, figurine fixing. Also, this is a very beautiful very very beautiful figurine beautiful layers i love it i mean hatsu and miku get some really 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 good figurines so it doesn't surprise me but yeah there you go back up on the shelf now nice and then we've got in embroidery oh you made an extra one oh lovely so there's actually even more when i when i was talking about it there's actually even more that i hadn't seen Heck yeah! Also, Ken, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. You're just in time. We're about to put the little faces on the dinosaurs. It's, it's crunch time. Crunch time for uh, for our dinosaurs. They're getting their faces back. But for, for now, we're doing a little Discord tour and some stretches. This looks really nice. I, I think I like all of them. I, this one's really pretty. But I feel, yeah, the, the, the other two are very natural looking. They all look really nice. Really, really. Oh, wait, I haven't. Wait, two seconds. I'll come back to that one in a second. I haven't emoted. There we go. I must emote first. It's very important. Oh dear. And then we got to finish the art of your friend. Hell yeah. It's really hecking nice. Really hecking nice. It's honestly lovely to see it finished because I did see it before where you were still making it. It's nice to see it with all of its colours all done with the background finished and everything. Hecking nice. Congratulations. Because you've done a lot of art anime. You're doing so much. And then we've got... Ooh, my little crochet turtle. Oh, He's so precious. He's so precious. Wait, good good emotes. Who picked these? Malice, great emotes. Oh my god. So small. So precious. A little hand tortoise. Oh my god. So cute. Hecking well done. Warming up the chroma. Nice. Hecking nice. This is so cute. This is so cute. And I love them. And I want 10 of them. I want 10 of them all over my crafting room. Oh, did we get another post in live stream? Oh, progress of the blue with yesterday. Hell yeah. Nice progress on blue. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. I need a bit of... If you're doing progress, that means claps and hypes for progress. Hell yeah. Well done, everyone. Oh my god, everyone's making... So this one scares me a little bit, but you know, everyone's... Also the fact that this... There's a very chaotic energy to this, but also the fact that it was posted at 7 a.m. adds even more chaotic energy to it. The, the time of posting really adds into it. It's not just chaotic, it's chaotic at, at 7 a.m. <laughs> All right, final, final stretch for our dinos now. I'm not gonna reset the timer because I don't think it's gonna take a whole hour. We're just gonna, we're just gonna get them in. We're just gonna get them in. We're just gonna go for it. Heck, like why wait, you know? All right, we need a little eye. A 
little eye. So a little lower than that, like to there, I think. And a little, whoop. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love him. He's so small. Uh, the, I'm just gonna re-emphasize a couple of the edges really quickly where they feel a little like they could use some extra help. Uh, like the feet is particular in this one. I, I feel like it's a bit messy. So let's just go back in, add a little bit more of this, and neaten it up a little bit. And then around there. Oh, uh, I'm asking why I got a bit messy because it feels like a little, a little tough under there. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll go around and do a few bits like this just so it doesn't look like on its own. I probably go over the head as well. And then. <laughs> oh, that's one of facing. The faces I get a bit nervous about because obviously. You know, the eyes are the window to the soul and all of that. And I want to make sure that the windows are looking good. <laughs> if they're the windows to their souls, the window's got to be looking nice. Okay, that there. And then this bit here feels a little... Oh, actually, let's just get the arm as well. Okay. And get that in there. I am just jumping around, to be honest, but... It's, it's just you, you see a place, you tackle it. You see a place, you tackle it. I think I don't need the lines to all be even per se. I just want them to be thick in like places where it kind of makes sense. I think I think that's pretty good. Get that in there. Yeah, he's cute. Do I want to thicken up his eyes is the only thing. Kind of do. I don't know if this is a mistake. I'll do it last because if it is a mistake, then I can uh, I can undo it really easily. I kind of want to thicken them up a little bit. It was not a mistake. It was, in fact, a good idea. Do the same on the side as well. And... Perfect. <laughs> I love him. Next. Oh dear. Oh my god, little dinosaurs, they're coming to life! We are slowly but surely adding all the little smiles on. <laughs> so they just sit in here. This was so easy as well. <coughs> when I uploaded this one to the Discord, this one was really easy to do, to be honest. Like, really, really easy. Um, just, just very small dinosaurs. I mean, it's slow because you're filling in for a while, but like, once you get over that bit... Alright, here we go again, by the way, sorry. more eyes yeah once you get past the the filling in bit that's nah, not that bad at all and then there we go taking a break from studying anatomy you, you know what you need time for your brain to intake right all the all the studying you're doing so that sounds like a really smart plan to be honest your brain gets a second to be like let me process this let me process all this information you're feeding me. Sounds like a smart plan. And then back in there again. <laughs> Your little smile. It's just a little smiley guy. Right, thicken up the eyes a little bit now that they're in. And then other side the same. The little smile's so cute. They're having a good time. 
I didn't think about giving them all different expressions, but then I was like, but then one of them might look sad, and I don't, I don't really want any of them to look sad. I want them to look like they're having a jolly old time, chilling out. You know, there are other, we've done other embroideries where the characters look kind of concerned. This one though, this one is just a happy vibes one. Uh, they're all having a nice, a nice time, chilling with each other. I do think I need to thicken the earth a little more actually. I'm just gonna go in and fix up some of the lines as well. Yeah, get that like there and then just... That's better, that's better. And then... In the underbelly... Ah, uh, did my timer not go? Because we've nearly finished! Uh, we won't be- we probably aren't streaming for a whole nother hour, so there's no timer. Ah, oh, I just realised I put the phones on the wrong channel. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm sure I'll see them in a minute, don't worry about it. It does happen. Yeah, it happens. I think as long as people try and put them in the right channels, I generally appreciate it. We all make mistakes, that's fine. As long as an effort has been made, you're all good. There we go. Another little guy. Although he looks a bit weird from your angle. From my angle he doesn't look weird, but from your angle he looks a bit odd. He looks a bit smudged. I wonder if it's because it's on the side on a bit more. Ah oh dear. There we go. Nice. And stream's ending soon? Well, I don't know about you, but doesn't this embroidery look pretty finished? <laughs> don't you think? The reason that stream is ending soon is only because we have made art. And we put it out into the world. And I must take photos of the art so that everyone can see my teeny tiny dinosaurs. The teeniest of tiny dinosaurs that ever roamed in this swamp. They're so small. And they're having a little, a little party. Weren't you adding eggs? No, the eggs are just on the sticker set. There's no eggs on this one. The eggs were, were an idea for the stickers, but not so much for this. Also, welcome back, Shifty. How you doing? Welcome on in. I hope things are going well for you. You have joined us as we are putting in the eyes and the mouths of the dinosaurs. And now Shifty is an artist and they know this is the most important step. <laughs> The most important step of art is adding adding the exp the eyes and the mouth. <laughs> or maybe for this art in particular. Maybe not so much for some of the other art. Getting their little faces in. I'm back from the first one. Pardon me. You're healing really well. You're gonna be able to drive in a week. Hell yeah, Cthulhu. Well done as well on a uh, on like take like being very restrained and like properly looking after yourself and giving yourself the time to heal. Very heckin' impressive. From one crafter to another, I'm impressed. I don't know that I would have that same self-control, and I'm very impressed with your self-control. Ah, oh dear. Very true. Yeah, you gotta get the tiny little faces and tiny little eyes in. <laughs> He's got a really small face. I like him very much. You and your tiny face. Very cute. Ah, oh dear. There we go. Eggs! Yeah, no, the eggs are for the stickers, I think. They won't really fit very well between them here. Splashes, maybe, but probably not full eggs. At least that's my vibes. I mean, at the end of the day, for the- for the- we'll end up putting the pattern in the sub-benefit thingy anyway, so anyone who is subscribed could give it a go themselves, and if they wanted to add eggs, they could. And nothing, nothing against adding more. Oh dear. I just need to fix this eye a little bit because it's annoying me a tiny, tiny tad. Which is just because there's like a, a line of white through it. Fine. I can get rid of it very easily by doing this. There you go. There we go. And then... I think the rest of it's looking pretty okay. Oh, actually, let's, let's re-emphasize this bit. That looks a bit messy. And we can put that up to there. And then this bit here too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do those two bits. Nice. And get that one a little thicker too. Don't said I was showing off how well I could move my arm. Nice. Exactly what they told me to do. And I can drive a week earlier than they originally said. Yeah. Honestly, good on you. Good on you. Very heckin' deserved. Oh dear, for being so well restrained and properly looking after yourself and letting you heal. Very heckin' good. Alright. Another one in. Another another little boy. 
in. I love him. Strawberry, good morning. Welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. You've joined us as we are adding the faces to our little guys. And they're getting their little expressions back because they've been expressionless for a little bit now because I've been just filling in all the colors. But it's finally time that they have their little expressions back so they can be little happy dudes. It's chilling. There we go. They're very cute. Thank you. I really liked making this. Thank you everybody who participated in the vote originally. Uh, we did have three options up. I'm gonna draw the other two still, so I will still get like some art for them. But uh, yes, thank you for everyone who voted dinosaurs. This has been very fun to make. I have very much enjoyed. It feels like almost like a little break embroidery, which is a bit one to say, because obviously <coughs> it's still hard work. But like, I, I guess just like having such a, a chill vibe kind of I, I guess piece like there's nothing spooky about this or like stressful about this it's been really nice it has definitely felt like a little break embroidery you know I like that I like that mm -hmm. it's been good it's been good it's nice to have a little break where like I guess like a, a very stress-free embroidery yeah a very little stress-free embroidery not that I get massively stressed out from embroideries anyway but you know it still felt stress-free it's very nice. Oh dear. There you are, they're very cute. <laughs> yeah, I like them a lot. They're just cheeky little guys. They're cheeky little guys. With their little colourful bodies. I really like that we picked the swamp fabric as well because matching the colours to the swamp I think was really fun and it's not something that I've done before. This is by the- sorry, I don't think I've mentioned this. This is the first time I've ever embroidered on a fabric that isn't white. Or just like plain black or plain white or plain plain like you know the first time that i've ever embroidered on fabric that isn't just plain this is the first time this is the first ever embroidery i've ever done like that i've never embroidered on patterned fabric before and it was a really good experience i actually really like how this looks i don't think that this would suit every single piece by any stretch of course but i think for pieces like this where they're a little bit simpler Having, a, having the pattern in the background really adds a little something something. My shoulder muscles are growing, they will be. If you're doing lots of beading and embroidery, you have to make sure that you're stretching there. <laughs> Get your stretches on. Oh, don't end up like me with a shoulder injury. Oh dear. Although I, I think maybe that's just if you do stuff at the extremes. <laughs> but to be honest, probably day-to-day -day embroidery won't do it, but 16 hours a day embroidery, now, <laughs> now that might do it. Oh dear. <laughs> Alright, let's get the last two little bits in. We need his face up in the corner. I just ran out of black, although I did do a really bad job of separating that. <laughs> let's try separating from the other side actually, because I think I think that side I might have really hecked up. It do be like that sometimes. Sometimes you just heck it up from the beginning and it's like, well, not even worth trying. It's not even worth trying at this point. There we go. Do it from the other end. That's much better. Yeah. And in there. All right. The music got very intense for the last little tiny dinosaur face. <laughs> this, this music might be a little intense for just adding eyes and a mouth, but okay, that's fine. A little intense, maybe, but we'll live. There we go. One. And then, second bit. And two. And then, the other side. One. And... Get another one in. Did you, do you need to restart the sound? No, George, I don't because I'm about to finish this embroidery. Which means if I was to restart the timer for a whole hour, I'd just be sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't restart the timer because basically the embroidery is nearly finished. It won't take me a whole hour to finish it at this point. So I don't need to have another break timer since we'll be ending stream within the hour. Yeah. Speaking of, this one doesn't need any outlining, it's fine. Which means that's the last one, there you go. We did it! <laughs> Tis done! Tis done! Another day is done. Oh, you finished your- Did we finish our days at the same time, anime? 
You ready? Skadoosh. Look at that! Look at our little guys! I might add some bits and bobs later, maybe add some beads, but I want to decide how I'm going to frame it first before I add anything 3D, just in case it would ruin the frame. So for now, let's take it off the hoop, shall we? Let's take it off the hoop and I'll show it to you with the proper camera, so you can get the, the proper the proper colours, because the other camera doesn't like showing it to you. Hopefully... Hopefully you can see that. Can you? I think so. Maybe over this way a bit more? You see, you see the little, the, the little fellas? You see all of them? See all of our little guys? Yeah! Here they are! They're just small beans! <laughs> hanging out in a little swamp! And they're the same colours as the swamp! And I like them very much. They're just cute and simple. I don't know, something about doing something really cute and simple every now and again is good for the soul, I think. And I'm very happy. You're just about to finish your stitching too, we're all finishing at the same time. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, they're cute, yeah! I really like it. With this one in particular, I want to try framing it in a different way. So I want to try and find a frame which has like a cutout in the center where I can make it like square. So we're going to have a little look. I'm going to have a little peek around and we're going to try framing it a little differently. So it might be a minute until you see this fully finished because normally I frame them straight after stream. But in this case, I want to do a bit of shopping around and seeing if there's any other options because it's a kind of simpler one. I want to experiment a little bit with how I present it. So yeah, but the embroidery itself is done and I'm very happy with it and they're very cute and I really like the swamp that they're living in and I love, I like that they look happy and splashy and stuff. I'm very happy. I will take a picture of it and put it on Discord later. That being said, it does mean it is time, I think, for our last Discord art share. If anybody had any art that they wanted to share, that they finished today, um, and then uh, let's have a look. Oh, knitting and crafting. Oh my God. Okay, well we have one very, very micro crochet. Jesus. Yeah, that's a, uh... God, that's so small. I love them so very much. I like them a lot too. I'm glad, I'm glad other people like them, but this was so fun to make. Just simple, easy. Easy peasy simple little dinos. What the heck is this so? <laughs> this is so small. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. I'll actually drink the rest of my tea. Since I'm uh since I'm not gonna be streaming anymore, I'll just finish my tea off. Nice. This is I do wanna do like the this is what the heck? But very impressive. What the heck, but very impressive though. Hell yeah. Oh dear. Oh, and we got something in embroidery. Did you finish it? Yay! Oh my god. You, I, that is so much stitching though. I, I would also be going mad. You also get a what the heck are you doing? But it's very impressive. But oh my god. I would also be going mad if I had been doing that much of the same stitch over and over and over again. Excuse me. Oh my god. I would have yeah, nearly finished. Just a little bit left to fill. Hacking well done. That's a That's a hell of a lot of work. Even if it's not fully finished at this point, it's you, you can still see that that's a lot of work. All right, I think that's everyone's projects shown. If I, I think that's everyone's art project shown, right? Yeah, I think we've we've shown all that. Let's go and find a bean and send you all over to somebody else's stream. And it's a bit of a short one for me today, but this is an extra stream, to be fair. I don't normally stream on Wednesdays, so it's an extra four and a half hours I wouldn't normally do. Uh, and then tomorrow, Slay the Princess. We're playing Slay the Princess. Uh, Thursdays is a spooky day for us. We just play horror games all day on Thursday. Uh, I do know a little bit about Slay the Princess. I'm not going in completely blind or anything like that. I don't want you to think that I am. Um, so I, that one I do know a bit about. The goal is to be, gonna get, be to get as many endings as possible. I'm going to play it once myself without being backseated. And then after that, I'm going to allow backseating. So you need to let me have one proper playthrough. And then we'll do uh, we'll do lots of backseating and stuff like that. So we'll let other people make decisions and stuff like that i think that would be really fun um yeah i might even maybe we'll get some channel point redeems for the for the second playthroughs uh, i don't know how long we're going to be going through tomorrow either we might be quite a long one uh because today there's some stuff i have to do after stream but i think tomorrow i am free which means i can do whatever i please all right let's send you all over to another very sweet bean i am having a little look and we have a few really good options here today actually of like some really really cool stuff happening but i think I think if I had to say where I would like to go... Oh, it's hard. There's a few that I really like. Oh, no! This is the problem when we have, like, multiple streamers where it's like, I'd love to send you to every single one of these and show you all of them, but it's just not gonna happen. Um, let's go and chill. Should we go chill with... Uh, ooh! <gasps> 
Let's go check with Senses. Senses is doing some really beautiful art, and I think that would be a really, really good one. Um, so let's go chill with senses and watch some nice watercolor and everything and have like a nice wind down. Hell yeah. Yeah, 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 we can do that. Also, George, thank you so much for lurking in the YouTube. Thank you everyone who lurked the YouTube today. I really, really appreciate it. It's really been helping me get my watch hours up. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Blue. Thank you. I hope everyone has a really, really, really lovely rest of their day. Uh, tomorrow we're playing games. If you don't like horror games, skip tomorrow's stream. And we'll be doing cosplay on Friday. So we actually had like a pretty good... I, I thought this would take a bit longer, to be honest. Oops. I guess it's kind of a simple one, so it makes sense. But yeah, if you missed it, we finished it. We have our little dinosaurs they're playing in the swamp i love them very much and we're gonna find a really interesting way to frame it so we can do something a bit different so it might be a minute till you see the final pictures but we'll get there eventually everyone have a lovely rest of the day grab raid calls if you want because it does it is a good way of sending some hype to another channel uh be good everyone be good senses is a very sweet bean and i will see you tomorrow okay i think i'm trying to copy my own raid message i'm struggling okay i think we got it take care everyone and if you're watching on the youtube again thank you so so much for helping me get my watch hours up i really really appreciate it 